Fuck. I didn't realize I was muted there. Anyway. What's up, chat? What'd it do? <laughs> yeah, somebody sent me something right before the broadcast that I will be uh, taking a little peek at. But yeah, welcome to uh, the Night of Cringe, number 53. I thought it was 54. I'm so fucking dabbed. I think I thought about making one of the live reactions I did earlier, uh, like earlier in time, like a few weeks back into the NOC, and I thought, I, th I instinctively thought, oh, it's number 54, but no, it's only 53. But anyway, welcome. I'm going to be talking about a, a couple of things, a lot of things. I got to get better at collecting content for this for fucking NOC I need to get better at it because I'll be scrolling Twitter and just seeing crazy shit and I'll be like oh, well that was fun to look at bye <laughs> oh and Vash Stampede sent me a couple super chats oh my god damn it Vash Stampede sent me a couple super chats where'd they go where'd they go <laughs> oh you gotta be kidding me I lost them Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe I can find it. Oh, I could have swore I screwed, damn it. But Vash MP, one of the super chats was about how they don't understand uh, the whole race swap thing, unless their race is completely irrelevant to the character, which I... I sort of agree with it. Depend, like you could say that, like twenty years ago, you can't say that now, because you you can't say today that well, well, as long as like the race doesn't matter with the character. But like like I said, today you just can't say that because you don't know what what uh, the what the filmmaker's aim is unless you hear it from them. But anyway. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm going to tackle this first because this seems very funny to me. Vash Stampede, I do acknowledge your super chats, but I, I, I screen grabbed it and I fucking lost it. Oh, now I can't find them. But like I said, I acknowledge your super chats, I swear. Anyway, he has six ways to be a fat ally. <laughs> Six ways to be a fat ally. Oh, wait, Randall Leisman, $10 super chat. I hope you're not a lawyer with that name. <laughs> $10 super chat. Hey, Jay, can't wait for the NOC. I've been binging all the old ones. By the way, I know it's old, but did you see the news about Riley Dennis injuring women's soccer players? Yeah, I saw that shit. Not surprised here. I was thinking that maybe he was doing it to juice up engagement. Uh, so he can get his YouTube channel back off the ground. But now I'm thinking that maybe he's just genuinely, uh, <laughs> he just genuinely is a dipshit who wanted to. You're ready to he's a dipshit who genu genuinely wanted to do women's sports. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. I've had my suspicions about Riley Dennis anyway. So, but anyway, yeah, let's let's get on to, on with this. Six ways to be a fat ally. <laughs> Number one, treat fat people with respect and dignity. Uh, but what does that mean <laughs> exactly? What do you, what do you mean by you got to specify? Like, are you saying look, treat them with respect and dignity, like a specific fat dignity <laughs> or dignity you would treat anyone else? Because I can tell you right now, if you're not a piece of shit. If you're not into that fat acceptance rhetoric, people are going to treat you with dignity and respect. As long as you, as, and especially if you treat yourself with dignity and respect, I, I can assure you of that. Unless you talk about some extra shit, and in, in that case, I'll tell you to fuck off. Zombie chicks, five dollars super chat. Domino from Deadpool Two is an example of a race swap I wasn't bothered by, but that's mainly because I really like her actress Zazie Beats. Gary Thomas, five dollars super chat. Jay, unfortunately, I'm at work. So I can't watch it now, but I'll definitely get to the playback. Have a good stream. Thank you. Okay. Number two, call out fat phobia when you hear it and see it. Once again, you got to be, what, what, what counts as fat phobia? 
because some of you motherfuckers be we listen like the dumbest shit. Be, like I, there's this one chick that that is suing an airline because her ass is so fucking her ass is a futon. Is <laughs> she got a futon sized ass? A a, a futon. <laughs> And she couldn't squeeze past fucking seats. And apparently that is the airline's fault. <laughs> the airline built their shit with um, security exits in mind for their passengers. And somehow that's their fault. It somehow is their fault that she overate to the point of having a futon ass. <laughs> it's their fucking fault. Kelvin Thompson, two dollars super chat. Thoughts on the new Barbie trailer? Much love, Jay. Oh, uh, I mean, I have my reservations about that film. Uh, on one hand, I'm on one hand, I'm excited. On the other hand, I think it's going to be some bullshit. I like I said, I've got my suspicions, but I'm gonna hold out. I'm gonna hold out until the movie officially comes out. Because like I said, I got some things to say, but it might seem a little nitpicky at this point. I need more details. <sighs> Because, like, the director involved in it, I'm pretty sure is a feminist. And, like, something in this latest trailer rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm like, oh, I don't think this is going to be any good. But anyway, you know, let's, let's just, God damn it. I hate it when you clean your glasses and something gets gets on it right as you're putting it on. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, Seek Out Fat Star is from Fat Paypal. I guess this is a direct, I guess this is a direct, hang on, wait, hang on a second. Anyway, I'm guessing this is a direct stab at the whale. I'm betting money this is, that's a direct stab at the whale. And I'm like, why do you need, why does a movie or television show have to be 100% written by, like, if it's centered around someone of a certain race, size, whatever, why does the filmmaker also have to, to match that? Because half of you motherfuckers who are fat or who are black, like, don't even um, relate to human beings. So... so so I don't know why you be getting all picky. Like, oh, you have to have, you have to be fat in order to be, 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 be. But half the people who talk shit about the whale don't even have the same experiences as the the lead character from the whale. It's not as severe. So like, why the fuck? You, I should be in charge of that story. No, you shouldn't. Have. Shut up. <laughs> you don't have the same life because you're both fat. But anyway. We're going to get more on that because one of the videos we're going to talk about kind of uh, glosses over that. Anyway, uh, believe fat people. <laughs> like, what the fuck does this mean? What does it mean? Believe that I can drink a, an entire bottle of ranch dressing in one sitting. Believe it. <laughs> Ask restaurants, bars, special event venues, etc., to provide size inclusive seating options. Technically, all seatings are like size inclusive. They're just inclusive of someone who isn't built like a barrel. <laughs> they're they're inclusive of people built like humans. <laughs> So like see, like yeah, seatings are already inclusive. You're just not included <laughs> because you, because you have eaten you have gorged so much that you do not fit the human standard of size. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> oh, anyway. Ask restaurants, bars, a special event venue. Oh, wait, I already read that shit. Take fat friends and family to fat accept accessible places. Bitch, look, it's already a hassle getting people together for a gathering and inviting people out or shit like it's already a hassle. Now I gotta fucking call the place up <laughs> and ask them, are you fat accessible? Are you a fat accessible spaz? 
Are your seats reinforced with steel? Now I got to fucking humiliate myself. Call in a fucking restaurant and ask them if, yeah, if their seats are steel reinforced <laughs> because you can't jog and eat a salad. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> By Taylor Walfram. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, was it Jen McMahon seventy eight, who is a who who follows me on Twitter? Thank you for introducing me to this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Speaking of fat, um, the Dove people, the people at Dove, <laughs> came out with like this campaign, like this campaign for like the, it's a pro female gamer campaign, to which I have I say like what. <laughs> Inshallah, a little late. Remember when that gamer game, Gamergate shit was at its height? Like, where the fuck were y'all in? <laughs> um, Dank Stoyevsky, uh, two dollar super chat. Gyms are also fat accessible spaces. Just saying. <laughs> True. Uh, James Hurley, Jay Longbone. Uh, what would you rather watch little mermaid remake or the fast and furious 10 i'd rather watch fast x to be honest i'm already invested in that franchise anyway tech kind of because i like wait i'll take a few more of those movies over a fucking few more of those half-assed disney remakes to be honest miss midnight ten dollar super chat no how about they take accountability for their own health and lose weight i'm so tired of the blame game true hmm Oh, Jack Diamond file a super chat. Believe, insert what you are, insert whatever you are, to get away with anything stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed. Like, what the fuck? Uh, no, Mozilla, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Don't interrupt my stream. Anyway, yeah, D Dove is a little late on this shit. And as you can see from these character models, like, oh, this is just delightful. <laughs> this is beautiful. But yeah, the Dove campaign, like, apparently these companies, these corporations are not learning from the Bud Light thing, just at all. Or maybe they already had this in the works and they're like, you know what, we wasted money on this. Just fuck it, just release it. Because I think I've said this before. I think it's the fact that... Um, like Hollywood and ad ad agencies and all this shit, they've hired so many woke assholes because of like the, what the Me Too shit and just being under pressure. They've hired so many people and now they want to get rid of them, but they don't know how without stoking a lawsuit. So they just like like oh let's just let's just fucking release it. You know we got no other choice. Um, Soupy Cappy five. $5, I'll just say $5, Super Chat. Did you know Sam Hyde has a black aunt who sang him spirituals about bombing Microsoft? What the fuck? Oh, 1990 BJK, 799 Super Chat. At my fattest, I never had trouble fitting into a seat anywhere. <clears throat> Is there never a point where these people wake up to themselves? Probably not. And if they do wake up, it's because of all the sleep apnea. <laughs> Uh, Mitchell Poppy. Hey, Jay. Hello. But anyway, let's get into this. Oh, and it's endorsed by uh, Unreal Engine and Women in Games. Ooh. Ooh, very legit. <laughs> oh, I already hate this. Oh, yeah. The oh, wait. You know what? This is the wrong one. This isn't the ad. This is the, um, what do you call it? This is the behind the scenes thing. We're supposed to watch this second. I don't know why this is in the wrong order. But anyway, yeah. Oh, it's so weird because this this fucking thing actually looks like me a little bit. <laughs> oh, I hate it, man. Let's watch this ad. Also, this looks like one of those bad video game ads that you've seen online dozens of times. Like it, it looks like one of those cheap. It's like someone took someone else's game artwork and made it into a cheap ad. That's what it looks like. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> let me go back. 
you have a sword. It's a sword, but you shot him with it. <laughs> Why not just have a gun at that point? <laughs> Why not just have a gun instead of a sword? Whatever. Whatever. Honestly, she already fucking looks weird. I don't like. Oh, oh the problem is that I'm thin and I have big boobs. But your face is trash. <laughs> You're a butter face. Ain't no way. Will some, <laughs> ain't no way a video game developer would make you look like this. Also, like, like I, I understand the whole commentary. Oh, she got big old titties and a big old ass and the sex sexism. But your titties are covered completely. There's no like real cleavage showing. And like, you know, you got no, like, like <laughs> you're not, you're not sexual, you're not sexualized at all. Unless you just think having perky tits is sexualized. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> oh. Also, what is this supposed to do? What's this supposed to do? Like, oh god, I had to squeeze. For one thing, if you gotta squeeze into armor to the point where you gain 40 pounds taking it off, you're not gonna be strong enough to kill a, like a bunch of like alien insurgents. Like, it's not gonna happen. stupid because if you had the choice to do that why not just do it from the beginning <laughs> this is so dumb like oh i know i'll go out there as a fat bitch and then i'll show him it's like if you have the power to because i'm assuming it went well because the ad stops there uh why not just do that in the first place <laughs> that is so stupid 74% of girls feel unrepresented in video games. What girls have you been talking to? I know you're not going to share the statistics and how you, um, and how you took a census of this. I know you're not going to share it because then people would bust, would bu like debunk it and bust right through it. 74% of girls will feel unrepresented. Who did you ask? Are these girls regular gamers? Or are they feminists? How old are they? What dem like what demographic? Like you're not gonna share that. We partnered with Unreal Engine and Women in Games. <laughs> we we partnered with Women in Games because they, they they don't have a biased outlook on this shit at all. Even though they're called Women in Games, <laughs> that's like saying that's like people collecting um, information about we discovered. The 74% of black people love stealing. We partnered with the KKK <laughs> and Highland from the Edge. <laughs> we partnered up with them so we could gather this information. Hey, motherfucker, please. Now I'm so fat I can barely move as fast as I did before. Let's make virtual beauty real, but if it's virtual, but if it's virtual beauty, she would look the way she did before. Um. So yeah, this is dumb. This is really stupid. <laughs> oh God, you couldn't even be damned to cover up your goddamn stomach or wear more flattering shorts. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, Joey Joster, 74%. Where'd they get that from? Like, out of their ass. That's exactly where they got it from. Bumcrack Jones, lots of games allow you to make fat characters, you know? Yeah, they, yeah, of course.
course they got sliders. They get them. Of course they have a default <clears throat> settings for characters, but they have sliders to make them bigger and make them exactly what, like Elden Ring for for example. You know Elden Ring. I don't think you can make them fat, but you can make them any color. Make them look any way you fucking want to. But now nah, let's just ignore that. Let's just let's just let's just ignore it. Zombie chicks two dollars super chat feels narcissistic to expect media to represent you. Yeah, especially considering that creativity is about uh, what the individual person can bring to the table. They're not meant to like represent you. That's yeah. That's no. That's bullshit. Soul seven ten. $10 super chat, women in games, wigs. <laughs> Skotsky 02. Yes, because a woman who trained enough to go to war would do- totally look like she can't stop eating donuts. Uh, oh my God, excuse me. Okay, so that was it. Ugh, that's some bullshit. Okay, now there's a video um, partnered with this. It's like a behind the scene, like oh, like the women who made it, and a behind the scenes look at some real, you know, some real women. <laughs> oh come on, come on! There we go. Oh yeah, dos personajes, mujeres. And like yeah, there's gonna be subtitles for some reason. Because <clears throat> there's like I think oh I don't know they have so many different chicks involved in this I don't know why. Oh yeah, dos personajes. There were only two female mujeres, characters. Both over-sexualized. And well, those were the only two options I could choose from. Why do I feel like you're lying? And what game was it? What are you talking about? What game are you talking about? Oh, cherries. Clearly something you do not eat. <laughs> and well, those were the only two options. Okay, she's still talking. Yeah, what game? They don't. Spe- of course she doesn't specify what game she's talking about. Because then people are going to look it up and be like, yeah, you lying. <laughs> Two out of three female gamers in the UK say there's a lack of representation in video games. Like, you have to ask gamer girls about that. Don't ask girls who don't fucking play video games. Jack Diamond, $2 Super Chat. What about guys' feelings? Oh, wait, they dislike us. <laughs> you were not there. You, don't- you are not there. You do not exist. Uh, the fangirl down the street, $5 Super Chat. I don't know who needs to hear this, but not everyone deserves to be represented in everything. True. It exists. The things are not made for you. I don't look like that. Not everyone. Oh, you certainly don't. <laughs> I am sorry, but Jesus Christ. Okay, this cripple bitch right here wants like an action fairy tale game character like a lead ac- action fairy tale game character to, to represent her like no offense no offense whatsoever but bitch she can't walk <laughs> and people like activity with their video games you expect them to just make a character who's in a fucking wheelchair like what they gonna be doing like there's plenty of wheelchair bound characters who are good representation for you I forgot that I forgot like uh Oracle, right? Oracle after Barbara uh Barbara what's her name? After Barbara Gordon gets shot in the spine. She's confi- confined to a wheelchair and becomes Oracle. Like that's not good enough for you? <laughs> Plenty of cripple at like Professor X. That's not good enough for you? Robot Dues 499 super chat. It took a long time to make because they had to stop every five seconds for mocap to catch their breath. Damn. Budget brick. They do know the uh, majority of players are males, right? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. But see, that's, that's not even the thing. The thing is, they don't, you know they did not ask female gamers what their opinion was. Filipino white boy, two dollars super chat. Have you reacted to the blackening yet? Uh, I did. With uh, what the fuck is his name? <laughs> I did with Carl. I don't know if he posted that or we watched it separately from his stream. I forgot. But yes, yeah, so, uh, um, to sum up, what I think about the blackening trailer is, it's just like, it's like lame '90s humor. Put in a 2023 movie 
I mean, and plus, oh, the Trump jokes, which were already outdated as soon as he started running for president. <laughs> oh, I'm the whitest person here because I voted for Trump. It's like, oh, God, really? Really? That joke is going to be outdated once November hits. Well, sorry, next November. <laughs> That's that, that joke is going to be so fucking old. <laughs> And it doesn't, that joke doesn't make any sense anymore anyway because of all the press conferences happening in Chicago uh, with whole black people being pissed as hell that illegal immigrants are coming into their neighborhoods. <laughs> so that, 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 yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work anymore. Uh, Dank Stoyevsky, $5 super chat. They should put rockets on the wheelchair chick and put her in a, a twisted metal game. Uh, the best name I can think of, four ninety nine super chat. I find it funny that people who shame hot people are the same who actively support joining OnlyFans. Yeah. The thing is, they don't want you to find hot people hot. They want you to find them hot. And they will do it by force. <laughs> we will be represented in everything, so you have no choice but to jerk off to us. That's basically what it is. It ain't got nothing to do with, like, oh, positive reinforcement, representation. It's got nothing to do with that. They want you to jerk off to them. They want to feel desired. I want to be desired. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, it's, not, it's just not going to happen. If it, it, if it hasn't happened already, it's not going to happen. I don't look like that. Not everyone looks like that. But a lot of games like this, you can customize your own character, bitch. Like it's it's a that's the rest, those heavy restrictions on character design. That's not a thing anymore. It's uh, excuse me. That's barely a fucking thing anymore. DJ Aftershock, five dollars super chat. There are rumors of a land that manufactures thousands of Grace Randolph clones. It's rumored to be named uh, Winnetka, Lake County, and DuPage County. <laughs> Fractal Machine, uh, fifteen dollars super chat or fifteen. So that symbol, like you know how your money is metal. If the currency is like the name of the currency is just a symbol. <laughs> Six ways to be a fat ally: no gym, eat only fast food, drink melted butter, drink only soda, develop a body odor, become diabetic. Damn. But yeah, um, there's been detailed character design for a long time. If you're not using it, that's your fucking problem. And honestly, I don't believe a lot of these chicks are gamers. <laughs> because if you were, you'd know about this already. But, uh... We should really show everybody that who we really are as people. And we should all yeah, like have a chance. A character that looks like me in a video game and be like, Yo, this baby's fire. <laughs> oh, that's not narcissistic at all. John Doe, the average Joe, 499 Super Chat. Reasonable people see hot and fit characters as an inspiration to aim for. These women want to drag them down to their level instead. Yep. Moondoggy, $10 Super Chat. It's interesting. Uh, that ugh, it's interesting. What it's inter <laughs> What's interesting is that they are free to make whatever they want, but it's a whole other story whether people want to buy into it. So many indie games on Steam are like, like half things they have things they are looking for. Now, fuck the variety that's already available. People need to make more shit. We want to be heard and seen. Emily Van Dort, 499 Super Chat is a female gamer. I care more about characters being realistic in said game than being diverse just for the sake of it. Yeah. Jack Diamond, two dollars super chat. Few people look like their character. It's role play, right? Like, oh, I don't want to have imagination and uh, make something that doesn't look like me, but something I want to aspire to like look like. No, everything has to look like me. As if that's not the most narcissistic fucking shit you ever heard. There are thousands of skins available to choose from. Wait a minute, you used. Images from GTA games? Hang on, ruin that, ruin that. It, aren't these like GTA images? It's from. But finally. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, ruin that. <laughs> uh. 
Oh my god, it's, this is like if 2002 Justin Timberlake was slowly... <laughs> it's like 2002 Justin Timberlake was slowly turning into some kind of clown demon. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Finally. One that looks... Oh, one that looks like mine. Yeah, I think... No, I think we need to reconsider that. Because this is awful. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it, guys? Y'all love this shit, right? <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. My. Oh, I look so badass. I look so badass in a fucking sweater, <laughs> Bob Hope pants, and these, like, little childish sketchers I got on. One that looks like mine. Oh, I I look so badass. <laughs> looking like I'm going to. <laughs> looking like I'm picking up some body wash at, at Walmart. I don't know. It's so badass. It's so badass. Like, that's not badass. Like, I'm sorry, but let's just be real. What is this? <laughs> oh, God. People don't want to clown you, but you make it all too easy. What is this? <laughs> I look so badass. <sighs> it's not only about self-esteem, it's about what you can or cannot do with your life. I do. It's well what you can and cannot do with your life. I Thanks to this campaign, now I believe I can fly in the air with a giant gun, with a, with a giant sword, and a bunch of heavy armor fighting aliens. Now I believe I can do it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, God. I, I no, 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 we got that. We are different. It's beautiful. I think it's... it's Wait, is this supposed to be like, um, what's the name of it? Uh, Fortnite? Because honestly, are you really going to complain about lack of variety in Fortnite? What the fuck are you doing playing Fortnite any goddamn way? <laughs> they dream. <laughs> and now we're partying, we want to get drive more diversity in gaming. <laughs> is there anything more powerful than being a legend? Yes. Being real. I'm a real woman because I'm missing chromosomes. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. But still, like, don't like, don't say shit like that. I'm a real woman. Like, yeah, you sound like a fucking asshole. <laughs> we, that we are unique, beautiful, and brave. And honestly, like, that still looks like a better version of you. That still looks like a more idealized version. You're like, this is this is you, and this is that thing. That still looks better than how you look now. Yeah, that still looks better than how you look now. I mean, come on. Let's be real here. Um, some, <laughs> some of y'all are still going to be uh, dressed up to, be, to look a little bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. Dead Heart, $5 super chat for a second. I thought that chick falling from the sky was a sharp looking nuke. <laughs> Our unique, beautiful, and brave, and that we should be able to play the game. I, how are you not able to play the game? I can't play the game unless the lead character looks like me. Like, what kind of shit is that? What is that? <laughs> this is more about you than the gaming industry. This is a, a gaggle of winners. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that's millions of dollars down the drain on Real Engine. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, Darshan, too good. Two pound super chat. Dinner ladies representing Dove. <laughs> 
Okay. Anyway, what else we got? Oh, yeah. I was going to take a little look at this Daily Show clip. I think people already kind of sounded off on it on Twitter, but I, wa- I wanted to track it down and talk a little shit about it anyway. Um... And then, because I'm doing a couple small videos first before we get to the big shit that I want to talk about. Uh, this is going to be real, this is just real, real stupid. I mean, it's the Daily Show. It hasn't been. And it's, I find it funny that this clip was posted on Comedy Central Africa. <laughs> And it has a black chicken. Just for, hold on. Maybe she's from Africa. Let's see. From New York City, the only city in America. It's the show that invented news. This is the Daily Show with your host, Dulce Sloan. Let's move on to another accomplished black woman. The Daily Show. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to look at those. Um. I want to look at that. Um at those letters again tds <laughs> tedious trump derangement syndrome <laughs> I don't know. just wanted to say a little something about it. yeah i just fi- find those um initials very interesting well let's continue let's move on to another accomplished black woman cleopatra and don't tell me she wasn't black i'm already hearing enough of that from egypt well the folks in egypt Wait, what? You can tell it's a laugh track because no one in their fucking right mind would laugh at that. Vash Stampede, Fight Alice, Super Chat, playing games where I imagine myself looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger definitely helped me in wanting a better body and looking sexy. Blank face. Wait, did Trevor Noah leave? Yeah, he left to fuck, uh, what's, what's her name? With Dua Lipa? <laughs> I think he's, that's the chick he's dating. I'd leave this show too, though, because, I mean, come on. It, it can only tear you down as a as an artist. <laughs> well, the folks in Egypt are accusing Netflix of misrepresenting history in Netflix's new docuseries called Queen Cleopatra. Yeah, the country is actually criticizing the decision to cast a black woman to play the title role in series reenactments. Netflix says the casting decision was intended to acknowledge the centuries-long conversation about the ruler's race and the multicultural history of Egypt. But official I've seen the whole show. It, the only conversation it could possibly start is... Uh, yeah, no, no conversation. Actually, <laughs> that I think about it, I can't, I can't think of anything. Keldrick, five dollars super chat. Hasn't this whole stream been talking about big crap? Also, check your stream labs. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me see, because I don't get notification. Because I get emails on my stream labs, but I don't get like notifications for it, unfortunately. Um, because I can't stand getting email notifications. I don't want to say people's names out loud because I don't know if you want your name from your PayPal to be said out loud. But yeah, someone sent me three dollars on PayPal or on my, oh my sorry on my Streamlabs. Thank you. Oh, someone sent me Fitty. I'm guessing it's the person who said uh, who uh, said told me to check my Streamlabs. Somebody sent me Fitty on Streamlabs. Thank you. I appreciate it. But anyway, yeah, this, this series causes no conversation. Absolutely fuck, fucking none. They said, oh, we're, we're starting to start conversation. About what? It's already been, the, the discourse around Cleopatra has already been handled. We've established, that's why there's so much outrage about this series. Because it's already been handled. <laughs> it's been established and y'all denying it. Like, it's like, nah, 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 man, that's not true. It's still up in the air. We don't know. <laughs> Ain't no conversation. And also, the show just sucks. I, yeah, I saw it with Carl. Uh, don't, but don't get excited because there's not going to be any uh, videos for that. Hell no. Because it's not, it's just boring. Like, there's some funny shit, but it's mostly boring. You're not missing anything. And I, I, I would suggest you eat, not even go see it. But uh, yeah, my uh, final analysis on Queen Cleopatra is that it sucks. It, it's not good. It's total wank, f- wank for middle-aged uh, black women historians. Because every panelist 
or every expert in that documentary is is either a woman or a black woman or like this one Egypt, Egyptian guy but of course he believes all the bullshit that you know, all the other experts say so that doesn't really count <laughs> he's he's there as a token like he's there as a courtesy to to the Egyptian people that's basically all it is in Cairo are calling it a blatant historical fallacy claiming that Cleopatra was fair skinned and of Greek descent oh okay Egypt is concerned about historical accuracy. Yes. Like, how fucking arrogant do you have to be like, okay, the people, the country, this whole ass fucking country is worried about the integrity of, the, of their history and they're criticizing people who who's don't, don't share this culture, like butt fucking it, like they're criticizing it. Like, how entitled of them how entitled oh my god you ham hock eating bitch <laughs> you complaining when all the mummy movies came out oh oh well, wow dead heart hang on a second dead heart fight alice super chat let me get a motivational quote from you please i already feel exhausted from the nonsense uh don't die <laughs> that's all i got bashed it because this 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 the, this is already um, destroying my will to live. Vash Stampede, five dollars super chat. Only in America could a native whole country say, "Hey, you've, hey, you're wrong, and this isn't right." And one <laughs> group's response be, "No, you're wrong, bigot." <laughs> yeah, uh, ugh. Yeah, and also, yeah, it, like so I think somebody pointed this out in chat. Nobody's laughing at this shit because, yeah, I'd be un for me. I wouldn't. There wouldn't be any uncomfortable laughter. I would just yell out, <coughs> oh, "Excuse me, yeah, yeah, bitch." Egyptians care about their Egyptian culture. Stupid. And why is every bitch on TV now? Like, <laughs> it seems like every every on every woke show they get some bitch who looks like Lizzo historical accuracy i didn't hear you complaining when all the mummy movies came out because they're 100 percent fictional they're not based in any kind of fucking reality there are people who pointed out to me that emotep is based on a real person but how real can that person how how real i mean i mean that's like basically it's all null and void because the motherfucker is a legit mummy like <laughs> superimposing his face in sand <laughs> in a sandstorm so that well he's based on yeah he's based on a real person he's not a real person that emotep ain't the same as the emotep that existed like thousands of years ago hundreds of thousands of years ago so that's that's that that doesn't hold up that doesn't work for me What about their mummy movies? And then she uses a fucking screen cap of mummies walking and Brendan fucking Fraser. <laughs> but what about this? This isn't based on their fucking history, you stupid bitch. What are you talking about? And plus they say this is a documentary. They, like the Queen Cleopatra thing is a docu-series. This is an action this is an action fantasy film that's based in zero reality whatsoever. What you talking about? And I love how they, like, like the audience basically having no choice but to clap because they know it would sound really sad and disrespectful if they didn't. <laughs> that's how polite us Americans are. <laughs> the, um, like polite to a fault. Like uh, that's stupid. But let's clap anyway because I think I'd be really like it's basically um. Um, what's the, um, it's like a reverse bystander effect. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's basically, no, they're just like lemmings. They're just doing it because everyone else is doing it. They're not doing it because they actually fucking agree. Because no one can be that goddamn stupid. Fractal machine, $6 super chat, 70%, 74% of wine moms feel underrepresented in gaming. Bumcrack Jones, two dollars super chat. I don't care what Twitter says. Elon Musk is black. <laughs> also, it could be just like a, an applause machine. We got mummies coming back from the dead, chasing Brendan Fraser, and y'all don't have a problem. And then 
No, because it's not based on their history. It doesn't take a specific person and be like, yeah, yeah, this is historically accurate. This is this is a documentary. This is some real shit. No, the people who made Queen, Queen Cleopatra meant for that to be a documentary and said this is basically historical fucking fact. Like, this is it's historical fact that we don't know what race she is. Like, no, it's historical fact that you do know what race she is. You are denying that you know what race she is. A black woman plays Cleopatra and all of a sudden it's like, oh, 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 that didn't happen. That of course not, because it's been proven that that didn't happen. Oh God! Oh, why did <laughs> like this is gonna be this is gonna be rough? But I'm gonna say it. Why do these fucking black female comedians get on these sh like shows as co-anchors or whatever and mammify them mammify themselves <laughs> for for our enjoyment? Like why? And, and then look fucking dumb on top of that. Just say they like the dumbest fucking shit <laughs> there's no way like oh god this is the kind of represent well, let's see that's the thing you want like a tarted up um version of someone else's fucking culture to represent you so naturally you would want some like um idiotic cholesterol huffing like fucking roll, like talking at her neck bitch to rep also represent represent you on television like, if this was the joke that she's a fucking moron, then I'd be like, okay, fine. Still not still not funny. Still not funny because you're not really doing it right. But no, they actually, she says things that they actually, they actually, she she's portraying messages. They, they act, this is why comedy is so bad now. Because it's shit you already, like, the woke comedy is bullshit because it's just shit they already fucking believe said in a funny voice. And they think, for, somehow they think that's comedy. There's no timing. It's not like, it's just like, oh, black people didn't fucking exist in, in, in fucking Egypt. And then people are just supposed to fucking clap because they're being coddled. They actually genuinely think they're fucking funny. That didn't happen. No, the mummy, that was real. This, uh -huh. like, what are the Egyptians so afraid of? You think Cleopatra is going to turn your history into a black exploitation film? You think she's gonna be cruising down the Nile in a Cadillac yelling, freeze, jive, turkeys, this is my- Well, for, I've seen the, like it's, I've seen the show. And they a actually have Cleopatra saying really modern shit. Like Cle Cleopatra literally says, um, uh, what the fuck did she say? Oh my God. This is, this is hilarious, by the way. I actually have a clip. No, I could probably find the clip right now. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. I gotta turn that off for a minute because I don't wanna show all my stuff. Um, let me try to find this goddamn clip. This is gonna make y'all laugh. <laughs> this is so fucking ridiculous. But they got her saying some goddamn um, podcast, female podcast bro bullshit. It's, 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 it's bad. Oh, now I got to go to advanced search. Hang on a second. Nineteen ninety BJK seven ninety nine super chat. I look forward to a documentary on Rosa Parks where she's played by a white woman. And yes, there are actually people who think the mummy is real. <laughs> All of the uh... let me find this shit. Oh. Oh, God damn it. I spelled it wrong. Shit. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We got the clip. We're ready to go. Oh, shit. 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 Back up. All right. Now, this is the modern bullshit I'm, t I'm, t I I'm, I'm talking about. She said, what are you afraid of? You think Cleopatra going to be riding around her? Oh, well, we, we, we about to see. We about to see in a second. Um, all right, just watch this shit. 
oh, this is going to be funny. Oh, back up a little bit. She's supplying 200 of their 800 ships and nearly all of the financing. But this doesn't sit well with all of Antony's generals, some of whom don't want to take orders from a woman. With all due. You see, you see, the, fuck, they already have the modern day framing. They already frame it. Because the whole series is basically, they could have basically just made a Netflix movie and been done with it. But they had to be greedy and say, it's, oh, this is like real shit. This is basically a docu a docu series. They frame this as, oh, this is like the true story of Cleopatra. But they, and, but they have like modern framing throughout the entire fucking movie. Well, sorry, series. From a woman. With all due respect, our allegiance is to the general. This acting is really bad, by the way. <laughs> Shit! It's to the general. Not you a. will do well to remember what I bring to the table. Oh, you do. <laughs> You will do well to. <laughs> Wait. Oh, let's say that again. Not you a. will do well to remember what I bring to the table. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't some back and forth where, like, he says, where she ends up saying, like, I am the table. <laughs> because what the fuck was that? They actually got this bitch saying, you need to know well what I bring to the table. That is a podcast bro. That's podcast bro bullshit that they put in a Queen Cleopatra show. <laughs> oh, my God. That is. Come on. Well, you think they were going to modernize her? Yes, they did modernize, modernize her. Stop it. Knock it off. Pyramid now. <laughs> so, okay, you can have Cleopatra, but then we get Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's only fair. We all know Jesus was black because he was found guilty in court. Oh, uh, you might want to rephrase that. You might want to rephrase that. <laughs> he was found guilty. I mean, wrongfully guilty in a court. Because saying he was found guilty, that just, that sounds racist <laughs> to black people. Of course he was black. Uh, he went to prison. <laughs> Which doesn't really specify, like, uh, innocence or guilt. So it, makes it, it just makes it sound like you're saying that black people get arrested a lot. Because they're criminals. <laughs> you might want to rephrase it. This is what I'm saying. Woke comedy is trash. It's so trash. Vash Stampede, $10 Super Chat. Egypt has uh, hated insults to their culture, i.e. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, 1980 because they quoted the Quran in one scene by Villain Dio stopping produ production of JoJo's for nearly three decades on JoJo's anime. Damn, I didn't know that. Uh, G, uh, G, J Greenlee, five dollars super chat. I am the one who brings the table. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically that's, that's basically like it. The Queen Cleopatra show has such a modern framing in terms of storytelling and just certain shit, just certain shit. Now that Cleopatra, sh that Cleopatra miniseries that I've been suggesting on Twitter ever since this came out, like the nineteen ninety nine version. It's got a modern framing too, on some level, but it's still a lot better than this. And then they don't claim to be a fucking docu series. That's another thing. They don't claim. Oh, this is one hundred percent the truth. They don't claim to make something that's factual. And he did nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, see that? Why didn't? Oh, see, oh, these jokes are so shitty. Why didn't you just say after the beginning? Because it made you sound it racist at first. And since we're talking about representation, let's talk about what mermaids really look like. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Miss Haley. No, there's a new controversy. Hallie, not Haley. Her name's Hallie. 
I've made that mistake too, but like y'all on a fucking TV show where it's your job to look this shit up. About a statue that some people say is too damn sexy. <laughs> I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> you got Mermaid the Stallion over here. <laughs> this is for. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Oh, that's not funny. Anyway, this is ass. <laughs> I'm done with it. I've said my piece. Jay Greenleaf, five dollars super chat. Uh, WKUK uh, History Channel skit is more faithful. <laughs> Excuse me. Budget Brick Assassin's Creed has a more accurate depiction of Cleopatra, and that game has an ancient race of people who made supercomputers from thousands of years. Damn. Evil Hero Diamond Cat, to all the Super Chat, do you have any interest in collabing with uh, Pipkin Pippa? I have no idea who that is. <laughs> Kill Switch Engage, this is painfully unfunny. Yeah. Oh, most definitely, like, woke comedy has never been funny. Oh, but yeah, let's go to this shit. This is a clip I saw circulating for a while. It's Pierce Morgan going after these, these TikTok fatties. <laughs> oh! I, I, I like it's getting to the point where I'm looking up other people talking shit about uh, talking shit about TikTok instead of actually going to TikTok's uh, well of cringe because it's like ugh, the source is just too much. It's just too much. Damning figures today reveal that obesity costs British taxpayers almost 14 billion pounds a year. Obese patients mm. cost the British Health Service twice as much as those of a healthy weight. But the body positivity movement preaches that fat is now fabulous and that his craze is fat fluencers who rake in cash by boasting about, well, being fat. What I eat in a day is a fat bitch. Let's go. I don't know how many times I... Yeah, like, why would you do... <laughs> this is how much I eat is a fat bitch. Let's get into it. Like, why would you do that? That's got to be on some fetish shit, right? That's got to be, like, borderline fetishistic because I, I had a theory about this with Poe on Twitter. Like, it's got to be set up in a way where it's like it's to pander to fat fetish freaks. <laughs> this is how much I eat in a day. Look at me down this, this, <laughs> look at me down this, this <laughs> three gallon bowl of, of cheddar eggs. Like, come on. Why trash, why trash earth? Five dollars super chat. Really liked your little mermaid review. Uh, hope you're happy and well. Oh, thank you. And plus, there's there's this other channel, like the chick I said, who who weighs a futon. Uh, <laughs> she is trying to. She's suing the airline. Uh, the airline uh, whose seats she couldn't get her fat ass through. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's suing them now. But then when you go to her channel, her TikTok channel. It's nothing, the videos are just nothing but her try to, trying to do things as a fat person. And she, and she does it in a way where it's like, she's talking like in the pseudo, like sexy porn voice, doing shit. Oh, I can barely walk down these stairs. Oh my God, I'm stuck between two trees. Someone help me. <laughs> it's so great being fat. I can barely get in this car. Like that type of shit. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is some fetish shit. This, no, that's bullshit. There's no way in hell this is not to elicit the boners of freaks. There's no way. But she's still, but also, she's also suing the airline. So I'm like, there's that but then again like who wouldn't try to get a fucking paycheck out of it if you were so scummy like if you're in the mindset of turning on people who like to watch you kill yourself uh well then yeah you're gonna sue an airline for nothing i have to tell you bitches i'm gonna start my morning off with a starbucks iced coffee well hey 9 30 a.m and you're eating a whole sleeve of cookies like, I'm fat, but I've never done that shit. Unless there's nothing else in the house but some cookies. Like, if there's nothing, like, if there's no food in the house but cookies, then I'll be like, well, what else, what else am I going to do? <laughs> like, you can't get anything else because your check ain't in yet. But, the, like, there's a sleeve of cookies right there. Like, yeah, okay. But you know damn well this bitch's house is full of food. You, like, she, you're on TikTok making money about how much food you eat. 
and how fat you are. You definitely got your house stocked. Your house is definitely stocked of with food. But a sleeve of cookies at 9 a.m. You can't just get up and get up off your fucking ass and make some eggs, bacon, and like have some more juice. That's basically that's basically my go-to damn near every morning. Because I realized um, at, so, at a certain point in my life that you cannot eat cereal every day. Because <laughs> that's just too much sugar and too much dairy at once in the morning. It's no good for you. It's not going to, and you're going you're gonna to end up feeling sleepy later on in the day anyway. Sugar in the morning, like too, or too much sugar in the morning is not good for you. <laughs> it's just going to fuck with you and you're not going to be alert for the rest of the day. So what I do is I make sure I, ma- I eat like two eggs, two slices of bacon, and maybe a pastry on the side. If not, I'll just have some toast. And that's about it. <laughs> And that can probably last me until dinner. But these bitches, like, I, I have to eat a whole sleeve of cookies. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's skeevy. Uh, wait, a whole sleeve and orange juice. And not even, like, orange juice. It's from concentrates. It's orange concentrates. It's not the actual juice. It ain't even, it's not Tropicana, it's not like, it's not F- Florida's best or whatever the fuck. It's, it's a fucking juice box, like a five-year-old. What the fuck are you doing? Ah! Bus nut, $10 super chat. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you're hot, Jay. Oh, 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 love, babe. Thank you. Budget brick, the internet has just made everyone too confident in their stupidity. True. Like, so basically, yeah, this is orange, orange aid with a sleeve of fucking cookies. Ugh. <laughs> and, and, and t- like, she tries, she tries to be slick. Oh, I spaced it out between, in an hour. But I don't see no water. <laughs> I don't see no water. And it's not, like I said, it's not even real orange juice. That's ridiculous. Oh, I, I ate half the sleeve in an hour. That's because I know I know the mindset of a fat person. I used to have it, <laughs> and I still have it somewhat on some level. But that's like, oh well, if I eat this really fattening thing that's not um, that's not adequate for the time of day, as long as I only eat half of it now and half of it an hour later, it won't be as fat. But no, it's still fat. Stop. Thanks to Ayevsky, $5 Super Chat. How does anyone eat a whole sleeve over the age of 30? I can't do salt, salt water taffy without my stomach hurting anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Also, Bus Nut, thanks, thank you once again for that compliment. It's rare that I ever hear it. Your lies make me happy. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, I'll have the Wait, what? No, no, no. Go back. Go back. Go back, go back. I thought they were going to continue with that. Rustlers. I don't know what that is. Look like some British shit. And Nesquik. Something? What the fuck is that? I don't know what the it's, it's Nesquik in some fucking. I don't know what that is. That is, but it's definitely a bunch of processed shit by 12. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It says right there. R- Rustler burger with ketchup and a chocolate Nesquik slice. And eat nothing but processed shit. Nothing but processed shit. God damn. Ever since I moved to Florida, like, ba- all, damn near all my meals have been homemade. And that does make a serious fucking difference. It makes a serious difference in how you eat. Look at this Nesquik. A Nesquik bar and a fucking processed burger and a bit of fucking. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Uh, cake hole. Yeah, I'll, yeah. nothing will make you feel fatter than looking at the, the cake you bought in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> and the label says cake hole. <laughs> oh my God. Cake hole. That's what you are, you bitch. And then it has a few mouthfuls of this cake, but it wasn't as. even is that? 
Really? <laughs> that fucking that reaction was the best. I don't. Know. I don't. I'm not too high on Piers Morgan. I don't like him that much because he says some dumb shit about um the whole Johnny Depp situation. He said some other dumb shit too. But like, whenever he takes on some of these woke motherfuckers, it's it's the funniest shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was great. That's what people are watching, apparently. Well, TikTokers like my next guest are putting the pound in excess. Oh, bruh. The new hot 30i is just 89.99. Yeah, like I said, this shit is just, it's just fetish shit. It's fetish shit. Because how is it funny? Like other fat comedians and like fat like com- comedic actors have more than their weight going for them. Like it's a it can be a it can be part of their comedy, but it's not the whole thing because that's not sustainable. Because sooner or later your ass is gonna be dead, <laughs> and half the time, um, it's gonna be sad because people are just gonna be like, oh yeah, it's not funny. You're gonna die. <laughs> you, you've got you, like your whole heart is yellow <laughs> because you eat. You're so goddamn big. You like sweets well you can get two kilos of sweets for two kilos maybe today no i'm promoting a good deal 25.99 for 63 rolls of toilet paper a donut maker from tower all of these products have two-year warranty a candy floss maker and a chocolate fountain okay so i'm joined (laughs) he like imagine sitting still and it's still being hard to hard for you to breathe (laughs) Oh God! Sitting is just <laughs> all the sitting in the seats, like the the activity, just from my ass flaps moving a little bit. It's, just, it's winding me. So I'm joined by TikTok star George Keyword, who you just saw there, and Sierra Bargains. <laughs> That's what I say. Oh, this is his wife, who's clearly only with him for money. Look at her, like that face she made right before she knew the camera was on her. <laughs> Just look at that smile. Go away. <laughs> the more I go back. Because <laughs> I think I've seen these people before. I think they were on. They were on. Oh, what was that channel? That truly is. Oh, my boyfriend's fat, but I'm not with him for the money. Like one of those fucking videos. Huh? Which, if you make a video like that, you're just basically advertising. Yes, I am only with this person for the money. <laughs> That's why I say bargains. Bargains. All right. She's a fucking robot. <laughs> She's only with him for the goddamn money. Uh, and his wife, Sienna, and the host of the Blair White Project, Blair. Why? Okay, listen. Oh, just randomly Blair, Blair White. Uh, Blair, I'll come to you in a moment. <laughs> First of all, all right, George, let me get us some stats. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how much do you weigh? Look, I'm not going to talk about numbers because the thing is, when you... When well, I think I, you should. I mean, no, you no, are... no, no, the thing is... If I, could <laughs> I think do... you should <laughs> because you're getting up there. Oh, Disparu, what's up? Welcome to the chat once again. Seems weird for him to choose a platform with vertical video. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy like imagine tiktok just messaging him like you're over capacity <laughs> you're over resolution capacity flip the phone to fat your fat bastard <laughs> oh, anyway joey joster five dollars super chat are you gonna see that harry on a hook video on colorism the one about the girl from lilo and stitch oh jesus i thought i covered that already all her videos are like so similar. I feel like I've seen it already. The, the number of how much I weigh, it's going to be all over the sun, all those trashy newspapers tomorrow morning. I don't need it. For one thing, you're advertising yourself as like a nasty fat bastard. Like that's, that's how he's doing it. And then you're, and now you're worried about, oh, someone's now someone's going to like plaster me all over the newspaper. No one has enough. For one thing. Nobody has enough paper <laughs> to put you on a fucking newspaper. There's only so like, there's only so much paper in the world to put you on the front page. That's number one. Number two, you've been drawing in this attention. You can't act all fucking high and mighty and victimize now. It's too late. You done it. It's over. <laughs> like look at me, I'm a fat bastard, and the media says you're a fat bastard. It's like oh, how dare you call me a fat bastard? Don't need it. Well, you don't need it. You're on, no, you're no, on no, TikTok no, every no, day showing is, us how big you are. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and you're no, proud of it. No, 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 there's a difference. There's proud, 
And then there's just being positive in my own skin. And that's what. <laughs> this motherfucker, do you think we are stupid? That's this generation in a nutshell. No, no, no. I didn't say that. I said this other thing that's exactly like what you just said. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I'm just comfortable with my... Bitch, stop playing. <laughs> just stop it. Darshan, too good. Uh, two pounds super chat. He was on a show. People do nothing on, B <laughs> on BBC. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that he tries to get on all the latest uh, reality shows or TV. Like, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he wants to turn around and be... Uh, victimized and play... The, like, he wants to play the victim because he knows he can play that card. Because Well... He's a fat man, so probably not. If he was a fat woman, he could definitely play both cards at the same time. I've seen it before. Like, um, what's her name? <clears throat> that fat model. I, I already forgot her goddamn name. Uh, Tess Holiday. A couple other people. They, they can do... See, if you're a woman and fat, you can play that game. You can go back and forth between crying about being fat and then, <laughs> and then the next day, oh, I'm so confident and happy about this. You know, I'm, I'm such a bad bitch. It's like, bit, stop it. Stop it. Knock it off. Well, I am. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not proud to be fat. Would you, accept, proud to... would you accept that by medical definition, you are morbidly obese? Look, if that's what medically you want to call it, then call it. Well, no, it's fine. you know it's your weight, I no, don't. No, 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 no. But that's, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Right, so here's my issue that. with this body positivity mm -hmm. thing. People shouldn't be celebrating being morbidly obese, in my estimation. Uh, that's the, the, because the, actually, it is a dangerous condition that causes many people to die. Look, you've got a fair point. It is dangerous. It can lead to dangerous issues, which could, you know, diabetes and so on. And that is an issue. But we don't encourage gaining weight. There's a difference between the videos you just showed on the screen and what it, we're George talking about now. <laughs> Come off it. <laughs> Uh, Pierce Morgan cracks me up when I when I can actually stand him. <laughs> oh, come off it. Snicker dudes, ten dollars super chat. As a fellow large woman who's also trying to do better for herself, I hope being where you are continues to help you, Jay. You are my favorite creator. Uh thank you, Snicker Dudes. And yes, it is helping me. One hundred percent. All I gotta do is like well, I'm not through moving yet. I'm only at the like stage one of moving You're being right. here, but now like after this stream. A little bit after the stream, I have to like start packing my shit up again so we can move to the second location. <laughs> so, and then I'll be like completely moved and relaxed. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is helping being somewhere that isn't my old house in Chicago. Definitely. Because my mother encourages, uh, she's always encouraged us though, since I was a kid, like home cooked meals because that does make it, like, if you eat nothing but processed shit, you're going to, you are going to fucking kill yourself, honestly. Why trash Earth? Five dollars super chat. Bro, he'd have to get buried in a semi-truck. He's that big. <laughs> Dis Disparu, mor morbidly brave. Bump Crack Jones, five dollars super chat. As a fat who's lost 20 plus pounds this year, eating primarily eggs, meat, and brown rice, has made losing weight a lot easier than I thought. Congratulations, Bump Crack. Uh, Starson, uh, Starson, I think. Uh, five dollars super chat his entire identity is being huge he cannot possibly be upset if someone comments on him being huge bro can't with the bopo meeps <laughs> uh fruit succubus good for you jay your mom sounds like a good mom she is <coughs> god damn it <laughs> she <laughs> that had some really bad timing <laughs> but yes my mother is a very very good mom a max power, ten dollars super chat. Moving sucks. Good luck with it. I mean, it should be a little better at the like, uh, cause getting from Chicago to here was a real bitch. <laughs> cause not we had to help my mom move here from two different fucking places, <laughs> two different places. She was in Detroit at first, and then uh, like well she was she was like working back and forth. She lived in Indiana. Worked in Detroit. <laughs> so there was already like a drive, like a, like a fucking two hour drive, I think, or four hour drive in between both places. <laughs> we had to move her out of the, you know, it, it's a whole thing. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> it's a whole fucking thing. Just know it was, it was, it was hell. But now it should be a lot easier because everybody's fucking stuff is here. 
We don't have to go. Like, it's not that long of a draw. Like, we're co- we're, we're going to be good. We're going to be cool. cool. We're going to be fine. But anyway, um... Yeah, all right, let's continue. I got nothing else. Because <laughs> I, to- I totally lost my train of thought. No, 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 this, no, these TikToks are all you're, 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 No, no, no. Oh, let me remind it. Let and remind that it. it can lead to dangerous issues, which could, you know, diabetes and so on. And that is an issue. But we don't encourage gaining weight. There's a difference between the videos. Wait, but yeah, but let's see. Well, we don't say go out and gain weight. But we do make it look like being fat has no repercussions and it's fun. And you could still be such a happy and bubbly person despite being fat. And it, like being fat is basically just a fucking joke. This is an advanced TikTok joke that can go on only as long as your heart can take it. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Like it's not like Tess Holiday. Uh, her entire presence in the modeling world is also encouraging it because actually she's more encouraging it than him because with models, even she would admit this, and people who support her would admit this, that models. <clears throat> normally a set a standard for beauty so she herself is trying to set set a new standard for beauty with the way she looks she's basically trying to say that the way she looks is a preferable look so she is then encouraging obesity but she's not going to say that because that's not a nice way to say body positivity <laughs> You just showed on the screen come off what we're talking George, about now. You're doing no, no, this. No, you're you're come off you're, 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 No, no, no. You're, in, you're showing people encouraging eating food. I'm just saying. Is that pineapple pizza? That better not be pineapple pizza. Because then you're really a horrible person. <laughs> Go back. Is that pineapple on that pizza or no? I don't think it is. No, you know what? It's not. It's not. Encouraging eating food. I'm just saying, wow, look at the pizza. Look, it's from Costco. It's not. No, 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 you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. Sorry. That's what I'm doing. You are glorifying, glorifying, scoffing. It's called taking a piss. It's called taking a piss. (laughs) It's called taking a piss. It's very yellow, almost orange. (laughs) I don't drink that much water. When people ask if the trolls have affected George's confidence, George's confidence. That's English. what it is. Well, maybe. But That's I, what it is. I it's, don't it's think... having a laugh and not taking yourself too why seriously. Is it, why is it funny? And, like, f- the thing is, the fact that he's a fat guy... <clears throat> the fact that he's a fat guy it, and it hasn't really... None of this is actually... You know, that like, he's got a girlfriend <laughs> who's encouraging this shit. Because you know she ain't nothing but a fucking gold digger. She's with him for that TikTok money. And for that, like, the fame he's getting from this shit. That's why she's with him. I'm looking at her like she's a fucking, like, nothing's there. She's a fucking robot. Um, <clears throat> and a man, I'm telling you right now, a man will fucking put up with anything as long as a woman tells him that he's doing a great job. <laughs> That's the only fucking reason he's doing doing these videos. And, like, he's totally unbothered by all of the, uh, you're a fat fuck and all these men. He gets all this hate and he doesn't care because guess what? He's getting fucking blown by the sex doll sitting right next to him. <laughs> Who's saying, yeah, like, oh, darling, you're so sexy because you're so fat. I need money for my nails. <laughs> I need money for Nando's. <laughs> you're rent due, like, this, this is why, like, women can be really dangerous to a dude. Like, if you're not encouraging him the right way, you, he'll turn into this shit. He'll turn into this. Mars, two dollars, two twenty. Super chat. Why is it funny? <laughs> then his chair gives out. <laughs> uh, fitness philo- God damn it, fitness philosopher. It's called Nick. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Pokemontis. I love your British accent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> KDL, she could also be manipulating him. No, nobody but me will have you. Yeah, it could be that. Like I said, that's, uh, yeah, that's one of the things. That's one of the things I was implying. Like manipulate, because she is. She's of course she's she's benefiting off the money he's making. So of course there's definitely gonna be some manipulation in this. She's probably encur- she's encouraging it so he'll he'll keep making the money. But as soon as he stops making that money. And he starts having health problems and shit, and she got to stay home with him when he's bedridden and wipe his ass and all this shit, and um, bathe him. <laughs> she gonna be gone. It's gonna be it. Jack and like yeah, and then all that money goes towards his health problems. 
she gonna be gone. Like it's gonna be over. It's gonna be a wrap. Jack Diamond, two dollars super chat. It's healthy and beautiful. No shame in crackheads. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Jay Goodwin F in the chat for a share. <laughs> James Moore, Nick Akato is such a sad story. He's a talented violinist. Real shame. I mean, you know, it's partially sad. But it's also partially like, I don't care. You do this to yourself. You know you're, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. I don't feel sorry for you because like you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> so people will look at you and you will make money. So you know damn well what you're doing. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say to these motherfuckers. They're so deluded. Like You could say, oh yeah, remember when you were a violinist and you, lo- and you lost all that potential in town. They're not going to give a fuck because they got that money. They don't care. So, yeah. <laughs> It's funny, you know it is funny. It's you have a little smirk yourself before. I, is the other thing is people feel sorry for the thin, talented person he used to be. That's the person they feel sorry for. When you say you feel sorry for somebody, you feel sorry for the person they used to be because you see them as two se- completely separate people, which is understandable because they basically are. But yeah, you don't feel sorry for the person or the actual person who's fucked up their entire life and uh, like vomiting, uh, uh, you know, birthday cake <laughs> on their YouTube channel. Like that's not the person you feel sorry for. I actually don't you find this kind yourself. of thing funny. I think no, it's, come on. I actually think it's quite it, sad. It, it, let, it's let not me, sad. It's comedy. Let me bring it's, him. It's, it's let me satire bring, comedy. Well, maybe. You know it is. I, you, it's satire comedy. <laughs> I'm taking the piss out of myself. Okay, but if it's like... Okay, but like you were just worried about people taking the piss out of you. Except like, like news publications talking shit about you. But like, oh, well, no, it's comedy. It's comedy. But like, then you get fucking hanky when people make comedy out of you. You know it is. Not... You know it is, Piz. I've been an actor for 13 years. George, you know George. damn right I know how this industry works. George, I'll come back Please, to you in a moment. Come on. Let me just go to Blair White in Austin in, oh, in Texas. Okay. Blair, I do have a problem with this because I think it's celebrating a dangerous health condition. And we, and if you're an influencer, why would you want to influence people to think that that is a funny, entertaining, and be something they want to do? Well, you should have an issue with it. You know, my opinion is that the fat positivity movement is a death cult. You know, I'm all about living my life on my own terms, being happy, finding a partner that makes me happy. But you know, life is short, so you have to find happiness. But what cuts it in half is being obese. Your life will literally mm-hmm. end halfway of the length that you would live <clears throat> being obese. And so promoting it, you wouldn't plus, be able to- plus, I think to... he has kids, which makes it even fucking worse. Like, nigga, you're going to be dead soon. You're going to be dead before those kids get out of high school. If that... No, 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 fuck it. He's going to be dead before his kids get into high school. I think he has, like, one son with this chick. Uh, but yeah. How the fuck are you going to be a father and you can't fucking play with these kids? I can make TikToks though. <laughs> I can make TikTok and dance around at TikTok, but I can't play ball with my own son. <laughs> Be anorexic on TikTok and not get comments about how you need to eat a cheeseburger, how you need to gain weight. And you can write it off as trolls, but it's the truth. You know, I've seen um, some TikToks made by him where he is addressing people telling him that he needs to lose weight as trolls and sort of making fun of it. And I just wonder, you know, is it really trolls? I mean, certainly there are mean people on the internet, but there is some truth to it. I mean, I know that he is a father and the idea that mm-hmm. you will in all likelihood, in all certainty actually not live past 50, 60 years old is an issue. So okay. for uh, me, you know, okay. Uh, no, I know. I, wait, 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 what are you The just idea doing? that you will in all likelihood, in all certainty actually not live past 50, 60 years old is Yeah, he's issue. just a delusional so, asshole. Okay. I'm jo- like I'm happy because I'm joking about the abuse I'm, ha- I'm doing to my body. <laughs> There's a lot of people like that where they're just like, as long as I just keep smiling, people won't think I'm suffering. But it's like, no, nigga, you ain't, you're not fooling anybody though. <laughs> Me, you know, we see how fucking know, big you I, are, I, nigga. I, 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 that's that's my view. I want to bring in Sienna, your wife. You've been yeah. listening to this. Yeah. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. Completely. When you see the, the statistics about a... yeah, what is she? What is this <laughs> genius have to say? <laughs> obesity in this country, the cost to the NHS, what it costs the country. Yeah. Are you comfortable about this? 
The way I see it is, firstly, just us personally. Um, we're, we have private health care, so the NHS isn't a thing for us. I do understand that it is costing the NHS a lot. I think it's a bigger problem to address, though. I think it's about educating people when they're young to make healthy food choices. I think a lot of the time when you grow up um, in poverty, uh, like George uh, and I have... I can't get the fuck... But how is that an excuse? When you poor, you ain't got money to spend on food. <laughs> it's about growing up in poverty. Like, is that's not really an excuse. <laughs> it's not really an excuse. Um, a lot of the time, you don't have um, the healthiest options. Yeah, but my response to that would be, yeah. OK, but you've managed not to end up as George has weight-wise. And I don't mean to yeah. denigrate you, George. It could be genetics, though, couldn't it? it you know, no, it no, it's not. It could be enough. It, 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 I don't think it's genetics, is it's, it? No, no. It, I, I believe it's because my parents were, like, cool hippie vegetarians, whereas um, George's were not. And, are, are you comfortable... <laughs> you've got a son, right? Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable about his current weight? Do, um, do you think, when he, when he does this stuff on TikTok, are you really laughing or are you concerned about him? I'm... I, I'm concerned... Not so much about his weight, but more about um, his well-being and, you know... Well, it, that ties into his well-being, you fembot. <laughs> That's Peru. Uh, wouldn't poverty lead to less food? Yeah, yeah, it really would. <laughs> Unless you're the type of family that is too lazy to cook because your parents are never fucking home and then y'all just go end up going to McDonald's every fucking... Every, almost every day. And you just depend on school lunches and just basic shit like bread, mayonnaise, and, and uh, <laughs> bread, mayonnaise, and like like pro like processed uh, lunch meats. And like I said, if you if you have, if you're always eating processed shit and always going out to eat, like yeah, yeah, you're gonna get pretty fucked up. But see, still. Especially now with every like with the uh, inflation thing, like how the fuck <laughs> are you that fucking bit? Yeah, it's a tick. Like I think most of these fat people get on TikTok, they do the fat acceptance thing so they can fund their food binge, and I think that I think that's that's just what it is because when I was a kid, the reason why I was fat is I wasn't fat at first. It took a while. Uh, it's, it's like for me, it was like I started out fat because my father would um, would inappropriately feed me as a child. Like my mother used to tell me stories about him feeding me full fucking course meals. <laughs> like she said, "Well, your father didn't know what the hell he was doing." Like whenever I would be off to work, I would leave him home with you. He would like like he would just feed you whatever he he ate. He he wouldn't give you a bottle or anything. He would get like if you if he ate steak and eggs, you ate that shit. Too. <laughs> just, just be like yeah, like my dad knew what he knew what he knew how to do, you know. But that did contribute to something that 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 uh, enabled me for, to be uh, to be as big as I am. Because you know he was a young father, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> But yeah, it's about habits. I don't think it's about oh well, yeah, if you're in poverty, um you might have a, a bigger chance of being fat. But that's only if you already have bad habits and already have like that compulsive eating problem anyway. I mean, and if you are are always eating processed shit. But like healthy shit is actually not and I'm not talking about healthy shit like vegan shit. Or like, like, or oh, the organic. No, I'm just like, like basic, like grains and fruit and shit is like cheaper than all like than getting a nine dollar pizza. It's like it's a lot cheaper to put together a fucking meal than getting a bunch of shit that's already made up. I'm just saying. Take your hand at in Sienna, hand. you definitely glorify it, Sienna, and you guys post videos where you're uh, juggling his fat and you talk about how attractive it is. And for me, when I look for a man... Oh, just Peru, blend a steak and put it in a bottle. <laughs> Yeah, we, all, we all knows what gets I mean, you know, for someone that would make way. me a better version of myself. <laughs> well, yeah, but George, but George, yeah, yeah. the point the point Blair's making is a sound one. You say it's to yeah. I mean, look at his fucking girlfriend. What what point is there self improving? Why self improve when your girlfriend is give, like giving you the illusion of happiness? Why? Why even do that? 
But I'm telling you what, bruh, as soon as you get some kind of obesity related disease, she's gone. This is gonna be a wrap. <laughs> as soon as you're spending all your money on health care for your for your fat problems, that's a wrap. She's gonna be gone. So I mean they got a kid together, but since when does that mean anything to a female influencer? <laughs> Get views, we know that, yeah, and you're making money from it. Of course. But the question is, there's no incentive for you to actually lose any weight because at that stage, well, actually, your TikTok persona well, no, George, I could dive. Is book, actually, yeah. George is um, actually on a weight loss journey, and I fully support oh, is he? that. I think it's more like having a laugh at yourself, making. Okay, why not just start with that? Okay, I am on a weight loss journey. Bullshit. That's bullshit, because why didn't you just start with that? You could have busted him out right there. Oh, we are on a weight loss. No, you want to bring that shit up <laughs> now that you're, your idyllic uh, fucking TikTok bullshit, like people are poking holes in it, now suddenly you're on a fucking weight loss journey. Get the fuck out of here. In the best of You know what made me, you know what could in. pull me around to your side, George? If you now flipped with this big audience you've got, rather yeah. than gorging yourself every day on pizzas and donuts for that's not why I do pizza. But people laughing at you. But that's why don't you do. actually go on a fitness uh -huh. regime and show people Pitch. how to lose weight? If, if people actually knew what I was thinking and what I'm doing, I'm actually going to be doing it as Zemic needles privately as well before you uh -huh. start. So all of these things, we're, we're paying out of our own money. We're not, we're, we don't cost anyone anything. Me, how much are you making out of the TikTok? A lot yeah, of not money. yet, because you're not in the hospital yet. <laughs> a lot of money, over 100 grand. A year. a year. Over 100 grand a year. So there's yeah. no incentive to lose weight, is there? No, but, the, but, but the, it doesn't derive straight from that. That's from my sales. Well. And that's with the collaborations and the deals. You don't even want to it. tell me how much you weigh. I don't need to. Are you, are you ashamed of it? Oh, I'm not I don't ashamed. really understand I mean, you how you can well, join a panel ashamed? about obesity When you put a number and you put a label on it, it's Okay, Blair, final word to you. I just no, don't know why he would come on a panel discussing weight and body positivity, fat positivity, and not okay. actually... And also, why endorse fat positivity when you're losing... Apparently on a weight loss journey. That sounds like bullshit. <laughs> I, I smell the bullshit. Oh, guys, oh, sorry, I've run out of time. Thank you, all of you, very much indeed. Uh, hold on, where the fuck is that video? Of him and his fucking like that that truly video. I want to see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh shit! Ooh, let's see if I can find it. She's not a gold digger. We're getting married. Okay, okay, okay. They think I think they made two videos. This one and this one. We're going to look at both of them right quick. Just right quick. Cuz I know yeah, I'm now remembering that you motherfuckers were on truly. What do you anything other than me through buying food? Oh shit, shit, shit. This is Sienna. She fell in love with George. I've always been attracted to bigger guys and so he was my ideal type. She messaged me first. I've always been attracted to bigger guys. Okay. I don't believe you. <laughs> and look at the restaurant they're at. That is posh as fuck. Look at that. I don't know if like he was making money off TikTok or already had some kind of like, I don't know, maybe some kind of inheritance already or whatever, but he got some money. But you made the first move yes. when we met. Yes, I did make the first move. That's what a player does. <laughs> the kid is trying to traverse his big. <laughs> oh god, I gotta scale these mountains. <laughs> they share their love on TikTok, but many people criticize their relationship. Mm. Oh my god, what the hell what kind of kiss was that? Ew. Oh, baby, you taste like a cheesesteak at Nando's. As their relationship. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Ew. They say, oh, this guy's fat. That's not right. That's not healthy. He shouldn't be with her because she's too attractive for him. Now that they've started their family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm taking the piss. I'm taking the piss. I'm taking the piss off myself. But, like, you are truly acting like a fucking victim that people are talking shit. I mean, which is it? Usually people who make fun of themselves don't complain that other people are making fun of them. 
will people finally believe their relationship is genuine? Yeah, I'm sure that kid's having fun. <laughs> Dan, why can't we play ball? Why don't you just sit there? <laughs> why do you find the biggest piece of fucking sheet metal to sit on and just <laughs> kind of rock back and forth every time I want to play with a ball or run? <laughs> To be honest, what attracted me to George was his character, Craig. George plays Craig in People Just Do Nothing. Ah, yeah, someone said in chat that he was on some kind of show. So that's where he get, got his money from. Like, yeah, he makes money off TikTok, but he already had a little something, something going on. Okay, okay. That explains it. <laughs> I've always been attracted to big all guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, their uh, bank accounts are bigger. <laughs> and uh, I watched it on Netflix. Yeah, she watched him on a fucking TV show and then scouted it and like went sc scouting out after his ass. Yeah. When I saw him in that show, I was like, oh my God, man of my dreams. <laughs> Someone I can manipulate into giving me money. Yay! Yeah, she saw a fat rich guy and it was like, Cha -ching! I've just always been attracted to larger guys. The six pack uh -huh. thing has never done it for me. Sienna slid into George's DM. Look, there's there's being attracted to bigger guys, which I am. I'm attracted to like the largeness of a guy, but like that motherfucker. No, no, that's just a, a health hazard waiting to happen. That that's something else. There's a fucking limit to the shit. <laughs> I can't look at my husband and be like. Oh, you know, baby, you got that fat bastard swag. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, that's just, no. No. Baby, I'm going to make you have a turtle head poking out. <laughs> like, no. No. At that point, it's just a fucking fetish. And things developed quickly. All right. Oh. oh. Being very nice. Oh, thank you, baby. She messaged me first. Yeah, sort of went from there. Also, it looks like he is bigger now than he than what he was on the show. He looks a lot bigger. He didn't look that big on the show. He made the first move, yes. you know, when we met. Yes, yeah. I didn't make the first. I made the first move. Of course you did. Of course you did. Like, who's surprised by that? Ain't nobody surprised. Like, oh shit, she made the first move. All of the, I never thought, th I did never think a girl such as yourself with two foot long fingernails wearing a cocktail dress in the middle of the goddamn afternoon <laughs> would, would message a male celebrity in his DMs first. <laughs> never would, like, never in a million years. I mean, it's what a player does, you know? What can I say? When I first realized that it was actually potentially a thing, was when she sort of said, oh, I'm coming over to the UK. I was like, oh, right. I was like, so she's coming all the way from Australia. I was sort of thinking at the time, should I do it, Jules? Should I do it? Is this a little stitch up and she wants to like rinse me for my money or whatever? <laughs> should have went with that first instinct, bro. <laughs> let's rewind that. Let's rewind that a little bit. This Peru, I love his body because the shape reminds me of the O's in his account. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Bust nut J, you gotta go full Scottish. <laughs> Disparu, she moved a country. <laughs> she moves a country every night, apparently. <laughs> a little stitch up, and she wants to like rinse me for my money or whatever. But D Bruh, you should went. That was a f your first instinct. That should have been your first instinct. Don't you hit, you tell me you hit the fucking lottery? You found a hot chubby chasing bitch. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You didn't. She, I bet. Uh, mm. Just because they have a kid. I'm sure there are some people who will say, well, they have a kid together. That don't mean shit. That brings in more money. That means that's child support, bitch. <laughs> that's child support. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Luke's television review, $5 super chat. It's, it looks like IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes are screwing with non-critic reviews again. Oh, yeah, that's no surprise. I'm not surprised by that shit at all. But yeah. A kid brings in more money. She's playing the long game very well. Like in every fucking shot, she either looks un really unenthused or like, oh, money, money. Like she has a devious look on her face. 
Uh, Joel Carver, five dollars super chat. You thought this was a rabbit? Nah, it's Winnie the effing poo. So she seemed genuine. We instantly had that sort of chemistry where, like, you know, you talk to someone and you instantly feel reassured and comfortable <laughs> around them. I was surprised because, you know, like, I am a big guy. The couple went on to get engaged, and soon after, their son Oliver was born. We actually got engaged in Venice. George took me on a I actually uh, proposed to her on a gondola. I would say the only weird thing is that when I was sitting on the gondola, I didn't realise how, like, you know, <laughs> I was going like that. I ended up... <laughs> the sound effects. Damn, truly. On my own. Had to and he sat out. on the other chair, and then he, like, stood behind me just to keep the weight ratio. Oh, he stood... No, he stood behind you, didn't he? Yeah it balance out the weight a bit. It wasn't actually a surprise at all getting pregnant because on our third date, George said that he wanted me to- Don't kill the baby. <laughs> Don't suffocate that baby. <laughs> Watch them titties, bruh. <laughs> You're gonna end up killing that kid. That's what worries me too. Because there's been cases of parents accidentally, accidentally rolling over on their kid. And I'm hoping to, to fucking God that baby never, like, until he loses some weight. I hope that kid never sleeps in the same bed as him. Because, like, if he rolls over, un, like, absentmindedly, like, it's over. That kid is dead. <laughs> Master Chuddy, $5 Super Chat, they have a kid together. Man, if this mother loves her son, she better have him eating a balanced diet for real. Yep. Said that he wanted me to have his children. With George, I just knew that. I suppose you've got to know that you like the person you're with yeah. before you want to have a kid with them. We've been a couple for like almost three years now, mm. hasn't it? Yes. What attracted you to me? Well, baby was everything. The belly mainly, though, wasn't it? <laughs> it was everything. It was everything. Nigga, please. <laughs> when, when, oh, when someone asked you, like if you ask your significant other or whatever, that who are you are not sure loves you or not? Like, how do you like, what do you, what do you, what's, what's it about me attracted to you? And they say, oh, everything. They're lying. <laughs> they lying. They pull the shit. There's always like one specific thing that, that, that attracts you to, to a person. Like a few things. Like a few big things. Ain't, no, you ain't attracted to every goddamn thing about this person. Get the fuck out of here. That's a damn lie. <laughs> Uh, Jim UK, $5 Super Chat, is this about collecting life insurance earlier when they die? <laughs> uh, the, shit, the Deezer, the Deezer Dur, I think this is, she looks so uncomfortable. Yeah, the, there's some times where it's just like, he's not even there, like in this picture right here. The way she's posing with the kid in him, it's like, she might as well just be there by herself. Yes. What attracted you to me? Well, baby was everything. The belly mainly, though, wasn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> Wait, she <laughs> It was mainly the belly, wasn't it? She was just like, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I don't want to touch it for too long. Oh, um, it's so warm. Why is it so warm? <laughs> just so unenthused. <laughs> oh, boy. Like, if I'm, um, and I'm just using his him as an example. Like, like current current news about Jonathan Majors aside, like put, set that drama aside for a minute. But if I was married to Jonathan Majors, <laughs> and like, oh, he asked me, oh, what was, what was it about me that that attracted you? Like, yeah, I would definitely give a straight fucking answer, <laughs> and I wouldn't be like so. I would be shy to like rub his belly, <laughs> like. <laughs> I would, I would be like, no, I'd be all up on this shit. And not on camera, mind you, because I wouldn't be on fucking truly. But it's like, she was like, if you're attracted to somebody, you're not going to be like. <laughs> like, if you were comfortable enough to grab your wife's tits on camera, it's like, yeah, I really wanted them tits, baby. <laughs> You'd be like. <laughs> like squeezing this. You wouldn't be like. <laughs> tapping it. What attracted you to me? Well, baby was everything. The better. Can't get over this shit. That, because she doesn't want to fuck up her nails, even though, like, that, that's another thing. Prioritizing your nails for showing affection to your husband. Come on now. Really mainly though, wasn't it? That's just. <laughs> yeah. And your gorgeous face. Yeah, you yeah, like the belly, don't you? Face. 
I love it. Like, it's, yeah. just, it's very attractive to mm. me. And we both love each other and find each other attractive. And we have a good life and we have a lovely little child. Yes. Oh my God. Look at that big, sexy man. The pair sh showcased their relationship. Stop making fetish content on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> but this resulted in people commenting on George's weight and Sienna's true intentions in the relationship. If someone says something mean to George, it will hurt me because <laughs> I love George. But I mean, let's let's be honest. I'm fat, like I expect to. People will always judge you for being different. What the world? You're not different. You live in the Western world. You're very common. <laughs> you motherfucker! Like mother these motherfuckers in the fat acceptance community think, oh, people will judge you for being, being different. I'm different. I'm built different. No, you built Ford tough, <laughs> and Ford is the most. Well-known car retailer in the fucking world. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! You are very com- You have no idea how common you are. You're very, very common. First comments we've had then. Their relationship is fake. There's no way she could be attracted to that. No, you're not. I don't buy it, bitch! Which I find very offensive. Yeah, they say, oh, this guy's fat. That's not- Oh, lovely. Thank you for the, like, truly is definitely- not on his side. Let's just say that. Right, that's not healthy. He shouldn't be with her because she's too attractive for him. I feel like most of it's jealousy, you know. For me, I see them as a jealousy. Okay. We're yeah, we're all jealous that we <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so jealous. This guy can't run <laughs> can't run two feet without dry heaving one of his fucking lungs. But I, I I'm so jealous. Like, if they think you're being taken advantage of by this woman. And they see how fucking huge you are and how that how that's a detriment to your life. They're not jealous of you. Because you have two things in your life that they that people would not envy in life. You got a fucking allegedly a gold digger whore of a wife. <laughs> and then you and then you weighed nearly 500 pounds. No one no one's jealous of you. I'm just saying. Shady do rags. I don't know if she's genuinely attracted to the guy, but her acting in this video doesn't help her case. It really doesn't. Pro, okay, that's it, end of. Like, it doesn't matter what they say to me. I don't know them, I don't care. The only thing- I don't care, that's why I'm talking about it in this video. What does do my head in is when they go, oh, this guy must cost the NHS loads of money. <laughs> yeah, I, remember, I remember when, um, yeah, Pierce Morgan brought that shit up and he was like, oh, I don't know. he was like, I don't know. But now it really does him in. It really does him in. Like, just in, totally, you know, he's an addict, naturally, you know? So he's, he's going he's gonna to have, incon like, inconsistent views <clears throat> on his own weight. The size I am does not cost anybody anything other than me through buying food. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. No. They're saying you're costing the NHS, H, uh, NHS money because they assume... <clears throat> that you're always in the hospital for fat related um illnesses which sooner or later you will be if you're not now that's the only thing what's costing money and that's my money so i'll buy as much food as i like i want people to understand that you can be attracted to a big man just because you love him and you like his body it doesn't have to be money it doesn't have to be any ulterior motive yeah because ask her if she ever dated a fat poor guy you ever dated a fat dude who had no job <laughs> or who worked at McDonald's and raided their fucking supply every now and then? <laughs> you, ever, you ever date a fat? No, the fat guy that you were attracted to just so happens to be fucking rich. I'm just saying. Seems a little suspicious. I want to see your dating roster. Let me, let me, show it to me. Let me, show me how many fat poor niggas you have dated. So I just deal with the negativity by focusing on all the positive things, all the support that we get, all the lovely comments, and obviously focusing on this little guy. Um, that's the most important thing. The couple now regularly make TikTok videos addressing the hate and setting the record straight about their love. Is he holding you hostage? If so, I can fly you home where you should be. Come on, mate. Does it look like I'm holding that hostage, mate? Uh, is that a trick question? <laughs> Is that a trick question? Uh, I mean, usually in these cases, 
<laughs> You're usually the one holding her, uh, holding the girl hostage. Yes. Obviously, she likes me, guys, or else she wouldn't even be here. Lies. She, but you also have to consider the fact that you have money. And that's also could be a reason why she's there. You guys are crazy. I love George. Yeah, exactly. Everything Just get over it, guys. We know that you're desperate for attention. And that you'd love to have... Uh, the, the, the professional TikToker and the guy who used to be on a TV show is criticizing others for wanting attention. <laughs> have your own very attractive woman. God. People are so extreme, aren't they? I might just make all of us something to Also, eat. don't put your kid in your TikToks, especially if you're basically making fetish content any goddamn way. Don't do that. Does the kid need to be there? I don't think he does. I don't like the lady uh, cedar because I feel like it's- See, look at her. She's making fruit and shit. That means it's not, his obesity isn't that bad. Degrading to George. Very nice, baby. Like Thank baby? you, yes. I made that for you. God. Get the fuck out. Yeah, just ignore all the videos that he's made where he's downing, like, fucking boxes of pizza and shit. And he's doing product placement for donut makers and chocolate fountains and shit. Just disregard, disregard that. He's, he's got a char charcuterie board. A charcuterie board. How the fuck do you say that shit? Charcuterie board. Whatever the fuck. The grape and cheese board. <laughs> he Look, it's a grape and cheese board. But if he's eating all of that shit... Especially all that cheese. Like, come on. It's still not going to be that good for him. And isn't, is that chips? Oh, I'm sorry. Like, that, what British people would actually call crisps. The dude's got a bowl of crisps. <laughs> Label cedar because I feel like it's... Is that... Those are chips, aren't they? George. Hang on. Let's, we got to frame by frame it. See, this video is in fucking 720p. Ew. This is such a trash resolution. I can't see it that well, but those are chips. I'm sorry, crisps. They're crisps. So you got them eating greasy ass chips <clears throat> with fruit and cheese. And you think. <laughs> That's like eating a bunch of fucking bullshit. Eating a, a, a slice, a big ass slice of cake. A burrito filled with cheese, and, and then saying, "Well, well, it's fine because I had a diet coke afterwards." <laughs> it's like, no. This Peru, yeah, those look like Walker's crisps. Yeah, those are fucking. You know that, like that, that, that ruins everything. I barely, I barely even eat chips anymore. They're greasy as shit. <laughs> and have the like the only kind of chips I actually eat are like sweet chili Doritos. And that's when I actually feel like eating them, which is like rarely nowadays. But it's like, you got chips and these things, I think that's like, I forgot what they call it, but it's like dried out bread, nuts, cheese, grapes, more cheese, some strawberries, <clears throat> and two big ass croissants, <laughs> croissants. And whatever the fuck that is. I don't know what that is. But the chips ruin everything. Why the fuck did you put chips on this charcuterie board? Very nice, baby. You like that, Thank baby? You. Yes. I made that for you. God, I made that, that for you. I put a bunch of shit on a board. I made it for you. <laughs> That's not making shit. John Doe reminds me of Tess Holiday eating an entire cake. Well, mm, I wouldn't go that far. Like, this is still bad because of the chips. But, like, she was eating a whole ass cake. I mean, ugh. And it was like one of those cheap cakes with the cheap frosting and shit. I mean, this is slightly, this is a step up. But the chips ruin everything. At the end of the day, if she wants to feed me, who cares? I'd be lying if I said that, you know, I'm not slightly concerned about the future and, and being my size. I've been big for so long. You didn't seem concerned on the Piers Morgan show. Long now, I am surprised that I haven't got any health condition. I'm lucky, happy, and I don't care. He's I'm surprised I don't have any health condition. I bet you he has a couple that he does not know about. <laughs> or that he hasn't disclosed because he won't tell people what his weight is. So I'm thinking he's hiding some other shit too. Got a beautiful woman, beautiful son. Yeah. Do you think I should wear this one or this one? I don't know. What are you feeling? This one? You like this one? I don't know. You're holding me funny. So Am I? I? I it's gay. If you're big and you're not happy, change it. If you're big and you're happy, don't worry about it. 
Wait, do we have the key? It's just that easy. Hey. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, I forgot the keys. They're like, yeah, he he totally uh, disregards people's capacity for enduring and making excuses and self delusion. He totally disregards that. But if you're happy, it's fine. But you have you underestimate people's capacity for self delusion. You can't just say that shit. <laughs> Well, if you're happy, it's okay. There are a lot of people happy molesting children. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. I'm happy, like, looking in alleyways and wait waiting for women to rape. It makes me feel great and powerful. <laughs> so it's fine, because I'm happy. <laughs> Unless it actually physically or mentally affects your life. Oh, Disparu, we only see him walking for two seconds at a time and they cut it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bet you they like they have to stop every like minute or every couple minutes. And be like, oh, because there's no way your knees and shins aren't screaming. <laughs> like I, there was a point where I weighed a lot less than he did and my shins were still like, yeah. <laughs> we're still like, hey, could you fucking eat a salad? <laughs> we're not supposed to have this much weight on us then you don't need to do anything but try and enjoy it. And it's not actually, it was, I wasn't, it wasn't merely walking. I was like, there was times where I was like running in high school. I wasn't not professionally or anything, but I, they would make us run track uh, around a, tr like, you know, a lot, around a track. And my shins would just be like, hey, whoa. <laughs> hey, nigga. <laughs> and that's when I weighed a lot less than, the, I always wait a lot less than this dude. This dude is fucking huge. Yeah, let me have a go. Yeah, there's no balance to it. I just love that we do everything together. Nigga, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Yeah, let me have a go. Yeah, there's no balance to it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. I just love that we- Like, truly. Why did you put that there? That was not necessary. Yeah, truly is not on his side. They're not on his side at all. I just love that we do everything wow. together. We're even working together now. <laughs> yeah, TikTok and everything, so, yeah. so it's just perfect. We're just trying. We're working together now. So, so you weren't always doing this TikTok shit with him. You were doing TikTok, possibly, and brought him into it. Huh. Huh. Trying to achieve as much as we can and give our son the best life possible. Obviously, we need to get married as well. We need to get married. Yeah, that's 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 the missing puzzle piece in this in this sideshow. That, oh, that's how you that's how we get our lives together so we can have a happy life. We need to get married. No, you need to lose a couple hundred pounds so you're not dead by the time your kid is in middle school. Dumb Cumster, 499 Super Chat. Yeah, I used to be like 440, now I weigh 240. Congratulations. I was that big for almost five years, and both my knees were, are completely shot. Yeah, that's just no joke. Anyway, um, congratulations, Dumb Cumster, because that shit cannot be a small feat. When Sienna's parents uh, That's fly definitely over. in our future. Yeah. Marriage, holiday to Australia. Yeah. Holiday to Australia, um, casket second, that casket second fit, 500 pound humans in it. We're trying to really perfect that technology. Yeah. You meet my family. Yeah. Us meeting each other has changed our perspective on life in that you can get whatever you want. Nothing's out of your reach. Life is a funny one, you know? It's, you never know what's gonna happen sometimes. Keep spreading love. Yeah. Love. You don't know what's gonna happen. A sudden heart attack, <laughs> diabetes. You don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, there's a video of them getting married. I wanna just like hurry up and look at that. Cause we got, we got other long ass videos to get to and I only get like two more hours <laughs> left to go. Damn, yeah, yeah. On the dot, like two hours. Damn. I've wasted so much time with these motherfuckers. And shit, shit, shit. This is Sienna. She fell in love with George. Nearly four years we've been together now. And we have a little two and a half year old as well, a little boy, Oliver. Since opening up about their relationship online, the trolls have been out in force criticizing George's size. Every time she feeds him in these videos, it's always some fruit shit. Look at that. 
Look at that. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Just feed him what you were really going to feed him. Stop fucking bullshitting. Stop playing. You're not feeding him just a bit, little bit of fruit. Fuck off. Stop lying. Criticizing George's size. Heart attack. Now, I take the piss. I don't care about me weight. But every time I'm on camera, on Truly, I always have my wife feeding me <clears throat> apples and oranges and shit and charcuterie boards. Get the fuck out of here. Waiting to happen, you're gonna be dead in two years, you're gonna be dead in six months, you're gonna be dead in one month. When people say waiting for the life insurance to pay out, yeah. can't, she can't wait until he drops dead. But today, they put the negative backlash to one side. Oh, really? You gonna put him on camera with those fucking crumbs shoving shit in his mouth? Come on, truly, you're making it too easy. And finally, they show him with something with a car, with like a bread related carb. Uh, finally. <laughs> finally. Oh boy. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> oh, that's a cap. Hang on. Oh no. This fucking screen cap shit ain't working. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Never mind. <laughs> one side. As they finally become one family unit. We're getting married. So my Yeah, let's see your suit, bruh. Let's see your let's see your wedding. Parents tux. from Australia will be attending the wedding. Which I'm really excited to have them here. When we first heard about George, we weren't too sure. Uh, when we heard about George, we should we didn't know how sure uh, we were about uh, uh, the strength of our furniture. <laughs> we weren't we weren't too sure about how he would fit through the door. And we we're not we don't live in fucking Windsor for Christ's sake. We don't live in a castle. We live in a in a modest two bedroom. Like the, you, if you've seen these fucking houses in the UK, they're not that big. <laughs> how all that was going to work work out. It's quite surreal to think that at the end of the day, I'll be a married woman. I'm excited to be a proper family now. I'm not very... Benic like, uh, that sounds like a fucking anti-psychotic binnacle. <laughs> so proven to lower cholesterol. So yeah, I love how this, this is what counts as them ha him having a weight loss journey. He eats fruit sometimes and he'll have like a heap of butter and, uh, and shit, but it's, it's Benicol. <laughs> this brew. Oh, uh, he makes 10 K a month. According to his press interviews. <sighs> Not very nervous because I know it's only going to be a small ceremony with our close family. It all started four years ago when Sienna made the first move and slid into George's DMs. I saw Craig on people just. Oh, at least brush off the fucking chrome. Do nothing. <laughs> and I fell in love with him. Yeah, he was much smaller back then. Look at him. Look at his neck. Look at look at what, he was reasonable here. Well, not too reasonable, but like. He was not that big here. He was big-ish. And now you look at it, hold on shit. Damn it. And now you look at him here and look at his fucking neck. See, I would be fine. Like if, if he, I'd be fine with him talking that shit if he didn't, wasn't getting bigger. He's getting bigger like every day, it seems like. And back, like back then, he was he wasn't that big. If he he was just maintaining the same weight, I'd be like, eh, like yeah, like, okay, whatever. But like, mm -hmm. but he's he's still getting bigger. Craig on people just do nothing. This Peru fed him up so he can't escape. Craig, not me. She fell in love with. <laughs> What really connected us was we were just so alike. We were both creative. We kind of clicked straight away and we got on. We were both creative, so creative we make videos on TikTok. It's not that creative. On and that chemistry was already there before we had even met in real life, you know? The feels got even stronger. 
And after a year and a half of being together. Because either way, if she's like feeding him to the point where like she's more attracted to him, that's still fucked up. And if she's feeding him to the point where if she's just like enabling him so she can manipulate him into getting his money, still fucked up. Like I, she, she does not come out looking good either way. I think it's the gold digging thing because she has, she is so devoid of a fucking personality. It seems like she had to like wipe her real personality clean, but she's so fucking devoid of a soul. She can't make a new one. So she has to like, just, that's why she comes off like robotic a lot of the time. Cause yeah, her real personality is like gold digging whore, <laughs> but she's so evil. She can't come up with a new personality. So she just, you know, she just comes off cold a lot of the time. Get that? George planned the perfect proposal. We went to Venice. And I thought, this is the moment. Wait a minute. <laughs> Please tell me that boat is supposed to be up that high. <laughs> Look how high it is up front. Please tell me that's how it's supposed to be. And he's not on the other end sitting down and like lifting the Please tell me his weight isn't making it that happen. And I thought, this is the moment. It was kind of perfect because she was in front of me and I could try and, I couldn't get down on one knee, I'm too fat, but I could still propose. Yeah, so, oh, so funny that you can properly propose to your fucking girlfriend in one of the most romantic moments of your fucking life in one of the most picturesque, beautiful, cultural places in Europe. Like... It's so funny! It's so funny that I can't do things normal people can. It's so funny! It was, you know, it to her face. Honestly, the best proposal yeah. I could have imagined. The newly engaged couple started sharing their... Like, she's purposely look, trying to look sexy in this TikTok about him proposing to her. Why are you biting your fucking finger? I mean... <laughs> This is what makes people think that you're probably a gold digger, bitch. Like, I'm just saying. It's just shit like that. That looks so inauthentic. That Why are you doing that? ...to sharing their relationship online. However, this invited some unwanted attention. So at the start of the lockdown, we downloaded TikTok. And there were so many hate comments about how George is a bigger guy. And there were so many, like... Uh, gold digger, you know, money, all of that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, to be honest, like it, it did make me feel quite hurt. I think probably when- uh, Like that's um, an emotion people feel, right? Hurt? Uh, this brew, I need to see her try to carry him over the threshold. <laughs> True. People say, waiting for the life insurance to pay out. Yeah. Can't, she can't wait until he drops dead. Like, I'll get that. Yeah. I just won't get life that insurance. That write that. And there was enough one as yeah, well. Yeah, like, oh, honestly. Can't wait to happen. Don't get, don't get a twist. You know, damn well, fat guy, that big with life insurance, he ain't got no life insurance. <laughs> You're going to be dead. Because that's the admi basically the admission that he will die one day. He doesn't want to acknowledge that. Come on. Look at the way he was acting on Piers Morgan. Like... <laughs> He's not, he does not want to acknowledge that. He has no life insurance. In two years, you're going to be dead in six months. You're going to be dead in one month. All the time, people are idiots. They don't say it to skinny people who could yeah. be alcoholics or smoke. I'm like, what's well, the same goddamn rationale? They don't say people to be alcoholics and they're going to die. Are you fucking retarded, bitch? <laughs> no, because it's not like we have, um like AA programs that get people f from being alcoholics. No, no, well, no one lectures you if you're skinny and alcoholic. You are retarded. <laughs> also, this is a great cap, but I can't cap it because my shit's not working. Damn it. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting I got this app. Hang on. Never mind. I got a cap. I totally forgot I had this YouTube uh, app installed, but whatever. I got it. Like a pack a day. I've dealt with it for years, you know. Hang on, I want to fast forward to the wedding because this is wasted. This is shit that we already know. Because I want to get to one of these other videos. Six months ago when we when we showed up, and I, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. And when he turned out to be hilarious and a, a lovely bloke and really smart, that sold us. 
when he paid off uh, this uh, this gremlin we were going to buy, like we, we realized he was he's he's a top bloke. To expect, and when he turned out to be oh wait, they're Australian. Someone reminded me they're Australian, <laughs> but I don't know how to do an Australian. An Australian accent is kind of difficult. I'm gonna stick with British. I'm gonna stick with generic British accent. Hilarious and a, a lovely bloke and really smart. That sold us. Like, what are you doing? Like, tr like I said, truly, there are such assholes. They are truly assholes. It feels so good to finally be getting married because everyone said we wouldn't last. It wasn't going to work out because of our... It's so good to get married because now we get to brag out of spite. <laughs> like, our marriage is out of spite. Yay! <laughs> that's not going to convince people that you're an asshole. I mean, that's, that's not going to convince people that you're not an asshole. Differences. And now look... Got my wedding dress on. Oh, someone said <laughs> Pavlo John. Just, just talk like Fringy. <laughs> and we're ready to go. Of course, we have a few comments like, oh, she's going to take half your money when you guys get divorced. But um, yeah, no, we had a lot of support actually when we announced we we're getting married. I, I think, you know, us being together as a couple, as that neck, like there's just no neck. <sighs> made everything stronger, you know, my career, my life, just us in general has made us a stronger couple together. Let's hope no one falls over. Let's hope we get a few good shots. It doesn't rain. Bam, I can get back to my sisters, take this crap off and eat some cake. We are one step closer. To a heart attack on the toilet. <laughs> wow, because that's how you want to look on your fucking wedding day. Like you might as well just be wearing a, a fucking sheet. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like being so fat that you look like you're walking funny on purpose. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you do this like comedic walk. Oh. This wedding also looks very anemic. Like where where is everybody? All I see is like old people. Like this is this looks like just like a family member's wedding. You'd think it'd be like some not extravagant or anything, but like just a little bit more dense at a church. Or something but no it's a, it, it looks like it's in um the conference room or like no the ballroom of a ramada inn <laughs> it looks like we made it. very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, i love how like some of the family members want their faces blur blown <laughs> blurred out <laughs> i do not want to be associated with this <laughs> Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all here today and a very special welcome to George and Sierra on this, their special day, their wedding day. I never felt like I ever belonged or fitted in, but with you, I feel... Fit in, I fit it in, but I guess fitted... <laughs> I guess it fit, uh, it is fitting to say that because yeah, he really hasn't never really fitted in any, anything. Oh God! Oh Jesus! Luke's television review, five dollars super chat. The title of the video is really reflecting the cope. She's not a gold digger. We're getting married. Wish you, know, you are more than my partner. You're also my best friend. Yeah, I don't like that stance. That's a really loving wedding stance. I don't know. There's something about the way she's standing. This just. <laughs> yeah, so can we hurry up? Please, <laughs> let's just hurry up. My best friend. Yeah, and like she's like, you know, moving her fingers. Like, My I don't know. I'm, I'm weird with um, with body language. <laughs> You're also my best. It's just off. She's just off. Friend. Before you, I never thought love at first. <laughs> Truly, stop it. There's some shit you do not need to show. Showing him wipe off the gallons of sweat on his forehead is one of them. More than my partner, you're also my best friend. Before you, I never... 
I can save a lot of money using me sweaters. <laughs> using me sweat. <laughs> I gotta stop. <laughs> using the sweat to fry the chicken. I never thought love at first sight was real. Yeah. Okay. But when I saw you appear on my TV screen, it was truly love at first sight. Oh, you did not say that. But when I saw you... Hang on, look, what is it? So you are more than my partner. You're also. And how? Why is he mic'd up and she's not? I mean, you can still put a mic on her. It's not gonna fuck with her dress. You can put it on there in a way where it doesn't. It it's not really fucking with anything. Not a applicable. Two dollar super chat. He's a workaholic and she's a three hundred four. No friends for wedding. <laughs> so my best friend. Before you, I never thought love at first sight was real. Yeah. Okay. But when I saw you appear on my TV screen, it was truly love at first sight. Oh, no, you did not say that. <laughs> you didn't say that! No, no, no. When, I, when we first saw each other, not when we first saw each other, not when you, oh, when you looked at me, and when you told me, you no, when I saw you on fucking TV, I knew it was love at first sight. Really, bitch? <laughs> You did not say that! That's what a fangirl says. That's what a deluded fangirl says. Not someone who's getting married. Oh, uh, Jake Bobbin writes, for some reason I can't hear Burst voice. I can hear Burst voice in my head saying, please don't eat the baby. <laughs> Uh, bus nut, she is so full of shit. She is. Jesus Christ. But that's just, that rubbed me the wrong fucking way. When I saw you on TV, I knew it was love at first sight. Ooh. <laughs> when, I, when I couldn't be close to you personally, I knew it was love at first sight. When I saw you on a television show that I was familiar with, when I saw you be a fictional person, it was love at first sight. You gotta read between the lines with with some some people because some people will look at it like, okay, what you said was bad. What, what you said was bad, what, but it wasn't that bad. No, it was bad. It was really bad. Because <laughs> you like I said, you gotta take what people say and really, really look at it, <laughs> really listen. How many people can say they've moved to the other side of the world to be with their true love, but moving to be with you was an easy decision? You are now husband and wife together. <laughs> Plus, she said it real robotic, like the whole, her vows, really robotic, not really much feeling behind it. She kind of like she's almost gonna burst out laughing half the time. <laughs> like, yeah. Just cementing it, completing that final step in the story. Oh, the same guys, <laughs> the same two people. Like, no, I will not be filmed. <laughs> Yeah, so that was whack. Okay, let's get let's get to one of these other videos. <laughs> I, I'm off I'm off these two. Not app, not applicable two dollars super chat. She immediately said, "I can land this albatross." <laughs> oh boy. Okay, next we're gonna look at a Little Mermaid video because it's very fitting because tomorrow marks the release of the Little Mermaid live action remake, and you know this is good. Um, this is good lube for that. <laughs> this is good prep for that bullshit. But basically, this is a video by a fucking channel. I don't know what this is. Modern Girls with a Z. Girls. And um, basically, they made a video. Uh, oh, you should just get over your Little Mermaid being black. Shut up, crybaby bigots. <laughs> and so we're going to take a little look at that shit. But I think this is one of those channels that's just, it's like um, the take where it's just like, it's just like processed content. It's like they just, <clears throat> they ha half-assedly <laughs> record shit and just like put it on a conveyor belt on their channel. Like it's, it's conveyor belt content, basically. Ariel is black. Get over it. Disney's 1989 film, The Little... <laughs> uh, 1990 BJK, 799 Super Chat. She needs to read her lines. It's not like she was saying some sophisticated shit. Little Mermaid is one of the company's most well-known projects and is often credited for getting them out of a decades-long slump that effectively reinvigorated public interest in the brand, making the movie one of the reasons why... Di I don't think this is 
um, Disney's most well-known property. It's got to be the Lion King's got to be their their most well-known property. And I think we're really going to see that come to uh, Friday, because <laughs> you know, like when the the Lion King made a billion dollars, it's because it, it was just off brand recognition. Because yeah, because people already knew about it, but the Little Mermaid. I don't think it's gonna like make money like that, especially considering that it doesn't just doesn't look good. But um, I don't think it's more well known than The Lion King. I'm just saying, there's something I want to point out. Disney is as big as it is today. Loosely inspired by the 1837 Danish fairy tale of the same name by Hans Christian Andersen, the film follows a redheaded teenage mermaid, Ariel, after she falls in love with a human and decides to trade her voice for a pair of legs. With Disney releasing several live-action adaptations of their most popular films in the past decade and announcing new ones all the time, it was inevitable that they'd eventually turn their attention to The Little Mermaid, with the company first confirming that the live-action remake was in early development in 2016. It's become a bit of a running joke that Disney's live-action remakes are poorly received. It was in development in 2016, huh? Hmm. I wonder if a certain presidential candidate <laughs> had anything to do with switching the races. Thieved, but the vitriol directed towards The Little Mermaid is at a whole other level, and the catalyst for this absolutely absurd amount- The vitriol's at a whole nother level. Is it though? Mermaid is at a whole other level. And, and plus you kind of- plus you kind of fuck yourself, because this is apparently Disney's most popular product. And the vitriol at them changing the fucking character is, oh, just, it's at a whole nother level. Of, of course, because it's the most popular, according to you, the most popular of Disney's products. So, yeah, the vitriol is going to be a little stronger <laughs> because there's just more people who know what, it, what this is. And because um, the original Ariel was just so distinctive. Her look was so distinctive. When you change her to something a little more distinctive, people are going to be fucking pissed about it. Yeah, so, you know. And the catalyst for this absolutely absurd amount of outrage isn't difficult to determine. While the public was initially wary of this project, this skepticism turned to outright hostility in July 2019 following the casting announcement of singer-slash-actress- 2019? I don't remember she'd be in hostile in whatever. Uh, Mr. Sellamore, uh, seven ninety nine super chat. Look, Disney gave a black lead actor a worse version of a good movie. Get over it, <laughs> right? Shit. Oh, snakes! Jay Long will play, play the Aquafina rap for Little Mer uh, Little Mermaid. Jay, man, I'm not trying to kill y'all. <laughs> Halle Bailey as Ariel. Because the internet has a notoriously short attention span, the hubbub eventually died down except amongst those who made it their entire personality. But in 2020, you make complaining about this your entire, like, no, it's not how that works. No one made it complaining about this, their whole personality. Like, no. And plus, so that's like a tiny percentage of people then. Cause you said, oh, the internet has a, has a really short attention space. So I got, kind of got over it, except for this like very small subset of the internet, like a very tiny, tiny, tiny subset of the internet who may, who, made this their whole personality. So why the fuck does this video even exist? 22, the discourse was reignited following the release of the film's teaser trailer, which was the first official look at our new Little Mermaid. As of the publication of this video, the teaser trailer has over three and a half million dislikes on YouTube, which is yep. quite- Oh wait, we finally got footage of the sisters under wa uh, in water in some way. Hang on, why not? Trailer has over three and a half million dislikes I'm wondering, I want to know, I'm real curious about how Afro chick's hair is going to look underwater. Because I, I bet you it's going to look so fucking dumb. Because, like, this matters. It meant, like, if it didn't matter, you wouldn't have changed the fucking, like, Disney wouldn't have changed the fucking race in the first place. But, like, if you're going to have black people in your films and you're going to draw attention to, like, hair texture and shit, you better know what the fuck you're doing. Otherwise, you're just going to look stupid. That's why I just can't wait for this movie, because I can't wait to see how much they're going to fuck this up. Joey Joster, $2 Super Chat. Remember the swamp. Uh, Lutu Thunderhammer, $20 Super Chat. God damn it. $20 Super Chat. I'm still so pissed that people get excited over whitewashing characters instead of taking advantage of lesser known folklore. 
from actual African and black sources. <coughs> Shit. Sorry, guys, my chat's acting up. Um, there's uh, Mommy Watsa, but I'm supposed to drool over Halle Berry. <laughs> Haley Bailey. I mean, no, Halle Bailey. I hate her fucking name. You know, damn well her parents called her that because they like Halle Berry. <laughs> Not applicable two dollars super chat. Uh, where the brood? Where the brood? Where the brood? Where the brood at? <laughs> Luke's television review five dollars super chat. This video. See Disney. See Disney gave black people extremely sloppy seconds. Get over it. Yeah. Like trying to gaslight uh, minorities into thinking this is okay. Like that in itself is just anger inducing. On YouTube, which is quite. Hey, hang on. What the fuck? YouTube. The fuck is it? What is it? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be bad. Okay, we got Dreadlock Mermaid, another Black Mermaid, which is fine. But I don't, like this looks ridiculous somehow because like the makeup doesn't look that good. Look like they're wearing like it looks like they're wearing like one Zubass pant. <laughs> I just don't like these designs. That's, that's that's what it is. The designs don't look good. And they just randomly, oh, we put like a little spray paint on them. We put a little a Fenty Beauty. <laughs> we put a little Fenty Beauty like shimmer lotion on these fucking kids. I don't know. This don't look good. Which is quite the response to a video that's a mere minute and 23 seconds in length. Oh, yeah, but have, but yeah, overwhelming positivity about the same video that's only a minute and 23 seconds in length. That's fine. But the, oh, but you're negative about a fucking about a, a bad advertisement for a movie that, you know, will be bad. Like, oh, you're such a loser. <laughs> but anyone mindlessly loving something that's only like a like 100, like one minute and 23 second video. That's perfectly fine. And you can't make fun of those people when they make cringy videos crying over it. <coughs> oh my spit went down the wrong pipe speaking of which I wonder what that Eric Butts guy is doing right now you think he cried over the Little Mermaid trailer I kind of want to look it up now I'm tempted not applicable two dollar sorry five dollars super chat I'm the only pure fi puffer fish that can go to the hood by myself and be good <laughs> near God Atomic Boy, two dollars super chat. Sebastian sounds like uh, La, um, Labarera, Labarera. Oh my god, I'm so sorry about this. From Futurama. Uh, Red Rose Spark. I do admit that the fish cape on uh, the fish cape looks good on Triton. I don't know. I gotta see it again. <laughs> Unfortunately. This backlash has only gotten more intense as the film's release date. More intense, which means more memes. That's basically what that means. Because more intense, how? Is anyone sending her death threats? Because I bet you they're not. It draws closer. People have bent over backwards to come up with reasons as to why Halle Bailey isn't a good choice for the role, sparking the trending hashtag, not my Ariel. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to one thing. She's black. One of the <laughs> it all boils down to one thing. She's black. Um, but also she's like hyped up and we don't, no one knows who the fuck she is. <clears throat> she's overhyped as hell because everyone seems to know her from different shit, but I've never seen this girl before in my life. Western Howler, $5 super chat. Okay. Most, okay. So most of the mermaid look black. Do you think this is going to be like slaves were thrown overboard and became mermaids? Oh yeah, that would be funny. That would actually be funny. Like, oh yeah, during slavery they were throwing Negroes overboard and then they just developed gills and shit <laughs> and became mermaids. One of the We was mermaids and shit. One of the worst parts about all of this backlash is how little Disney has done to stand up for Hallie. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. You think that, that you would take the hint? That Disney does not give a fuck, and they're just using her as a tool. <clears throat> and maybe the criticism being levied at this situation and at Disney. Because really, most of the fucking criticism is at them. Of course, she's going to get in, like, she's going to catch some of the backlash, too. But they're not attacking her as a person. At least not yet. She's got to say the wrong shit first. But uh, they're not really attacking her as a person. 
They're attacking the situation. Um, but yeah, they see her as a prop. They don't give a fuck about her. Duh. If, as if you couldn't tell by her casting. That isn't necessarily off-brand for them, as plenty of people in other Disney-owned properties have been run off of the internet because of their misogynistic and racist fan base. Get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, so when was um, Brie Larson run off the fucking internet? She's got a whole ass YouTube channel. She's still, I think she's still got a Twitter and uh, she's on Instagram. What the fuck are you talking about? And her, like, I, there, was st there was still no proof that she was harassed. Uh, Car uh, Carrie Mar uh, Kelly Marie Tran, I think. There was no proof that she was harassed off the internet. Absolutely none. They just said she was. So I, I don't b really believe that. And as for John Boyega, the motherfucker has balls of steel. He ain't getting run off nothing. He knows how to handle assholes Before. online. But it's a shame that Disney has essentially thrown her to the wolves, leaving Hallie to make comments. He's thrown her to, they've thrown her to the wolves. What do you expect them to do anyway? Like, but realistically, what do you expect Disney to do? <laughs> Have these people arrested for saying shit? <laughs> 1990 BJK, uh, 799, Super Chat. Oh, shit. Se <laughs> shit. 1990 BJK, 799, Super Chat. Hallie Bailey and her sister were signed to Beyonce's management company. I'm sure that had nothing to do with her getting this role, nothing at all. And Beyonce, of course. Ugh. Oh, my God. Excuse me. And Beyonce was in the uh, Lion King remake, so do with that information what you will. <laughs> Miss Midnight, twenty dollars super chat. Hey Jay, are you going to make a reaction to the uh, reaction video to the Little Mermaid? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Eventually, I have to like. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to wait. Until it gets on Disney Plus so I can get a nice, clear, crisp copy. Because that I think that'll only take like a month of waiting, though. Or a couple weeks. It depends on how well the movie does. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do that well, honestly. Um, if it does poorly, then I think I'll be able to do it within a couple weeks of it coming out. But I think I might live stream my reaction to it the way I did with um, um, Artemis Fowl and Antebellum. We'll see what happens. I'm definitely going to have something to say. Let's just say that. Not app uh, not applicable. $2 super chat. We was under the sea and shit. <laughs> Credit to chat. <laughs> and press releases all on her own. So you know what? If they're not she going has to, to... She has to handle the press all her own. She's grown. She's grown. She grown. But since you find this to be a problem, like, yeah, they don't give a fuck about her. What else is it? Like, you see, like, for, just from the casting, they don't give a fuck. They're using her as a tool, as a prop, because they want to just keep releasing the same fucking movies over and over again, and they want an excuse to do it. So they hire a black girl and say, oh, look, it's different. It's so different, right? It's different. And if you say anything about it, you're a racist. <laughs> she's, their, she's their shield. That's all that is. She's, that's, a, that's all she is, basically. And honestly, she's an adult. I don't understand why she can't handle shit by herself. Why she needs help. Like for all, for people who I'm sure are all about the female empowerment. I mean, it says modern girls. I'm pretty sure you endorse female empowerment. Why does she need help from a fucking corporation over mild criticism? Defend her, I will. I've been a staunch supporter. Oh, if they won't defend her, I will. Oh, you white savior bitch. <laughs> You go, girl. So you know what? If they're not going to defend her, I will. <laughs> you go, Caroline. <laughs> no, no, no. You go, Kelly. You defend that chocolate goddess, okay? I've been a staunch supporter of this casting decision since it was first announced back in- Of course you are, you fucking simp. 2019. And in the four years since, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of ridiculous complaints about Disney's choice. In today's mm -hmm. video, I'll be discussing some of the most common criticisms I've oh, seen. Oh, scientifically inaccurate. She goes, she goes there, but like it is scientific, scientifically inaccurate. Casting it is. upcoming Little Mermaid movie. It's not wrong. And explain why they're complete and utter nonsense. Let's get into it. I think it's only fair that we start off this video by talking about the most ridiculous of all of these criticisms, which is that Ariel being black is scientifically inaccurate. Yes, because she has melanin and, and, uh, Melanin needs the sun 
to flourish and you, you, we need sun to be brown. I mean, that's not, is that a fucking, <laughs> is that some big fucking revelation? The fact that you're even denying this makes you an idiot. Um, girl in a coma, 999 super chat. I think the problem is that people are tired of the pandering and race swapping has become one of the uh, ultimate forms of pandering nowadays. Yep. Also, Gina Carano was blacklisted, not these people. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's television review, five dollar super chat. A corporation that is currently being run by a man at that. Also, also true. Uh, nine nineteen ninety BJK two ninety nine super chat. Well, that's it then. Racism is over now. Not applicable. Two dollar super chat. Why? Uh, you think it's uh, Pixar clownfish doing up her braids? <laughs> yeah, like how did you, how did you get him that way? That takes work to do that. How you doing that? And in water at that. In water. <laughs> Underwater. Yes, there are grown adults who are so desperate to justify their racism and bigotry that they've chosen to ignore the fact that mermaids aren't real. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it physically impossible for Ariel to be black? This is a black girl saying this. Did you even look at these fucking avatars before you start talking shit? This is a black woman. That is a black person saying this. She lives underwater. How would the sun get to her for her to produce melanin? Yes. Nobody thought this through. And this is a black person saying this. <laughs> or at the very least, a non-white person saying this. And I think a non-white person would know a little bit more about melanin than fucking you. <laughs> Mermaids live, under, uh, live in the ocean, underwater, equals limited sunlight. Limited sunlight equals less melanin. Yeah, exactly. Less melanin equals lighter skin color because they live underwater, which has no access to light beyond a certain depth. Ariel and other and every other mermaid in existence would be albino. Yeah. And I'm sure she's gonna come back with some bullshit. Okay, well, the animated one wasn't, um, she was still like, um feel <laughs> in an attempt to make a point. Mermaids exist in the same fictional and fantastical realm as centaurs, harpies, and goblins, so there's absolutely no reason for people to be bringing science into the conversation. Um, but I'm sure you're gonna try to- no. If mermaids actually did exist, they would look absolutely terrifying. Okay, so why doesn't she look terrifying then? Like most other sea creatures, they would have- Well, she, you know, she does look a little bit terrifying. <laughs> All right, let me Gills, stop. sharp teeth, and be completely hairless. In fact, historical- Like, why are you bringing in facts when you are criticizing people for also bringing in facts? But if she was a real mermaid, she would look terrifying. Okay, and? <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to discount people bringing in facts, and now you are also bringing in- Well, this is how mermaids really should look like. Aren't we against people talking like that? What are you doing? Accounts of mermaids like those reported by Christopher Columbus, are believed to have been sightings of manatees or seals. Considering that's the same man who thought the Americas were India, that sort of egregious mistake doesn't surprise me. The beautiful humanoid mermaids that are depicted in media aren't rooted in reality, so drawing the line at a mer- Okay, but like, they aren't rooted in, in reality. But so, okay, so, why have a black girl with fucking- <laughs> Why not just make her look like the white one then? Why did you have to switch it? If we're not, well, that's not reality. Okay, but why talk? The diversity isn't a part of re, uh, is a isn't part of like this is not necessary. Reality is, uh, uh, you know, diversity is reality, but it's not required for fantasy. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> like they go back and forth with this shit. Oh, we need diversity. We need diversity. We need the fictional fantasy films to, to reflect reality. But then they complain when you want to bring more reality to these fucking race this race swap bullshit. And then they go, "Well, it's just not, it's not reality though." Okay, but which is it? I do we need representation to ref in movies to reflect to reflect reality, or you need to shut the fuck up every time someone wants to bring a um. A little bit of reality, like question the reality of these fucking movies. We, I mean, make up your fucking mind. They, they always do this shit. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fictional. Why don't you stop talking about fictional stuff? And then they start, oh, well, we need diversity to reflect <laughs> so it can reflect reality. Like, which is it? 
Ghost Dong 499 Super Chat. Wasn't that stupid, not my aerial thing started by bots to spark outrage? Yeah. That's all Disney does. Like, they start this shit on purpose. As if they're not going to fucking... Because they, like I said, I said this before, Hollywood put itself between a rock and a hard place. They hired all these fucking woke assholes. <laughs> they started an agenda <laughs> and they can't weasel their way out of it so they just got to kind of roll with it until it dies out. Because, <laughs> you know, th this movie will lose them money. Like, 100%, 100%. I have no doubt in my mind that they will lose even more money with this film. Mermaid having dark skin isn't just absurd, it's obtuse. Especially when actual scientists have said that mermaids having darker skin wouldn't be completely unfounded. Oh, so now we're bringing scientists into it, even though we weren't, we're not supposed to bring scientists into it because it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mermaid movie for little girls. <laughs> it's a, it's a space wizard movie for little girls and man, like what, make up your mind. Don't, don't, don't like, cause it, <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating. And now my brain's locking up. Make up your mind. Trust the science, unless it's science I don't like. According to marine biologist Karen Osborne, who studies explore how a fish's appearance helps them survive, quote, right at the surface, a lot of things are blue because you blend in with the sky behind you for pre- Uh, yeah, you're talking, they're talking about fish, not humanoids with fish characteristics. We're talking about, because if she is, she looks like a human and she has black skin like a black human so that means she has human melanin in her fucking skin because she's half human you talking about fish bitch we talking about humans like mermaids fictional stuff that's d that don't real why are you bringing your little science and logic into it huh that, uh, science and logic that doesn't make any sense in it, like in context editors that are down below looking up as you get deeper, you see animals that are pigmented or deep red because there's hardly any red light in the deep sea. Yeah, they're red. Yeah, like because a fucking trout or whatever is the same thing as a, as a fictional mermaid who's half fucking human. Being black in the deep sea is a really good camouflage because once you get below there, you know they mean black as in black black, right? As in like black like this. Not, not Yafet Kodo black. <laughs> they mean black like this. <clears throat> oh God. Black Mage 9, $2 super chat. This is a fish movie intended for children. Thank you for clearing that up because I, I was totally, like, I, I totally, I, I tripped right over that shit, right over that quote because I was so fucking pissed off. <laughs> Robert Jackson, I like all your commentary and how you think. Oh, thank you. Tickets, black, not black yet. Yeah, they, they mean, when this, what this person, this scientist is talking about is like black, <laughs> not black. <laughs> oh my God, idiots. So being red is effectively being black. Then this is so, this is completely disingenuous. You out here lying. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, you're, you're scientifically, fuck you. Now, he, watch me try to justify my shit scientifically. Lots of and it doesn't even make sense. Brown fish and lots of black fish and lots of ultra black fish. Being black in the deep sea is a really good camouflage because once you get below 300 meters, it gets really dark. And there are a lot of organisms down there that produce light. About 86. What does this have to do with having the skin color? percent of animals in the deep ocean are bioluminescent and a lot of that is used to look for prey so if you absorb all the light that hits you and the background behind you is black then you blend in really well it's good that ariel's black because she can blend in with that black ass background because having browns a brown skin color is the same as being pitch black and you don't see how fucking racist you come off using this information <laughs> and you don't you don't see the racism in that because this black is the same shit as me. Same shit. Right? It's the same shit. Isn't that the same logic behind blackface? <laughs> Just painting your fucking face with, with shoe polish and dance around like a fucking idiot to represent all black people? 
Isn't that the whole fucking thought, like the racist thought process behind that? That bl- cause bl- black is black is black is black. We don't have different skin tones. We're just like one homogenous fucking dark color. And now you're basically, she's basically saying it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I love it when people are stupid. <laughs> I love it, but I, oh, I also hate it. But if you reflect back some of that light, then whoever is making that light and searching for prey will see you. So think about that the next time some random white guy on a podcast says that mermaids can't be black. They can't. You compared fucking regular fish to someone who is something that is half fish and half human. It's not the same goddamn thing. And you came off more racist than any fucking white guy complaining about this shit. You just came off more racist somehow. (laughs) Many naysayers have claimed Dumb Cumster, 199 Super Chat. The vocal fry is bothering me. Wait, my vocal fry or hers? <laughs> Jay Goodwin, careful, Jay Longbone. The C is always right. Jake Bobbin writes, black, JL, black. Uh, 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 excuse me, semantic dragon, Jay Longbone, officially a white guy. <laughs> Uh, Absalent wokesters always out themselves. Yeah, they they always end up either accidentally sounding racist or just just flat out sign, sounding racist. Claimed that casting a black woman as the lead is too large a deviation from the original tale of the Little Mermaid. With some even going as far as to claim that it's a form of cultural appropriation, which is a classic example of co-opting political rhetoric for your own gain while completely missing the actual point of the movement. Let's. What movement? Don't forget that one of the biggest comebacks a misogynist has when a woman asks to be treated equally is to say, Then can I hit you? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I just wanted to mention that because the women who watch our channel are fucking retards and they'll just clap at anything as long as you say it in a really cunty voice. Not applicable $2 super chat. Mermaids are probably prehistoric evil spirits. Kettle, two dollars super chat. So black and brown is the same color now. Yeah, apparently according to this bitch. Yeah. Burst Angel. Oh, what's up, Burst? Two dollars super chat. The point is that the movie is trash. <laughs> People who say that Disney needs to stick to the source material clearly aren't familiar with the original Danish tale. Wrong. They're saying the source material, like the movie that they're basing this on. The movie that they're that they are they are readapting. Don't try to go all the way back to the Danish shit. We talking about this. We are talking about this movie right here. <laughs> because if they were, they'd know that the animated film is already drastically different. No shit. No fucking shit. We're talking about the remake, like the, the original film that this is remaking. Ain't nobody talking about no Danish shit. <laughs> Now you could now, like it's I think it's more than justified to say like yeah that Ariel and this whole thing has been like very white for the longest fucking time but we are talking about adapting the original Disney film that's what we're talking about stay on point stay on point <laughs> that's what we're talking about right now while Ariel's main motivations for transforming into a human in the film are because of her love for Eric and Land, in the fairy tale, her longing for the prince is only part of the equation. Her other motivation is to gain a human soul, which will allow her to go to heaven when she dies. Although both mermaids trade their voice for legs and are told that they have a finite amount of time to make the prince fall in love with them, the novel's mermaid is the only one who fails at her task. Although, Yeah, it's almost like they wanted to make it more kid-friendly and they made it uh, more fitting in with Disney's brand. So why the fuck are you going all the way back to the Danish shit? Oh, they made it less dark. So when they ma- brought in Halle Bailey, they made they brought the darkness back. <laughs> Luke's television review, uh, five dollars super chat. So cultural, pro- pro- yeah. So cultural appropriation, racism, and sexism only go the direction that she agrees with. Yes. 100%. Not a- not applicable to dollar super chat. The Babylonian mermaids uh the B- the Babylonian mermaid um at a ga- at a ga- at- oh my god. At her at her I think. Human face only. But they spend time together. The prince doesn't fall in love with her at all. Instead choosing to marry a princess from a neighboring kingdom. 
Before the mermaid's time runs out, her sisters bring her a dagger from the sea witch, telling her that if she kills the prince, she'll be able to become a mermaid once again and return home. Still in love with the prince, she's unable to kill him, and instead turns to sea foam and dies. But because of her selflessness, she's rewarded by becoming a spirit, where she's given the chance to eventually earn a soul by doing good deeds. Yep, it's a very different story with obvious religious themes. Okay, what's your fucking point? It's clear they're just adapting the original Disney film frame by frame and just like just updating it to make it more make it more live action. Uh, so using this as an example is really fucking dumb. I personally because like, they changed it to make it less adult and more like I said more fitting with Disney's brand. This is not the same fucking thing. They still kept her white. <laughs> they didn't change her fucking race. If they changed her fucking race a second time, for, like from the Danish shit, then you you would have a point. But no, they changed the story around to make it more kid friendly. Stop it. Like every point you fucking make is retarded. Mackie Sky, two dollars super chat. Holy hell, how did I miss the whole stream? Love you, Jay. Yeah, you didn't really miss the whole stream. I got this video and I got another video to do right after this. Uh, I don't know about Garlock the Destroyer. I think we might look a little uh, at a little bit of that motherfucker and then go to the next video. Because I just don't want to promise it and not talk about it. But, oh, God. I'm like, there's only like an hour left, but if we got to do it till midnight, I don't give a shit. They find the original tale to be far more bittersweet and heartbreaking than Disney's version, which is likely the reason for all the changes in the first place. And no shit. And that isn't out of the norm either, as all of Disney's films have deviated from the original fiction. No shit, but we're talking about a remake of their own property. It's not the same fucking thing. This is something that they made. This is something that they made beloved, and now they always, and the only thing they really changed was the skin color of the lead because they want this, because that's the re fucking reaction they wanted. I mean, they're idiots because this is only going to make people hate their shit. Like they're, they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna lose lose money. Period. It's gonna have the opposite effect that they wanted. But you know, Laura Hugel, seven ninety nine super chat. Did you know that in this live action movie, Ariel will be the one to steer the ship to kill kill Ursula in the end as a mermaid? Yeah, I know. I saw that. <laughs> this is the dumbest shit. Luke's television review, five dollars super chat. As Heel versus Babyface pointed out, the Adams family, um, as as Heel versus as As pointed out with the Adams family, it is about the version of the story that made it famous, not necessarily the original, right? Fairy tale in one way or another, in order to make them more family friendly. Yeah, dummy. People have also said that by making Ariel black, it's historically inaccurate. Oh yes, it kind of is. <laughs> Especially if they're filming it in fucking Italy. Ain't no way her black ass will be walking around <laughs> without some kind of heat. You know what I mean? Although it has European influences, Disney's Little Mermaid is set in a fictional country. Meaning that literally anything can happen because it isn't. It is, like, it's in a fictional place, but it was made... Because uh, Now keep in mind, you're the one who brought this up. You're the one who brought the Danish shit into it. This come it has Greek origins, and then it was made into a Danish, uh, a Danish fairy tale. So it's always been like European. It, well, it's in a fictional country. It's in a fictional country in a real continent, Europe. <laughs> so like, yeah, don't even try it. Stop it. You fucking up all over the place with this. Yeah, fictional country, but real continent. That's like saying, oh, well, Wakanda is a fictional country, so we could just make everyone in a Black Panther movie white, right? Because it's in a fictional country <laughs> and not a real tangible fucking continent that has like at least 90% black people, right? Right? So we could just, everyone in Wakanda forever or like all the Black Panther movies should have been white because hey, Wakanda ain't real. <laughs> Wakanda ain't real. So everyone can be white, right? Black Panther can be white because Wakanda ain't real. <laughs> Master Chuddy, $10 super chat. 
Two things Disney could have done. Uh, one, use the Black Mermaid from the animated show and tweak that or focus on Mom, uh, Mami Wata, uh, West African Mermaid, but that would take work and patience and grasp orig- uh, and, um, and a gasp originality. Bust Nut 33, stop right there, slave. Where's your master? <laughs> Bus, uh, Burst Angel 15, uh, Burst Angel 15, two dollars super chat. Give me the Ryan Gosling Black Panther now, like, yeah, because Wakanda ain't real, so we can make we can make Black Panther a white dude because that that logic makes sense, it makes total sense. Great. Also, thank you, Burst, for that super chat. It's just a movie, it's pretend. It's um, just a movie, it's pretend, but I'm gonna fucking rationalize and you know, bring up uh bring up my science to defend this fictional fucking movie that, that's no big deal. You're an adult, you should know that. We all know that none of the people making this argument actually care about historical accuracy. They just want to be able to say that non-white people should only be slaves in- You use, oh, historical accuracy and you use a fucking clip from Harriet? Oh, you know, the movie that gave Harriet Tubman superpowers? <laughs> You don't care about historical accuracy. And then you sh- they show- he- she shows a fucking movie where they made Harriet Tubman an Avenger. <laughs> oh my God. Are you fucking, who edits your shit? There's- and yes, if you are as flabbergasted by that um, information as I was when I first heard, yeah, that's an actual thing. Go watch Harriet. And this was nominated for a fucking Oscar, by the way. It's not that, it's, it's nowhere near good enough to be nominated for anything. But yeah, they get, apparently because it, it is historically accurate that Harriet Tubman got a, um, she had got a concussion, like she had some head injury, right? And that's, that, that's public record. But then they twisted to where, oh, she got a head injury. And from that, she got superpowers where she can look into the future like 10 minutes <laughs> or so, some shit like that i think it was yeah i think 10 minutes into the she can look ten, two to 10 minutes into the future because she hit her head <laughs> i'm not even fucking joking i'm not joking so this bitch is harping on about you just don't want to see people people of color and horse historical accuracy and then she uses fucking Harriet as oh oof oh you did it wrong you fucked it up like all you had to do was use a clip from like Roots and that would have been a better that would have been a better choice a period film without being called out for their racism this sort of how dare there be diversity in my fantasy outrage. No, no one's pissed about diversity. People are pissed about you about purposely baiting people into be right being rightfully pissed off about being either pandered to or being or you just using black people as a tool to sell a fucking movie. They use that because they think that somehow that's going to get them engagement with this film, which is retarded. It's the most rich. I don't know why, like they do this TikTok level marketing scheme. Where it's like, we make people angry enough, they'll see our movie. And they're seeing, and and Disney is finding out now how that much they fuck themselves with that. Like it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna fucking work. Or they could just be doing it at like. Well, I think it's both. Because uh, you know, as soon as you start criticizing the film, they're like, oh, you just racist. Like it's all every time you're on Twitter, right? This is how, how you know Disney uses, Disney uses bots on Twitter. Because as soon as you start talking shit, there's always some asshole with a, a Halle Bailey fucking avatar coming to you and saying, you just racist and you could criticize anything. And they'll be like, you're like, you just racist, bitch. <laughs> and it, it's just bots. That's why I barely respond to it anymore because it's just fucking bots that Disney put out there on Twitter. 1990 BJK, uh, 299 Super Chat. Dylan Mulvaney for Tiana in Purchase and the Frog remake. Yeah, people are not going to be pissed off until they start fucking hiring TikTokers, trans TikTokers and shit in, to be in these movies. Then suddenly, like, if you, if they, people, if Hollywood, because, but Hollywood's not that stupid. They're not going to cast a black person in a movie for meant for a Japanese person. 
Not because they respect Japanese people, but because <laughs> uh, but because that is too stark. It's a little too noticeable. The, the agenda is too noticeable then. It ain't because they give a shit about Japanese people. Uh, Luke's television review, $5 super chat. The animated The Little Mermaid is by definition history. Uh, by definition history, so wanting accuracy in a remake is wanting historic, historical accuracy. Yeah, okay. Connor Garrett's. Uh, God forbid people want to make original black characters true. Pops up any time people of color are introduced into a fictional universe, which is so ridiculous. Uh, no, there's not outrage every fucking time there, there's a person of color in a fictional universe. Get the fuck out of here. Where was the outrage when Sam Jackson was cast as Nick Fury? Where was the outrage when Michael Clark Duncan was Kingpin? Where was all that outrage? What about all that shit? What about all the other movies that came out with either black leads or female leads that didn't get any static right around the time that the Little Mermaid trailer came out? What about that? Those races, those races and sexes just didn't show up for those. It makes me laugh. These people can suspend their disbelief enough to watch orcs, dragons, aliens, and elves. But people of color? No, that's going way too far. That's not even a good argument. Like, oh, because most of this shit is set... Europeans made them and they put them in the universe that was very similar to the world that they lived in. Like I said, you would not say this if this was Black Panther. <laughs> you wouldn't say this shit if 10, 20 years from now people go, you know what? What if Black Panther was really White Panther? <laughs> because Wakanda's not real, right? Wakanda ain't real. So you can just, yeah, just make Black Panther White Panther. Suddenly, your 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 uh your opinion on this would change. Like, how dare you change that? It's so historically offensive. <laughs> you start fucking whining. It's well known that Hollywood was built upon the marginalization of minorities, as seen with <laughs> the creation of the Motion Picture Production Code, aka the Hayes Code, back in the 1930s. The Hayes Code was a set of strict industry guidelines that were instituted up until the 1960s, and amongst these various rules was the outlawing of miscegenation on screen, which meant that two people of different races couldn't be depicted in a romantic or sexual relationship. In an era where- a Yeah, see, this is the same as people making memes about Halle Bailey uh, being used as a prop by Disney. Same thing, guys. Same fucking thing. Person of color was never given the opportunity to be the lead in the first place. This rule effectively allowed all of Hollywood to get away with casting only white actors as their leads for decades. It because you're uh, you're obligated to cast people of color in movies. Like, regard, regard, well, no, you have to fill in the quota, bitch. You are obligated. You have to. Go to any other fucking country and tell Jap tell Japanese people they need more black people in their fucking movies. They'll laugh at your stupid ass. You need to put black people in your movies. Oh my god, I hate like go to live in Japan and then fucking complain that too many Japanese people are on screen. <laughs> and watch how racist you look after a while. Japanese people. There's no people, other people of color. <laughs> Kettle, five dollars super chat. I am terrified of what the Lilo and Stitch remake is going to be like. Didn't they cancel that shit? Or am I thinking of Moana? No, I think they canceled Moana, but whatever. Um, it's probably gonna look like trash, just like all the other ones. <laughs> Master Chuddy, five dollars super chat. You know why I'm not bothered uh, uh, bothered about seeing Lord of the Rings? Because why would I see myself in European folklore? But you know what? We do have African myths. We do have African myths available. No name. Nine ninety nine super chat. Crazy how the same people spouting this rhetoric also harassed and bullied the girl that played Tony Stark's daughter in Endgame, just at the possibility they could make her Iron Ironheart in Marvel. Mm hmm. Lauren Hugo, seven ninety nine super chat. Have you seen the outrage from Disney's casting of Nani? And yeah, I saw that shit. She's not dark enough. <laughs> don't tell me about how oh representation all this shit when Disney fans Disney fans don't even know what the fuck they're talking about half the time. Like oh yeah, we hired a Hawaiian girl born in Hawaii. One of at least one of her parents is is a full blooded 
ethnic Hawaiian. But she's not dark enough, so uh, we need to get that light-skinned bitch out of this fucking movie. Uh, nobody named Jamie, $5 Super Chat. They really need to lay out a lot of groundwork just uh, to justify Black Ariel. EJ, £4.99 £4. Super Chat. I love your content, Jay. Please read the article from Hallie, Hallie on racism talking about being from the Deep South and her grandparents picking cotton. Oh my God, this girl. I think I might have bookmarked that article in case I made a review or something. I think I might have. We'll see. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna see if I can find that shit. That that sounds wonderfully pandering. King Bash. Believe it or not, people will unironically complain that stuff like anime doesn't have more black people, uh, black characters in them. Yeah, I see. That. I still and I see that shit too. Why do so many Japanese people in us? <laughs> Luke's television review, $5 super chat. So she just compared black people to orcs, dragons, aliens, and elves. It is like she can't even turn her racism off. Yeah, these motherfuckers. This un, like, un, like this racist as shit. And they don't even under, some of them truly don't understand how they sound. Bust Nut 33, can't wait to see China's box office results on the Little Mermaid remake. It's going to be abysmal. They don't fuck with niggas in China. <laughs> You see how they you see how they did her poster, right? They made it they made it blue. They made her skin color blue so they didn't have to show a black girl on the poster. Like I love it. And what kills me also is that they'll complain about Disney fans in America or anywhere else. Like oh like a a Western white country complaining about this casting. But they're not gonna come out against China. And say, oh, well, the Chinese, the Chinese government, they need to be more inclusive and accept our films and blah, blah, blah. Or maybe like, see, but that would make them look too, a little too Republican. <laughs> It'll make them look too conservative. Well, let's just not show our movies in that country anymore. That would look a little bit too DeSantis, DeSantis-y. <laughs> that would make them, look, make them look a little too DeSantis. Not that I have anything wrong with what, with, uh, what DeSantis is doing with Disney, because I don't. But, um... I'm just saying, they don't want to look like that. And plus, well, they used to make a lot of money with China, but now they probably won't. <laughs> but yeah, they don't want to look like that. Even though, like, they're clearly be been racist about all of their shit. Thus far, it, like, like, Black Panther, they covered his face up with a mask. Now, it's true that Black Panther has a mask, and he does wear it. But, like, their version of the poster, like, they made sure you could not see that motherfucker's face. And not to mention them shrinking Finn on um, that's, uh, on uh, the Force Awakens poster. They don't like niggas in, Ch in China, but they won't say nothing about it. Nothing. Bumcrack Jones, $2 Super Chat. No one had to follow the Hayes Code. It wasn't a law. <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, thank you, Bumcrack Jones, for that little bit of information. Now I know she's lying. <laughs> Uh, glib facsimile, two dollars super chat. How did changing gingers to black become a thing? I have no idea. I w it wouldn't be surp I wouldn't be surprised if that actually was the running joke in Hollywood that um, ginger is an anagram for, you know, the gamer word. <laughs> Will Spain four ninety nine super chat. FYI, Japan is pretty racist. They have an anti foreigner zone, and black people can't own property. Damn. And guess what? That's their prerogative. And I'm black. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's their fucking country. They can do whatever, whatever the fuck they want. I mean, it's kind of disheartening. Kind of makes me not want to go to Japan. <laughs> it also led to the widespread usage of yellow face and black face in the industry, with white actors including Katherine Hepburn, Marlon Brando, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, and... Yeah, that's... Oh, that's just blatant blackface. It's not even like a character. <laughs> All right, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's not even like... Marlon Brando. Brando, Judy Garland. Yeah, that's not even a character. That's just blatant blackface. Garland, Mickey Rooney, and Laurence Olivier being dressed up as different ethnicities. This issue of whitewashing, with or without prosthetics and makeup, is still present today. Oh my god! You did not show an orc and be like, yeah, see? They have people playing blacks. <laughs> still! You see how that role could have gone to a black 
that <laughs> they don't even need to wear makeup to be an orc. <laughs> Why did you show this? Oh no! <laughs> what the fuck? Why did you do that? This motherfucker is like just auditioning to be the most racist motherfucker. <laughs> Wow, wow, really? Aesthetics and makeup is still present today, with Emma Stone, Angelina Jolie, Rooney Mara, and Scarlett Johansson being cast. Scarlett Johansson was playing a fucking robot. Like you said, it's just fiction. Why does it matter to you? It's not even real. <laughs> Why are you complaining, bitch? And Emma Stone was playing a half breed, a Hawaiian, which is really fucking hilarious now because they're, they want. A, they're they're trying to cast like someone said in chat. They're trying to cast a half white Hawaiian to be in Lilo and Stitch, and they were like, "Oh fuck this bitch." <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's she's supposed to be biracial. Sometimes, most of, a lot of the time, biracial people do not look like half anything. Sometimes. Um, L. Baliavnu, El Baliavnu. Oh my God! I'm so sorry about that. Ten dollars super chat to combine both racism and fat. In the words of Boogie, glad to hear you're still black, Jay. <laughs> Thank you. Own Angelina Jolie, Rooney Mara, and Scarlett Johansson. I bet you, if you asked about like what race some of these some of these actresses were supposed to play, you couldn't even fucking say. And Especially Angelina Jolie. What race was she supposed to be? You like what was what race? was the person that she was, was she playing? You couldn't, they probably couldn't even answer. Being cast as women of color. By continuing to cast white actors in these roles, it not only erases a crucial part of that character's storyline, history, and culture, but it also continues a cycle of discrimination. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, you're saying doing race swaps is a form of discrimination? Oh, really? But only when it's, the person isn't white. Only when like the, the character being race swapped isn't white. That's when it's that's when it's disrespectful to the culture. Cause as we all know, white people don't have culture. <laughs> Danish? What's in Danish? I mean, I had one of those this morning. It was okay, but like now I have to throw it up because I like got my stomach like grew like half a centimeter. <laughs> Uh, glib facsimile, five dollars super chat. You respect another country's so uh, sovereignty, but these people don't. They want to tell everyone what to do. They want. Uh, they don't want any differences, really. Super Nazi ghost outed herself as a racist. Yeah. Uh, Giorgio Mendez. Did she just contradict herself? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, race swaps are offensive <laughs> to culture, but only when the, the race being swapped is not white. <laughs> then suddenly it's not offensive. And exclusion within the entertainment industry. In recent years, we've seen more and more actors of color appear in works of fantasy and fiction, including The Rings of Power. <laughs> Oh, it's the worst example you could have made. Bridgerton, House of the Dragon, and Percy. Also, like, House of the Dragon is a race swap, but I think, um, whatever the fuck. Bridgerton. Bridgerton is not a race swap, I don't think. I think that's, that, that, that's all, um, I think, because I don't really watch the show. I think that's all, like, original shit from, um, what's her name? What's that bitch's name? Shanta Rhymes, right. I think that's a story that she just made up. She doesn't put, I don't think she puts real life figures in her sh in her shows. These are all fictional okay? So I'm like, I'm fine with that because she's coming up with her own original, if she's coming up with her own, uh, own original shit, who gives a fuck? Yeah, who gives a fuck? If it's original and she's not race swapping things. If she's making her own shit, who cares? If this is her own, like, if, like, tell me, like, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. If she has race swapped uh, historical figures for her shows, then yeah, okay, she can put, she can be put in that little category too. 
But if Chandra Rhimes is kind of coming up with her own, as asinine as I think her fucking shit is, if she is making her own original shit with minority characters, like black and brown characters, then fine. I don't give a fuck. Because she's going, she's doing her own thing. But if you're taking somebody else's shit and just making somebody black because you want to, and because, well, we need diversity, then fuck you. You deserve to fail. <laughs> oh, shit. Demean? Have you seen any videos on people justifying black watching anime characters, even though they're Japanese? I mean, yeah, I'm not really into uh, anime like that. I mean, I watch it. I watch all the big shit, like, you know, um, I've seen um, Death Note and some other shit. So now I haven't really watched that. Yeah, some people in chat are saying that um, uh, House of the Dragon was actually did, did the, their race swap pretty well because, for, well, for one thing, well, I remember, I don't remember them having any, like, woke fucking advertising for that show. So, like, and plus I don't watch it so I can't comment on that. I mean, I know it was a race swap, for a fact, but I, I don't remember them doing any like woke advertising for it or saying, see, look, we got a darkie. We got a darkie. See, like they, like Disney does. But you know, yeah, I, I'm going to take y'all word for it. If you've seen the show and they say they did, they did a good job and uh, excuse me, then they did. But I know for a fact, Sean Rhimes, like she does her own original shit. So I'm fine with this. I'm fine with it. It's her own original shit. House of the Dragon and Percy Jackson, all of which have caused quite the uproar. Um, Bridgerton has not caused a fucking uproar. Get the fuck! They phrase what Bridgerton caused an uproar. When? For when did they get a? When did they cause um controversy for race swapping? I don't remember that. I've been I pay attention to shit even if it's shit I don't watch. I pay attention. These critics have even co-opted the serious issue of whitewashing to suit their agenda, claiming that Hollywood is guilty of blackwashing by making these originally white characters black. In regard to mm -hmm. The Little Mermaid, you often hear arguments along the lines of, well, what if we made Pocahontas or Princess Tiana or Mulan white? Okay, what's your comeback for this, I wonder? What's your comeback for this, bitch? How would you feel about that? But this weak diversionary tactic makes absolutely no sense, considering Ariel's skin color has no effect on the story being told. Uh, people told you how it affected, actually how it affects her being a mermaid, which is a huge thing. And you uh, wrote it off like, oh, it's just a fucking movie anyway. <laughs> Science? What is that? <laughs> you fuck it. They told you what, what, they told you why. And then you wrote it the fuck off. It's not the same thing as them, you proving them wrong. <laughs> the most important part of her character is that she's a mermaid who rebelled against her family and decided to become a human because she fell in love. And also it's about Disney and their aim and why they're doing it. Uh, the fact that they're doing it and why they're doing it. That's what it is. We'd be fine with like, if this was like when um, they made Cinderella black and they cast Br Brandy, if it was right, like if they were going to redo, like reimagine their whole catalog back then, and then they made, um, and then they made Ariel Black like back then, then no one would have a problem with it. Because back then they were, they actually were about casting the, the right people. Because with that Cinderella, almost everyone in the cast either had a history with singing or Broadway or just had a very, were very, good at doing like stage work which told me right then right there that yeah they're about and plus they cast Whitney I mean come on Whitney Brandy was real hot back then this was gen genuinely that was a movie that was genuinely about hiring the best people and just hiring whoever was fucking hot at the time and who has a fan who either has a family friendly image or could like who were just best for the role but the well has been poisoned now because because uh, Hollywood is just doing it just to fucking do it. They're doing it for fucking woke points and virtue signaling and making you feel bad that they're, they can't make anything good anymore. That's what it is. That's what it is. If they done this shit, like I said, back when Brandy's Cinderella came out, no one would care. Nobody would care. If, like if it was as good as that and understood the assignment like they did back in the day, nobody would give a fuck. 
No, just like they didn't give a fuck when Brandy was Cinderella. They would not give a fuck. That's it. It should be obvious, but whitewashing Tiana, Mulan, or Pocahontas would be inappropriate because their racial and cultural backgrounds are crucial to the themes of the film. Oh, really? Oh, but like, Tiana, Black, um, what is her... Uh, See, honestly, though, I have not seen it. I have not seen Princess and the Frog, so I can't comment on it. Okay, but like... As well as their personal journey. Okay, but like, just if we just change their skin color, make them a little light. But even if you if they were still black and you just made them a little lighter, people would still talk about people would still talk about whitewashing, just like they they're doing with Lilo and Stitch. And because this ain't about no fucking, <laughs> this ain't even about whitewashing and all that's inappropriate because blah, 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 blah. no you just don't fucking like people too light being on in your on your screen let's be fucking honest about it and that isn't exclusive to disney's princesses of color either if you took merida whose entire storyline is directly related to her scottish heritage and then made her asian it would be a completely different film Oh, so, so no, so now changing people, changing white characters, people of color, is wrong. But only when, uh, oh well, she's got, well, yeah, she's got an accent and she's Scottish. <laughs> see, but see, I love how they use her as an example because the only reason she they she did use that as an example is because her culture is way more noticeable. Because <laughs> she has an accent and she wears kilts and shit. That's the only reason you use that as an example. A surprisingly vocal demographic that have complained about the casting of Halle Bailey as Ariel are white gingers, who claim that they've lost their representation, which could not be further from the truth. Red hair is an extremely popular choice when it comes to animation because besides being eye-catching, it can also be used as a shorthand for characters who are rebellious, brave, loud, and headstrong. As a result, red hair is often given to the lead characters in both animated films and TV. And off the top of my head, I can think of Mrs. Incredible, Kim Possible, Daphne Blake, Fiona, Blossom, Starfire, and- All characters that existed before the woke agenda. <laughs> Anastasia and Jessica Rapp. Oh, also go back to this. Go back, go back, go back. Films and TV. And off the top of my head, I can think of Mrs. Incredible. This is incredible. Yeah, like I said, this was created before the woke agenda. Not not a good example. Incredible. Kim Possible. Kim Possible. Also made before the woke agenda. Possible. Not a good example. Now Asian. Fiona. <laughs> Fiona made before the woke agenda. Not not uh, not a good example. Blossom. Blossom. Um, if you look, <laughs> they were gonna make a new um Powerpuff Girls show before it was canceled. And from what I remember, she was supposed to be, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hang on a second. Let's look this up. Because I'm pretty sure she was a different race as well. And I'm sure they won't mention, I'm sure they won't mention all the other ginger characters that have been re fucking replaced over the years. They're just gonna melt. Oh well, all these other ginger characters still exist. The ones we haven't raped yet, they still exist. <laughs> Hang on a second. She might not have been race swapped, but let me make sure. Oh no, never mind. She was, I think she was a white girl. Never mind. But also, like I said, made before uh, the woke agenda, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Luke's television review, flat out super chat. Also, how does her skin color not matter when this story is set in colonial times, as someone else said? Uh, bitch, where you master it? <laughs> Starfire, Anastasia, and Jessica Rabbit. And that's just the tip of the ginger iceberg. Oh, also, yeah, once again, Jen, uh, Jessica Rabbit before Woke Agenda. <laughs> With many of these characters being heroes in one way or another, there's dozens of positive redheaded role models to choose from. But how many black girls can say the same? <laughs> how many black girls can say that they have positive role models? Oh. 
Sure, there's Susie Carmichael in Rugrats, number five in Codename Kids Next Door, and Orange Blossom in Strawberry Shortcake. There are many more than this, bitch. There are more than this. But one of the only black characters who is actually the protagonist is Penny Proud. And she isn't a superhero or a princess. But like, she, but she's the protagonist. You can't, the other ones are side characters. So their blackness is null and void. <laughs> But well, you're the only black character, but if she's not the lead, their other ones aren't leads. They're not leads, so they're trash. <laughs> Even in Disney's own official princess lineup, Tiana is the only black princess. And there, there's a princesses, like there's an, only one Native American princess, there's only one Indian princess, there's only one, uh, there's only one Chinese princess. What the fuck is your point? Are you complaining about there not being enough Chinese princesses? There's only, there's like at least one of each other fucking race, but you ain't complaining about that shit. Yeah, there's only one Native American chick, there's only one Scottish chick, there's only one Chinese chick, there's only one Indian chick, there's only, there's only one um, Hawaiian chick, yeah. Why does there need to be like five or six of her? But there needs to be like five or six black princesses because oh my God, there's just not enough representation. While redheads are represented by Merida, Anna, and Ariel. They uh, Ariel? But Ariel's black now. <laughs> black princess. While redheads are represented. Also, yeah, good. You're using an example that wasn't race swapped. But you already have Ariel, but like this, uh, bitch. Asmi, $15 super chat. Ever heard of Storm became the leader of the X-Men? Like, no, that doesn't count. She's not a lead character in anything, so she doesn't count. ...by Merida, Anna, and Ariel. They almost got Giselle, too. Even in the real world... Who the fuck is that? ...world, red hair makes frequent appearances in media. Oh, but, like, what about these actresses? <laughs> in real life? There's new... Red-haired people exist in real life. <laughs> With because, but black people don't exist in real life. <laughs> Can black girls say they have representation? Black people don't even exist in real life. How do you explain? <laughs> they can't, they're not even represented in real life. <laughs> oh my God. Bob crack shows. She forgot they did race swap Starfire. Yep. Actresses. Oh yeah, I forgot to fucking mention that. God damn, they did race swap Starfire. And then instead of giving her red hair, they gave her this like purplish hair. It's not even like a good red color. It's like Lindsay Lohan, Karen Gillan, Nicole Kidman, Bryce Dallas Howard, Isla Fisher. We talking about characters, bitch, not fucking actors. Julianne Moore and Jessica Chastain, all sporting their natural hair color in films or TV. Red is actually such a popular choice on screen that many other actresses like Amy Adams, Rita Hayworth, Cynthia Nixon, Deborah Messing, Sophie Turner, Christina Hendricks, and Emma Stone have taken to dyeing their hair red, and it's considered their signature more than their actual hair color, which proves that the color isn't just common, but it's sought after. Black hair- It's not common. What the fuck are you talking about? You just- uh, Oh, <laughs> the hair The hair color is common. No. You just fucking said there are women who dye their hair that color, which means it's not common. <laughs> They're not natural fucking, like, a lot of the chicks you listed are not natural redheads, so it's not really that common. You fucking idiot. Hairstyles and hair types are not treated the same way in Hollywood, with multiple actresses saying that they've been discriminated against because of their natural hair. Like, I feel like she, she smells like patchouli oil. <laughs> <laughs> or Weed. Yeah, maybe weed. Although, though, interestingly, white celebrities see very little backlash. Uh, you a fucking lie. Now you just blatantly fucking lying. White celebrities really get any backlash for their fucking dreadlocks, and you use a fucking. Uh, of course, you use a cap from a goddamn movie in the nineties. Maybe weed. They don't get. It. They didn't get any backlash. I'm sh pretty sure Bieber got always got don't shit for everything. So that you know damn well that he got backlash for that. Lady Gaga also got backlash for her shit. They always talk about how they're appropriating culture. Whenever a white, white person does anything slightly ethnic, what the fuck are you talking about? Also, this is from a movie, bitch. This is not an actor. He was not actually walking around looking like this. Although interestingly, white celebrities see very little. Oh my God, this is such a terrible video.
What's that? Uh, what's her name? The fuck is her name? Um, Helena Bottom Car- Bottom Carter. I don't even remember that fucking hairstyle. That must have been like a half for half a second. And you use Miley Cyrus. Isn't it? She definitely caught shit for that. She caught shit for a lot of shit in this era. <laughs> you killing me? Get the fuck. Oh my God. This is such bullshit. Keldrick, five dollars super chat. Imagine ignoring dozens of black female leads and thinking other people are the racist. Yeah, she's got. Well, she's got to make her points now. You think she can make points by acknowledging reality? Can't do that. Well, Not when you're a white feminist. When they appropriate <laughs> these same hairstyles. This bias against black hair is such a rampant issue in the industry that many actors have had to style their own hair on set because none of the hairstylists hired have been trained to do so. Uh, if you're doing a predominantly black film, I'm assuming that must be like, wow, a lot of uh, black girls on camera have le- really shitty hair now, <laughs> like really shitty hairstyles like this shit. Like, what is this? <laughs> this is some Netflix shit. <laughs> this is not only incredibly disrespectful, but it also places more pressure on the actors in question, as they now have to do a whole other job that they aren't being paid. They can always hire their own fucking stylist. Get the fuck out of here with this, these excuses. They have to, the, the, the pain of going to a fucking hair salon. <laughs> the, the pain of going back to your old hood and giving somebody a fucking opportunity to be your stylist and get paid way more than they could ever get paid with their own fucking salon. The pain. I don't feel sorry for none of these hoes. <laughs> take, can't take your ass to the fucking hood. Go to your, go back to your fucking hood and uplift the one of those fucking hairstylists who did you a solid every single fucking time. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. Wolf Spain 499 Super Chat Blossom wasn't going to be race swap, but she does kill Mojo. Mojo Jojo before the show starts. They also make bubbles a ditzy hoe and buttercup a d- <laughs> a lesbian. <laughs> Snicker dudes fight all super chat. If I'm not mistaken, red hair is the rarest hair color. Yeah. So much so that they could go extinct in the future. Yeah, of course she doesn't mention that. Of course not. Paid for. Because this discrimination is so well documented, these criticisms against Hallie's hair are extremely off-putting. Oh yeah, like my criticisms that she shouldn't have braids because they'd be too heavy and unmanageable under fucking water because of the weight it would put on her neck that she said that was all that like the neck the fucking weight that was on her neck that she said that was on it especially since she's about to become one of only a handful of protagonists who've sported locks on screen at least oh just, she's the only one who sported locks the only one who sported locks <laughs> we need more girls who have locks because that's important for some fucking reason at least one of the few that are actually worn by a black person uh no one liked this movie um, people did not like this character from what I heard. <laughs> and like, who gives a shit? He was be- basically raised by people who also had locks in their hair. So naturally they would put put them on his hair so he could fit in. Also, uh, this is not a good fucking example. <laughs> and also, uh, and another fucking thing, uh, braids are not particular, are not specifically black. They go back to even, uh, like the Viking era. So I don't know why the fuck you are saying that, oh, braids are like a black thing. That's so fucking brain dead. What's most baffling about these complaints from the ginger community is that Hallie's hair is red, just not the fire engine red color of her animated counterpart, which is to be expected considering no one's hair looks like that without some assistance out of a jar. Besides, Ariel wasn't even originally a redhead. In initial concept art, she was imagined with blonde hair. The only reason Disney decided to give her red hair was one, with Aurora and Cinderella, they already had two famous blondes in their arsenal. Two, blonde hair would have made her too closely resemble Madison from 1984's Splash, a different Disney project. And three, red stood out more against the blues and greens of the ocean. It might not be common, but there are and now her red, now this bitch's red hair blends in with everything because everything is fucking dark and muted. Congratulations! <laughs> Are black people who have naturally red hair? Do they not deserve to see themselves represented on? 
black people don't have hair that looks like shit that's colored like fucking garbage do black people with red hair not necessarily be represented uh for one thing like i said our hair doesn't look that garbage <laughs> and we would be smart we would be smart enough not to have locks in water like i said before uh not applicable two dollar super chat yeah I like how she's not cracking a history book right now Like, that is the ugliest fucking red I've ever seen. They could have easily, oh, well, her hair can't get that red because uh, 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 she's got no dye underwater. She's a fucking mermaid, though. This is fictional, though. You can do anything because it's mer mermaids and shit. It's like, it's, it's fantasy, though. See, like, you can't, you cannot put that excuse out there because it falls apart immediately. Her hair could still be bright fucking red, regardless. She's a mermaid. Remember, they don't exist. <laughs> They're not even real anyway. Are black people who have naturally red hair, do they not deserve to see themselves represented on screen? Or is I wouldn't want to be represented like this shit. That's not even red. That's orange. Look at that. It's not even blood red. It's not even like um um blood orange. It's just orange. Her hair is orange. It almost blends in with her skin tone. That is not red. ...a serious issue when white people feel threatened. Disney has released an assortment of live action films that feature their Disney princesses, including 2014's Maleficent. She's not a Disney princess. 2015 Cinderella. I guess you meant, uh, oh, uh, Sleeping Beauty's in it. Oh, whatever. I didn't barely notice, so. Bella, 2017's Beauty and the Beast, 2019's Aladdin, and 2020's Mulan. And no one expected them to usurp their animated counterparts. And let's be honest, in most cases, they didn't stand a chance. Halle Bailey being Ariel does not erase the original Little Mermaid from existence. You're just getting a different version of her. This is addition. It's a different version, but it's the same, basically it's the exact same fucking movie, the same character, <laughs> the exact same way, the same songs, the same uh, story structure. It's basically the same guy, but we're not erasing anything. Not erasing or replacing anything. Even though the exact definition of, like the exact purpose of a fucking remake is to remake the goddamn film. God, you were not stupid. subtraction. Also, if this version allows a whole new group of little girls to finally see themselves on screen, why is that so terrible? Some people have said that the casting choice is a clear indication of Disney's newfound wokeness. Yep. Although I have criticized the company for its disingenuous pandering in the past, it's in- I think it- even though I didn't criticize it for, them for pandering, I'm gonna completely take it back now. Just to suit my personal agenda. Entirely possible that Halle Bailey was simply the best choice for the role. No. <laughs> no. Just listen to her sing. She sings. That means she was perfect. <laughs> it's not like she had a foot in the door with Beyonce or anything. Because she was also in a Disney remake. No. No. <laughs> she got there on her own merits. Like she can sing. And that's all you need in a movie where you have to act and sing. Jack Diamond, two dollars super chat. Where's my own? Uh, uh, where's my albino representation? Kettle, two dollars, two dollars super chat. Fiction doesn't mean things can just be random. Exactly. Uh, movies still have their own um, built-in rules, and even if they don't have their own built-in rules, there's still rules to follow. Like I said, if you just randomly made Black Panther white, everyone would have a fucking problem with that for good reason. Don't forget that when Eartha Kitt first became cat- I love how they don't even show a clip of her singing. Wow. Woman, it was considered quite controversial at the time. Because it was the fucking 60s. Don't even play it. Don't even play me. Because it was the 19 fucking 60s, you know why it was a big deal. But now it's one of the most iconic iterations of the character. Yeah, because we've done better. <laughs> Society has grown and we know, oh, she, no, she was always perfect. I'd be all for criticism. And don't, and don't tell me we're suddenly going to see Hallie Bailey as like on the same level as Eartha Kitt's Catwoman in like 10 years. Cause that ain't going to fucking happen. This is 2023. It's not the sixties. We hate this for a real reason. Not just because, oh, when the times we're in, we just, ooh, Negroes. Oh no, no. This is 2023, bitch. This is a different fucking era. There's a reason no one likes this. And also she didn't fucking, 
I love how this person was like, oh, I know I, I criticized their woke pandering, but um, anyway, next topic. <laughs> she just went right on past that shit. Systems like this, if it was actually coming from a sincere place. It is coming from a sincere, a sincere place, for the most part. So get the fuck but out because of here. this is only ever brought up when previously all white pieces of media are made more diverse. And this is only brought up when they, like, want to change characters to a different race for pandering. Why? Why is it all? Why is that? <laughs> I wonder why. And not when projects about people of color are whitewashed. It's clear that this is. Uh, but see that because that rarely ever happens. That's why. Because Hollywood's not that not that fucking dumb. Because they can't, they know they can't get away with that anymore. But they can get away with this. That's why you fucking retard. Deflection strategy. Sure, you can say that Disney is being unoriginal. Although that should have been obvious from the fact that they're remaking a movie they've already made. But we also have to acknowledge that by casting Halle Bailey as Ariel, Disney is making history. There have no, they're not. How is this making fucking history? When we've already had, um, when we had Moana, we've had Mulan, and we've had uh, Princess and the Frog. Well, how is this making any fucking history? You are such a goddamn idiot. You were such a consumer. This is making history. Black people didn't exist before this movie. <laughs> Luke's television review, $2 super chat. Eartha Kid could also actually act. Yeah, that's another thing. She's actually mul fucking multi-fucking talented. Wolf Spain, 499 Super Chat, MJ, Starfire, Wally, Iris West, Jimmy Olsen, Hawk, uh, Hawk Girl, Batwoman, uh, Heimdall, I think that says Heimdall, uh, Gordon and April O'Neil all ugh, and April O'Neil are all examples of people replaced uh, all examples of replaced redheads in Hollywood. Yeah. Actually the list is very vast, by the way. It's a lot. There have been dozens of white mermaids on screen. Some good, some evil, and some somewhere. There have been nothing but white mermaids! <laughs> This is making history because now we need to have a black mermaid. They're still not making history. We're in between. They are not an endangered species. Hallie is about. Yeah, because they're not rare. Because they're not real, dummy. About to become the first black mermaid in the entire history of Hollywood. Meanwhile, the original Ariel wasn't even the first redheaded one. Is that not something that should be commended? I love how she, they, she uses an example of some side bitch. <laughs> <laughs> some fucking side bitch. See, like, you had some representation, I guess. Whatever. First redheaded one. Is that not something that should be commended? No. You were basically golf clapping over like like the the dumbest shit. I know I criticized Disney for their pandering before, but this pandering is good this time. I swear. I swear, guys, it's so good this time. Master Chuddy, five dollars super chat. We all, we all know that Disney is doing nothing original. Congratulations, you just gave the reason why people hate the movie now. <laughs> we should definitely be having conversations about Disney's hesitance to make new movies that feature black leads. But in the meantime, in the meantime, take these table scraps, you fucking nigger. <laughs> you fucking niggers, take this table scrap, eat it. Kettle, five dollars super chat. No, having a first black president was his was history. Not race swapping a fucking fictional character. Exactly. Thank you. We have to make do with what we've got. Black people are severely underrepresented in film in general. No, they're not. They are not. They weren't even before, actually. <laughs> We're only thirteen percent of the fucking population is going to that's going to be reflected in film. If we're 13% of America, we're going to be 13% of fucking Hollywood. This is, that's just it. Sorry. Why would they be overrepresented? Why would we, we be more than 13%? Why would that not reflect the uh, real, real life? Jack Diamond, $2 Super Chat. They're making history by being the biggest joke. So regardless of whether or not it's an original story, or one that's been told a dozen times, they deserve to see themselves on screen. Unfortunately, this is something that a lot of people struggle to grasp, especially in this I wonder if she saw those videos of those uh, little girls fake 
emotions over the trailer. No, she doesn't. In okay. age when certain backwards ideologies are making a return. So certain backwards ideologies are making a return because Disney told me. So they anytime were. <laughs> there seems to be an improvement when it comes to representation and diversity, the alt right always seems to be working. Themselves. The alt right. Ding, 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 ding. Now I don't take anything you say seriously. <laughs> the alt-right. The alt-right cares so much about this fucking movie. Stop over it. For a group of people. I can't wait for this movie to make Disney lose money. I can't wait. I can't wait for this movie to fucking fail. I can't wait. People who are always. Because ain't nobody going. I bet nobody is going to watch this. The only people praising this shit are fucking ha Halle Bailey fans and bots. <laughs> Everyone else is clowning this shit is going on and on about the snowflakes needing to toughen up, they sure do spend a lot of their time whining, don't they? It's always woke agenda this, political correctness that. Just say mm -hmm. that you don't like that you're finally being held accountable for your prejudices and be done with it. <laughs> you're being held accountable for your prejudices because people are angry that you don't want to see a fucking like rehashed version with, a, with black paint on it. <laughs> You don't want to see black people use as props in films. That makes you the alt-right racist. Because the movie hasn't been released yet, we have no idea whether it will be good or bad. Oh, yeah, we do. We've still seen clips. We've still seen clips. We've still seen the ads. The ads. We've decided, yeah, this is going to be shit. We've seen this, the success rate of their uh, Disney remake roster. It's not It's not looking good. The, the little, I mean... Uh, the Lion King was the worst. Pe like, if you want to learn about, like, if you haven't learned, if you haven't watched it yet, go watch YMS's review of The Lion King. That ooh, that was the worst piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, I knew that before I even saw the review because I was, if you uh, are devoutly, if you follow me devoutly, like on Twitter, like if you were on my last Twitter account, I was like live tweeting that shit and just crying, laughing at everything. It was so bad. Name ten dollars super chat. I hate talk uh, this talking point because it reduces black people to only like and relate to black characters. It's incredibly racist. Yes, it is. Zombie chicks two dollars super chat. Get ready for round two of this with Snow White. Oh God. <laughs> oh. But what I do know is that I'll be watching it in support of Halle Bailey either way. You ain't gonna see it, bitch. You're just some talking head on some random YouTube channel. Get the fuck out of here. Are you looking forward to The Little Mermaid? No, bitch. <laughs> all right, all right. I think we're gonna take like a little look at a uh, Garlock the Destroyer right quick because I need to get a little bit of that out. I can't go that in depth with this person because it's already, I, I'm supposed to be like offline at like 1130. <laughs> But I got another fucking video I got to talk about. It's like 40 minutes long. So, yeah. We're just going to like take a little peek at Garlock, Garlock the Destroyer. And to see how cringe uh, he is. Glib facsimile, $5 dollars super chat. It's funny because you can name dozens of black entertainers who got there by merit and it's dis and it's disproportionate even. Most were, uh, most were before diversity hiring. Reads by uh, Lamplight, ten dollars super chat. Thank you. Bus nut. I'm sick and tired of hearing her voice. Anyway, yeah, true. Okay. Duh. But anyway, yeah, this real portly bitch, who's also transgender, by the way. Uh, was on the whatever podcast. If you don't know what that is, it's just it's just one of those like slightly like this is one of those red pill podcasts where they're constantly talking about body counts and blah 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 and shit. Sometimes it's funny. Hang on a second, guys. Sometimes it's funny because like the dumbasses uh, they bring on the show are really well, they're dumb. But the thing is. Shows like that, uh, podcasts like that are really fucking lame because it's like, they just, oh, oh, ugh, these dumb whores are just so dumb and I'm just so mad that they're so dumb. Like, yeah, bitch, you, hi, you brought these people on. You brought these people on to be dumb and then they were dumb. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> and like, they exclusively bl bring on really dumb chicks and then try to make it look like, oh, this is how all women are, basically. 
All these women we we brought like with an OnlyFans account that's like eighteen to twenty five years old, who don't have any fucking prospects, <laughs> no education, complete fucking lemmings. Yet we yeah, uh, th- these are basically all the women that exist in the world. That's the problem I have with it. Like yeah, you can make good they make good points every now and then, but they're very fucking biased. But anyway, yeah, this this motherfucker was on the whatever podcast and just looking like a fuck. Hold, hold on, hold on a second. Looking like a whole ass fucking mess. <laughs> like this is the type of person who would have been on Maury back in the day, Maury or or Springer. Like I'm fat and I wear yeah I'm fat and I wear sexy clothing. Get off my dick, bitch. <laughs> Like it's like one of them motherfuckers. But hang on, so let me find that original video so you can you can really understand. In case you haven't seen this shit. It's only in 360p. God damn it. Yeah, let's hurry. We gotta even get it over with with the Gorlock bitch. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Kiko. I'm 23. Uh, I go to UCSB and I also bartend. And what kills me is the chick all the way. Oh, my God. The chick all the way on the left was trying not to laugh the entire time. She, the entire time Gorlock was there. It was so fucking funny. Every time she, every time Gorlock started speaking, she was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> she's still here!" Like she was, if she and she knew if she started laughing, it would be like people would try to cancel her ass. But anyway, there's this other video, and we're gonna look at her TikTok channel as well because I think it's occupation. pretty funny. And is a certified bad bitch. And certified bad bad bitch or boss, yeah. ba- I very much baddie vibes. Baddie, like what? full-time baddie, <laughs> no breaks. Is that what does that mean? Can you explain that? It's just a lifestyle. Like it's. I mean, if you get it, you get it. The rules are there. The next day. Besties, I'm literally leaving the club early because men are. I'm in the drive-through of a Jack in a Box on my way home. <laughs> I was so disrespected that I went to a Jack in the Box. Oh, like this, every single fucking stereotype. Oh, man didn't want to fuck me, and so I went to eat my feelings at the Jack in the Box. And to go eat my feelings. Like, what the? Like, I'm literally a full time baddie. I'm in the club early. Like, I'm literally leaving the club early. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, ugh. So now that you know what we're dealing with. I'm gonna go stop by her channel. <laughs> oh wait, wait. She, uh, Gorlock is a trans woman, so technically it would be a he. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, his TikTok, like, because Gorlock looks like a fat man. Like, I you can't. Like, I, I said this before on. I think I might have said it on Twitter. That it's very like I said this as a joke, but still, like, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. As a trans person, like you wouldn't really want your male bone structure to show. So wouldn't you get like as fat as possible so it doesn't show up so you don't see like your square jaw and shit? And you don't see your penis, which is a plus. (laughs) So it's kind of like smart if you think about it. Just saying. Hi besties! Okay, so real quick, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it already. There is a little video on the internet floating around of me at a friend's family birthday party. Um, There was this boy there who was basically online saying that he was my boyfriend and a whole nine yards, you already could imagine. I'm gonna be honest, it was a cute, fun little joke that like I kept going along with. And t- what is that? Is that gray hair or do you have dandruff? Like what the fuck? So, There was a situation that happened that I felt the need to remove myself from just for safety and all kinds of stuff like that. Oh, look at the razor bumps on his... (laughs) 
Oh boy. Look at the razor bumps on Gorlock's chest. You guys already know I have hella thick skin. I can't handle the jokes being said about me. But no, when I draw the no, line. you can't. We just saw a video of you crying at Jack in the Box. Mine <laughs> is where you make me feel like I'm in a safe space and where you make me feel like you're an ally. And then you turn it around, flip it, and then use it to profit off of the trans community for your. <laughs> fucking comment section. How do you still have your baby teeth? Oh, uh, like, do you make profit on the trans community? Like, girl, well, sorry, guy, <laughs> fucking stop. Stop it with this shit. Like, because even if, like, you are legitimately, like, a trans woman, all right? You're going around wearing shit that shows off your whole ass belly. You got the razor bumps over here. You're not a good representation for the trans people. You're, you're just not. <laughs> Like I said, this is the equivalent of somebody showing up on Maury, fat as fuck, and wearing like little bicycle shorts and shit. You're not good representation for pretty much anybody. Own personal, whatever it is that you want to do. Guys, we're already portrayed so crazy in the media already as it is. But you know what? There's so many. Are you reading off a script? Because you keep looking down. Or maybe he's just looking down at. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this, but maybe he's looking down at like, like, oh, something's wiggling around down there. Is that like, is, it's either a chicken wing or my penis. <laughs> like my folds just capture a lot of shit. So I don't know. Either that fold is where the penis is or I that chicken wing I dropped last night. I don't know. Like the one that I was just in that it could have literally could have ended horribly okay and as you guys have heard it before i'm gonna keep on saying it again i will never be quiet about the safety of my community no likes no follows no social media platform is worth ever trying to gain some clout and risk putting a trans woman or trans person anybody's life in danger honestly yeah like that's that's a great loophole for like trans influencers. Anyone says boo to you, you could say, well, you're putting me at risk as a trans person. It's like, shut up. <laughs> just shut up. You can catch this heat just like anybody. Like, stop with this bullshit. Okay, what else we got? Oh my God. Hi, Oh my God. Like, the motherfucker is shaped like the penguin from Batman Returns. <laughs> got that Batman Returns swag. Oh my god. Like the thing is, and this this is a problem, not just with Gorlock, but with um um what the fuck is the other one's name? Like Jazz Jennings. Cause Jazz Jennings recently, not recently, recently, but like in the recent years has gotten really fat. And when it when he got fat he developed like a man's fat stomach. I mean, he looked more like a girl when he was thinner, but, and then when he got ballo ballooned up and got fat, he was shaped like a fat man. <laughs> Very top heavy and little legs. Uh, like my, the, the cup runneth over. <laughs> I'm just saying it looked like a like melting ice cream. It didn't look good. The stomach was really like full and wide. Cause usually like when women are fat, we develop like a little dips where our tits are. And like we, we form according to gender. The fat forms according to gender. That's we carry it depend like there's a, there's a lot of reasons why we how we why we carry fat the way we do. But gender is also one of them. And uh yeah, Jazz Jennings had a whole ass fucking kegger when when he got fat. And it's the same thing here. Like you're shaped like a fat man, damn it! <laughs> it was bu and it bugs me. Yeah, the high top Converse, and of course the BBL sponsor. And then wearing my Chanel earrings, my Tiffany necklace, and the bumper yeah, true, bag. True. I do feel, I do feel, I do feel sorry. God so damn it! I do feel back. some kind of sympathy for her because I feel like, I feel like he, got, I feel like he really got kidnapped mentally by his shitty parents. Like emotionally, he seems like still like he's still a fucking kid in many ways. Uh, Burst Angel fifteen, what's up, Burst? Two dollars super jet. You know what's not a safe space? His intestines. God damn it. 
Okay, what else we got? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? No, none of those. I thought it was some other shit. Uh... Just another, ow, why would you? This is why the fat acceptance movement and the trans movement have, this is where they have overlap. <laughs> because you identify as a, because fat acceptance movement is mostly about the fat acceptance of like female fatness. And if you're trans and you're a fat, you already think you're a fucking woman. So, and because you're trans, you're gonna get way more sympathy than any, any fucking cis woman. So on top of that, like, if you, you're already deluded enough to think you're a woman, you're already in that headspace, so you're all, like, you think the fat that's on you is, like, like, oh, I'm just a fat, I'm just a healthy, fat woman. You don't see yourself as a fat man, but everyone else who looks at you sees a fat man because you were built like a fat man. That's, like, the trans community and the, and the fat acceptance community does have some overlap. Because like fatness is mostly like people can't don't really some I think a lot of people just don't pay attention to how like gender and fat uh, are different between the genders. So it's like you can delude yourself like like, like I said before like it's clever to make yourself so fat you can't see your bone structure <laughs> because people think this oh just fat is just fat you just a round shape that's it. But it's not true. You can carry it better. Uh, you can carry it diff differently from a man or from a woman. You can. Faded yellow M&M, $5 super chat. I laugh out loud every time I hear you say the name Gorlock the Destroyer. <laughs> Lamau, God bless Queen. God bless you too. Thank you. What's it gonna take to get you all alone? Also, he's got like the tits of a man. Let's not forget that. Like they're way they're they're those are some manly fucking tits. <laughs> Your rent too, Listen, you can call me a dude, tell me my chromosomes are XY, and tell me that my DNA will always be male. But guess what? At the end of the day, I'm still hot though. Listen, you can call me a dude, tell me You think it's like you point out the fact he wears pancake makeup that he would get an erection. <laughs> you think that's why he wears it? Like, oh my god, I get to look like a woman, and it, it, it and I can resemble pancakes. It's perfect. <laughs> oh boy, I'm already like, oh no, stop. Hang on, let's look at this one. Matthew! Okay, so we're gonna be doing a fit check today at my cousin's gender review. Look at Jenny's face. What is it? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? I'm wearing. Uh, Go I'm wearing, fast. I'm wearing some nice shoes and pink and a pink blazer from dark and a body suit from Sid. Okay, cousin, what are you wearing? What are you wearing, cousin? know he doesn't hang out with them too often <laughs> why be reminded of what you really oh shit why be reminded of what you really want to look like <laughs> Nike. Nike. <laughs> what are you wearing amy what are you wearing damn she's gorgeous jack diamond Two dollars super chat. Can't believe Crank from T TMNT has fallen so hard. And then you look at her. <laughs> I'm sorry, him. Now you look at him, and it's just like, oh God. <laughs> no, go back to the other chicks. They were attractive. Abby, what are you wearing? And why the fuck are you wearing this? You do not have female titties. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I knew there'd be something special about this video. I just knew it. As soon as I saw him posing, 
with two other actual women. And I was like, yep, <laughs> this is going to be funny. Oh boy. Oh my god. Burst. $2 super chat. Like comparing a Greek statue to a lump of clay. Yeah, just like, oh no. Why would you do that to yourself? It reminds me of something somebody said that. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's like someone saying, um, like, you shouldn't take a picture. With, uh, like, someone said, like, uh, I think it was like, um, like, Kevin Hart took a picture of uh, of himself with Shaq, and it was embarrassing because he is entirely too short to be posing in a picture with Shaq, and how that's... It's embarrassing and how you shouldn't do that to yourself. It was somebody. It, I think it's overlapping with another joke by another person, I think. Participating in this activity. Wait, what? Let's click on that. What the fuck is that? Besties. So, like, I'm just sitting here cruising, you know, hitting my puff. You know the vibes. And I was thinking, do you guys fucking remember that stupid vine? How does it go? It goes, it goes, um... Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. It goes. It goes. Oh, my God. The com <laughs> There's a comment in the comment section. The food, like, because the video is, the video is, it says just some food for thought. And in the comment section, it says the food is never just a thought. <laughs> Damn. I was born by the river. 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 I was born by the river. I was shaking that. Oh, so what? Oh, he was talking about vaping, and then apparently that's the dangerous thing that you shouldn't be participating. That's what that's what warranted a fucking warning in this video. Okay, oh, that was whack. By the time I graduated high school, I had sex with a couple of transgenders because the porn didn't. Wait, what? No, babe. If you wanted to break up, you could have just called me. It wasn't that serious. Oh, wow. I love how a guy admitting that he had a porn addiction and addiction to sex, possibly, I'm assuming from what he's saying. And like, this has got some, fu this, this fucking hefty <laughs> little, <laughs> oh my God, oh, I forgot the names of these characters from, uh, from, um, from uh, Nothing But Trouble, but like little Bobo, <laughs> this little Bobo looking bitch, fucking mocking him for it. Wow. Like he's probably talking, like he said, he's probably talking about having a, a sex addiction. Because if you remember the movie Shame, we knew that uh, Brandon had like uh, he had gone rock bottom when he started fucking men <laughs> because he wasn't actually gay, but because he's so sex addicted, uh, sex addicted, he actually surpassed his own fucking uh, sexual preferences. Like yeah, that's kind of fucked up. Don't. Why would you do that? <laughs> that's that's fucked up. That's not cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's enough. I can't, this is, oof, that's all I can do right now. I can't do anymore. <laughs> that's it! That is done. I can't, no, that's done. Yeah, her, his chiclet teeth are pissing me off. <laughs> Alright, I gotta rewind it, because, uh, I did, like, skim through this video, so I gotta go back. But yeah, basically, this is a video... We're basically compare where he's basically comparing the um discrimination of black people to the discrimination of fat people or how like the, the discrimination of fat people and black people overlaps for some fucking reason. We've heard all this shit before uh on TikTok, like those fat acceptance. The ever sensitive brigade. A trigger warning, anti fatness. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, we've seen it before. And this is a person who hangs out with you see the vi I don't know if you can see the video in the recommended, but he has a video with FD Signifier, our favorite guy ever. <laughs> He's hanging out with that crew. Oh wait, wait! Someone in chat said Henry VIII had gout. I think I, I think I might need that point later. Um, Miss Midnight, all right. I'm going to take a shower. 
I'll catch up with everything over the weekend. Good night, Jay and friends. Good night. But yeah, it's the same. Yeah, social justice warrior talking points. Blah blah. blah. Racism just like fatness. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's watch. Permanently offended is now upset at the critically acclaimed movie The Whale, starring the. Bel I will say that one thing about this guy though. His editing is actually top notch. It's great fucking editing. I'll never take that away from him. His, uh, in his brain though is gone. <laughs> Love it, Brandon Fraser. Multiple woke outlets and journalists just can't watch anything without being offended. It seems that in today's society, many people are quick to take offense at the smallest things. I feel like I do, Precious. No! <laughs> okay, but that was funny. That was, that was fucking funny. You can't say that wasn't funny. <laughs> who knows? She probably thought she was the actress who played Precious. Not everything is like, oh, she just thinks all fat black women are like precious. No, she probably thought, she probably thought she's the chick who played precious. You know what? Oh, I don't know her. Uh, that is Lizzo. She is precious, though. Lizzo's precious. That's like what I call her. Lizzo uh, is her precious. Is precious to me. Yes. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> no, Lizzo is precious. But that was fucking funny, so... I don't really nobody know. wants you, don't nobody need you. School ain't gonna help none. Take your ass down to the welfare. I'm learning my fat black beautiful business. <laughs> this video is brought to you by my streaming service, Nebula. And trigger warning, this story contains themes of body shaming, disordered eating, and anti-fatness. Yeah, I didn't need a trigger warning for all that shit. Uh... T. Uh, Gaiason, T. Gaiason, 435, 199 Super Chat. Is this guy a scholar at heart, too? I'm pretty sure you would probably call himself that as well. I think he would describe himself that way as well. I never thought it would happen to me. You see, I was the happiest kid. Mommy and daddy only kid. Which you would probably scoff at and subsequently call me spoils. But the thing is, I would agree. I never wanted nor desired. Everything felt in reach. It's like, basically, he tells, like, I want to fast forward past this, actually. Oh, and on, I man. might eventually, because it's just him going on and on about how he developed an eating disorder and basically how that's everybody else's fucking problem. But, um, <laughs> and, like, technically it is, but he's blaming, like, it sounds like he's blaming the wrong fucking people. He basically flat out says like he developed an eating disorder at the age of five. Now, I don't give a damn <laughs> how great you think your parents are. If your parents let you get that far gone where you're having a eating disorder at the age of five, uh, they fucked up. <laughs> they, they seriously were. Uh, basically, he talks about how his family was always putting him down for being fat, even though all the pictures that he shows, uh, he's not fat. Like, he shows one picture of him as an adult at his fattest or um, his most rock bottom or whatever, and he's got a pudge. He's got a fucking pudge. He's ne he's never been fucking fat, basically. He, like, he's been chronicalizing how, he, oh, I was such a fat bastard in my, in my family, blah, 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 blah. But your family were, like, if they were picking on you for being fat, like, here it is right here. Hang on. If your family was calling you fat over this... To the point where you had to, where you develop a, develop an eating disorder. They're probably just shitty people. <laughs> but instead of like making a video on how families can be very toxic and can give you disorders and give you complexes about the way you look, instead of doing that, let's just make a video about how being thin is rooted in whiteness and white supremacy. Because <laughs> God forbid, I actually can, I actually, I actually criticize my family. Like, outright. Uh, Escalcor? Wait, S... Escalcor? Oh my god. Is this, Bohe is this Bohemian Man? He's pretty okay. Not as bad as FD, thankfully, but like FD, he may avoid a subject that could ruin his point. Not as bad as FD goes, but yeah. But I've skimmed through this, though. And, uh... Eh, I think his points are kind of just as shitty. I think he, um, 
He get, uh, he he seems like the kind of type of motherfucker who gets away with it because his editing is so good and he knows how to he knows how to say things eloquently, and it sounds like he's done. Uh, he, that he has it sounds like he has a grasp on certain topics, but unlike, but like with FD, he's just a fucking idiot. <laughs> I feel like he just gets on camera and just starts talking. Meanwhile, this guy, you can tell he's scripting his shit. He knows what effects to put here, where, and like the editing is tight. He knows what he's he knows what he's doing, and that's kind of what makes him. Uh, it kind of makes his ineptness a lot. His, his inept, yeah, his inept is a a little less harder to spot. Yeah, basically saying, oh, I may have an eating disorder because I was, oh, I was losing so much weight, and my parents would call me fat. Like my family members would call me fat, but like he he seems to like shift the blame from his parents to society in white America, knowing damn well your parents are not white, bruh. <laughs> like, wh- where'd they get it from? They ain't from here. Where'd they get it from? Because they ain't, they ain't, like, what the, so what the fuck? Anyway. Like this. To be something as seemingly benign as fasting. But my struggle with fatness is a microcosm of something far greater. Far more insidious. And that is the rhyming of fat and black. I say rhyme (laughs) not only because, well, it's true, but because there's a unique and notable history surrounding the intersection of... (laughs) Great photos to show right here with the music and shit. (laughs) Big booty bitches. (laughs) <laughs> Are they a drain on society? <laughs> or a welcome sign of change? <laughs> fatness and blackness as experiences. Not only is anti fatness part of like anti blackness, but anti fatness is anti blackness. Because black people, like, what kills me about this argument, too, is like, you're going back and forth between. Oh, they just they thought we were just a bunch of mammies and shit. Like, but you're like, you're buying into it by saying that anti-fatness is anti-blackness. Like saying, like basically implying that fatness is synom- synonymous with us being black. Like there's so many fat black people. They, we, we basically are mammies and shit, right? Because <laughs> why are you saying that? Why? That doesn't make us look, that doesn't make us look good. Which is to say that if you are anti-black, you're also anti-fat. And if you are anti-fat, you are also anti-black. No. Put down your pitchforks. I would be remiss to be reticent towards the universal and pernicious nature of anti-blackness that permeates every... Yeah, universal, so I can cover my parents and their outlook on fatness. It's, it's universal. They, they got that... The, yeah, the, the, the anti fatness and white supremacist rhetoric they got it from the from the crackers all the way from the islands <laughs> somehow crevice of our existence but while fatness is not the same as blackness while fatness is not synonymous with blackness it you just showed a clip of a guy saying exactly that why are you <laughs> does rhyme for a reason without this discla- and why did you show a picture of this motherfucker Oh, why? Why? See, see what I'm saying though? Just because he has good editing doesn't mean he looks like a jackass. Here's the thing. Why show that picture of this motherfucker? It's just to stoke a reaction and to get like his engagement up because that's the only, that's the only reason you, you use that. You could use the, an actual picture of Michael Jackson when he was at his blackest, but no, you use a fucking guy who was threatening people on a train and who understandably got fucking choked the fuck out. You use that because, yeah, it's just, it's just to stoke a, re- a reaction. Shit like that is just to get you on his side. It's not because, oh, this is relevant to what I'm talking about. It's not. With that disclaimer out the way, I want to investigate the dissonance that, despite being black, and despite having oh, f- footage of Hitler, black people like Jesse Owens being touted for their innate 
athletic abilities by white supremacist scholars transforming into what we now see as Rogan marveling blackness today. He is one of the most impressive physical Rogan by white Jesse Owens being touted for their innate <laughs> athletic abilities by white supremacist scholars transforming into what we now see as Rogan marveling blackness today. He is one of the most impressive physical specimens I've ever. ever been in front of. He doesn't look like a real person. Fuck. Jacked. Yo, Romero's jacked. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> How that very. So you're telling me like. Like Nazi scientists or like white supremacists. Thinking that black people were innately athletic and bio were biologically superior athletically to white people and coming up with that racist shtick is the same as Joe Rogan admiring an athlete who happens to be black when Joe Rogan is also a fucking athlete so naturally he would fucking admire athletes who are good you see what I'm saying <laughs> like someone in the comment section was like oh this guy's not that bad he's bad he come on <laughs> Y'all know as soon as I start watching the shit, I like I pick up what you in the mo, which is fine. It's fine. I understand why people don't pick up on stupid ass statements from motherfuckers like this because, like I said, the flashy editing and the way they structure their scripts, like like he actually scripts his shit. He can actually turn a phrase, whereas FD Signifier sounds like a fucking moron every video he makes, and that's why it's more notice noticeable to pick up the bullshit. He can't. Propaganda can be very well. Uh, propaganda can be very well distributed. Can be very well said. But FD Signifier just not good at it. That's just that's the what observation it is. can come out the razor thin lips of white supremacists, and then be followed by remarks of black people being fat and lazy, as well as obtuse. Ergo yes, fat people. Yeah, that's 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 just been reserved for them. So the reason for our dependency on the state, as well as the supplication to the oppression of colonialism. I want to plumb the depths of the erroneous race science that allows for white revisionist historians to depict blackness as fat and indolent. Despite I mean, which is it? Like, do they think we're fat or that we're inherently athletic? Make up your fucking mind. Blackness being the buttress that built the United States on our box. I want to inquest into how fat went black and never came back. Just drink Coke, the road to won't be so. Uh, just because you have good editing doesn't mean basically he's editing the, oh, a reaction to this apparently this skit that he found that is mocking like how pro fat America is and how we will glorify like just basically eating a bunch of bullshit apparently that's confusing to him <laughs> apparently uh, uh, mocking our consumer you think someone who rolls with FD signifier would understand um, or would appreciate mocking consumerism, but no, he's confused. <laughs> he's genuinely fucking confused by this. We say we're woke. We oh yeah, I'll be less white. <laughs> Woka cola, <laughs> be less white. We say we're woke. We sell drinks that are smoke. Okay, what where's what what am I supposed to not like about this or find inaccurate? <laughs> Show where the lie is. You know, just put up a stupid fucking reaction gif. Point it out. Point it out. Fatness was 
wasn't always demonized. It was once considered the apex of beauty, health. Uh, yeah. And then we grew up and realized that was bullshit because people who got, because I think he points this out, like people who were fat and um, royalty, they would get the gout, like the gout was considered like a status symbol. But like, just like how we learned not, not how to heal people with leeches, we learned how that was complete bullshit. <laughs> What's your fucking point? And indicated an access to upper echelons of society. Many of Brendan Fraser's fans have proclaimed that this is the Renaissance, as the beloved actor has finally made his return to both television and the big screen yeah. after his long standing absence. While many watchers of Darren Aronofsky's The Whale took it as a character study, some activists felt that Frazier's portrayal in the psychological... Some activists, like, I'll fucking put stock in what they say once they actually take sh actual fucking problems seriously. ...drama was an insulting indictment on fat people. If you've never asked for a seatbelt extension on a plane, you don't get to decide if it's anti-fat. If you've never had to worry about this, the whether a chair holds you up, if you've never had a chair... The fact that you even get a seat extender means that you are really... You are being considered in society. You are being thought of. Like, here you go, you fat fuck. <laughs> like, it, like it, I mean, it's not ideal that you need a seatbelt extender. But that's your fucking fault. <laughs> like, that's your fucking fault, bitch. Don't be fat and you won't need one. <laughs> break from under you you don't get to decide if it's anti-fat this is one of the reasons why we hate fat suits is because it's subtly giving you the suggestion that fat is something you can just take off it is something you can just take off i mean it may be a lot slower than a fat suit than taking off a fat suit but you can take it off <laughs> what the fuck you think gyms are for it's making like look like fatness is something you can take off you can take it off you can take it off it takes like i said it takes a little longer but uh, you can take it off. Like, stop it. I don't have a zipper on my body. I can't take it off at the end of the day. Oh, and no shit. I can't. I don't have a zipper on my body. Like, like her disdain for fat suits don't make any sense to me. <laughs> I don't have a zipper on my body. Like, no shit. No fucking shit. Especially since you wouldn't be able to get one closed anyway. <laughs> I don't have a zipper on my body. Like, yeah, we know. We know. Every voice who writes about anti-fatness, everyone who's in a super fat position who talks and talks about it has been like, super fat. this is shit. This is degrading. Either I'm we don't watching care. this or I watched this and it triggered me. Entertainment. It triggered me. <laughs> it triggered my love for Oreos. Journalist and writer Katie Reif forewarned those on Twitter, which incited a hot debate on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Reddit. About oh no, Tumblr and Reddit. <laughs> what will they hear about this? <laughs> the outrage will be stupendous. The film, which film critics lauded as an award season winner. Okay. Since its release, however, watchers have criticized the movie's use of a fat suit and called it a caricature. What did you have on? You guys, your hands were big. On those, your body. those were those were those were like sleeves that came to the shoulder. There was a five point harness. Uh -huh. that had me strapped in uh, pretty, you know, once, once into it, I was in there all day until it came off. But the uh -huh. rule was with this yeah. is that the whole uh, look should obey the laws of physics and gravity because we don't see that in films. And yeah. I, I really looked. I really looked. I looked at what the Farrelly brothers did. I looked at what Mike Myers did. I looked at what Eddie Murphy did. And that's yeah. just in the last 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Anything before then... It's it's a cutout silhouette of a costume that's stuffed with uh, like batting, and it's right. normally just an athletic actor yeah. inside yes. the, the silhouette of a suit, yeah. and and it was all in service of just you know kind of a mean joke or a one note sort of shtick that I think we're better than self awareness intensifies. Like he's talking about comedies compared to the drama that he made, and he was basically saying it's almost like the person who made this video didn't understand what the hell he was saying. Like, yeah, we wanted to do it, like, respectful and not just as a joke. 
and he thinks is, oh, this is suddenly Brendan Fraser realizing he's being realizing self aware. Like you're, but you're joking too. Like when the fuck was this? You, when the fuck in this fucking movie was it a joke? For, was it was it used as a joke? But like fat people, my fat friends think it's a joke, so it is. Like, dude, you're already weak minded because, no offense. You are recovering. Uh, you are recovering from eating disorder. From an eating disorder, so it's very fucking easy to manipulate you into thinking that. Oh well, the my fat friends say that I wasn't really that fat, and I shouldn't complain. That was said earlier in the video when he was talking about his uh his um his ED journey, whatever. Oh, my friends say they didn't like this movie. Well, you don't have to think they're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah, a Fairly Brothers movie making fun of fat people or making fat jokes isn't the same thing as this dr serious drama. I don't know why you're conflating the two, but what? Okay. Uh, Sparks uh, 7907, two dollar super chat, two twenty super super, <laughs> super chat triggered her right into the Mickey D drive through. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw the whale. By the way, it was it was a really fucking good movie. There are those who live with this showing memes does not equal a point make a fucking point zombie chicks two dollars super chat brendan fraser looks overweight i don't get it uh no he's not fat enough he's supposed to be super fat and not just he is like skinny fat like this is what these motherfuckers say. i'm making i'm making a joke i'm f making it funny but this is this is what these motherfuckers actually say he's skinny fat he's not super fat like me he hasn't asked for a fucking seat so seat extender Forgetting the fact that th that motherfucker was really fat for a while until he started losing weight and getting his shit together because he was uh, grappling with like a sexual assault thing and he was going through a divorce. So he had a lot of fucking problems. He was all he was really fat at one point when he was in uh, you see like the first season of uh, Doom Patrol. That motherfucker was real fat. But see, they use this him looking the way he looks now as an excuse to go after him. <laughs> If he was still fucking fat like he was before, no one would have anything to say. Because he lost the weight. That's what they're fucking mad about. That he lost the weight. <laughs> That's what they're fucking angry about. That's what they're really mad about. And also, like I said before, memes don't equal points. Disease. And it was my obligation to, to be the voice. Katie began her tweet with the sentence, I can't recommend in good conscience that fat people watch the whale before adding that she definitely couldn't recommend that skinny people watch it either. Oh, she's a uh, critic for Rolling Stone. Like, a Rolling Stone is trash, so I don't really give a fuck. Since it reinforces <laughs> the notion that fat people are objects of pity who have brought their suffering upon themselves. Yes, they're not objects of pity, though. <laughs> yeah, you know what? They're right. That first part is actually correct. <laughs> At least if you're fat in America. Like, no, no one feels sorry for you through lack of coping skills. Because that second point actually um, reinforces the first one. Uh, Excuse me. They are object, they do this to themselves so they're not objects of pity. So yeah, like I said, the first first part actually is right. Oh God, hiccups, great. Oh my God, there you go. Dank, Sko uh, Dank Stoyevsky? Five dollars super chat. If they cast someone actually that obese, they'll run a real chance of hospitalizing them uh, while doing a fourteen to fifteen hour filming days. Exactly. You cannot hire someone who's actually seven hundred pounds to play a seven hundred pound person or a five hundred pound person. I forgot how how actually big he was, the, like the character was in the movie. But yeah, if you did that, like this motherfucker would. That's why a lot of, a lot of the time they don't hire trans people for trans roles. Like if they do like. Um, the origin story of a trans person. They're not, they probably won't hire a trans person because they would tell you like, oh, well, you got to go back to acting like you were before you transitioned. And that would probably cause some fucking dysphoria and having to relive, relive transphobia and all this shit. It's, it's a, it, 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 it's a thing. You know what I mean? Like it's too risky. And they're like, they're not going to risk their fucking production for your ass. Like this is not going to happen. That's why it's just easier to get straight actors to do that shit. Others, however, responded that fatness is a medical illness. And mm -hmm. 
and that the film accurately portrayed binge eating in a nuanced, emotional, and raw way. Media played a big role. Fat jokes on cartoons, on sitcoms and movies. People with obesity on, on, on these movies and shows, they were always the butt of the joke. I'm an obesity physician. Okay. What's your point? We need to actually have specialists as opposed to going. They got the same FD signifier like like video uh, uh, bullet points. Like he brings in experts that nobody fucking knows about or his fucking friends. <laughs> Who have the, the 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 right the correct opinions the the opinion the opinions that he de- deems correct, and it's like oh look see I'm right like no you're not <laughs> going to a general practitioner family just family doctor internist because what they'll say is you just got to eat less move more go on a diet go exercise they won't even look at the patient like your BMI is what let, let's just say high whatever it is and they'll say you need to lose weight. And they didn't even talk to the patient. And I hear this all the time. It's possible that the patient had already made a lot of effort to lose weight and they've already lost, it could be 100 pounds, and they might not even notice because the doctor just looks at the calculation without actually talking to the patient. As in all debates on social media, this one devolved from a conversation about their Aronofsky's performance of fat bodies into plain old anti-fat. But things weren't always like this. Recognition of fatness as a medical illness only antecedes to this century. And the idea of good and bad weight was about the mores and aesthetic standards of the time. Once, like, slavery became a thing, they learned that, like, it was no longer in vogue to, like, be fat or hefty. No, that's not why. (laughs) I fucking read an article or like some like some uh, historical thing, and the reason why fatness became less prevalent. Yeah, now I remember because during the Renaissance, everything was about decadence, about sexuality and sensuality, and the whole thing was that even this guy says it that being rot- a little bit more rotund showed that you were like uh, was considered to be healthier. You looked more sensual. And shit, like, yeah, you look at how thickness is, like, appreciated now. Like, and how pudginess in some women. Not fatness, but pudginess is appreciated in some women now. Where it was, like, seen as very arousing to be a little heftier than usual. And then we started to adapt more puritanical views. We started to clean up the whole decadent bullshit. The Renaissance faded. Plus more health uh, health advantages, more... uh, no health advancements, health advancements and shit. That's why. That's why. They, oh no! It's because of slavery. It's always because of slavery. Slavery. Ch- <laughs> oh my god! You know why we stopped using elephants as a form of transportation? Slavery. <laughs> you know why we invented the T, the Model T? Slavery. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, it all had to do, mostly had to do with the fact that we were cleaning up our acts as a society and like fatness became something like, I'm not even like fatness really is more like, um, like chubbiness. Cause you can't say like the same fat people now are the same fat people from the Renaissance era. Nah. But yeah, it's because we became more puritanical. We dropped that shit. And like, of course, health advancements, that type of shit. And it's just this garden variety waking the fuck up because getting the gout is very fucking painful. And I think anyone with a brain would be like, oh, yeah, that that's not a good thing. We, we shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> it's just like basically growing common sense, growing common sense, health advancements, and more puritanical views, and we like we just backing down on decadence what, uh, uh, in general. That's what that's all it was. It's not because oh yeah we saw some thick booty bitch, and then we were like nah. <laughs> Especially considering the fact that a lot of slave owners were fucking their slaves. I don't believe that. I don't necessarily believe because a lot of these mo- those motherfuckers were raping and fucking their slaves. So I don't think it was because oh they just weren't a tr- gross black people. Mm-mm. Now, bogged in the lurker, ten dollars super chat. These sorts of people are so afraid of being honest with themselves and others. Either make the effort to lose the weight, or just admit you don't care about being fat. 
These excuses are just pathetic. <laughs> Thank you. Fitness philosopher. Back in the day, everyone was poor and malnourished, so fatness uh, represented a uh, thriving and wealth. The rich man was always portrayed as fat 100 years ago in illustrations. Yeah. Because it would no longer be associated with wealth. And what it was was that they noticed, hey, I'm in power. I don't want to enslave people to look like me. Get the fuck out of here. This sounds it sounds like such a horseshit. So I'm going to demonize fatness, and then that led to fat pathology. Also, what society which society are we talking about? Which one? Amer like the what will become the Amer uh, America? We talking about Europe? What, what are we talking about? What society was like, oh, ew, black people, let's stop being fat just because black people exist. <laughs> that doesn't even sound anywhere. And who the fuck is that even talking? You don't even like show the credentials of the person talking. You don't fucking prove a fucking, see what I'm saying? Just because the editing is good does not mean what they're saying isn't bullshit. <laughs> and then like they basically started to scientifically associate um, fatness. Oh wow, just some random person with an avatar. Yay. I totally believe what they're saying is true because they have an avatar. It's with sickness is what it is. And anyone within proximity of that, it, um, i.e. like the, um, the working class, um, if you were fat or anything like that, you were considered to basically be like slave coded during that. <laughs> As like a, a blue a blue collar person, you were slave coded because that's a total, that's a phrase they used to use back then. <laughs> oh my god, that person is slave coded. That person <laughs> is nigger coded. <laughs> Get the fuck out of it. And the source, just tr trust me, bro. That's my source. My source is I made it the fuck up. <laughs> what? time it started to be aspirational to be as thin as possible all it is it's just like white people to be i'm pretty sure that picture predates what the fuck you're talking about wait what? hold on let me look that up okay lady let me look that up hang on a second shit lady writing Shell painting. The birth of Venus. Okay, when did the birth of Venus come out? Fourteen eighty five to fourteen eighty six. Now, I don't know if that was near in the Renaissance or not. But that was, that had to have predated fucking slavery. Didn't that predate slavery? I'm pretty sure, I know damn well it's before, oh, before we, <laughs> before we, oh no. People are slave coded. I'm pretty sure it was before that. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. Oh boy, but like I said, I'm pretty sure this predated because they're trying to use this as an example. Oh, people worshipped like thin white women after oh after slaves. Like, come on, bro. Aspirational to be as thin as possible. All it is is just like white people just trying to find ways to like justify them being in power. The human. Oh my god, and the source. Just trust me, bro. That's the source. Body has always been the subject of stigmatization but not in the way we think. Fatness is seen dependent upon gender. Think about how society treats fat women versus fat men. A fat woman is undesirable, but a fat man is Rick Ross. What? What kind of delusional bullshit are you on? Are you kidding me? This motherfucker said that fat men 
are <laughs> revered while fat women are reviled. Are you fucking stupid? Have you seen any males in these like these pro fat fucking ads like the Dove? Remember the Dove ads when they were incorporating fat women? Do you remember any fucking men being a part of that shit? That's just delusional. But hey, you talk to this person on fucking Discord, so I guess what everything they're saying is right. Keldridge, five dollar super chat coded is just woke speak for I want to engage in stereotypes without being seen as an istophobic. Not in the way we think. Fatness. Like, yeah, people will make fun of Lizzo, but she still like when people when she complains about anti-fatness, people take her fucking seriously. If Rick Ross complained about the same shit, which he doesn't, because he doesn't need to, because see the th that they they are equating male, what's the word I want to use, male stoicism with male privilege. They think because a man does not complain about shit, about the bullshit that he has to go through, much it must mean he has privilege. Like because he doesn't let it look like it gets to him, he has privilege. No. He just has a better fucking head. Well, I wouldn't say it, but like he may just be more stoic. And maybe like, and plus the world has not catered to him all his fucking life. So whenever he is slightly out of comfort or slightly uh, in discomfort, he doesn't go fucking bitching to ad agencies and to his boss. Well, people are being anti-fat to me. They don't have that luxury of complaining. That's why that's not a privilege. That's just a temperament. And sometimes it's a detriment to them. Sometimes. <laughs> oh my fucking God. <laughs> this scene depended upon gender. Think about how society treats oh, wait, fat wait, women versus God fat men. God damn it. A fat woman is- Hang on, back up. Um, someone said, didn't Rick, Rick Ross lose weight? Yes, he did. Yes, he did him. Um, Jonah Hill, he lost weight. Because when fat dudes get fat, they just lose the fucking weight, for the most part. They don't compl They can't complain. They can't go over and say, "Oh, anti-fatness." Otherwise, you get motherfuckers. It's the only reason why the guy we were talking about earlier, um, what was it? What was his name again? George. The only reason he doesn't agonize over his weight because he got a woman. Because he got a woman who's stroking his fucking ego. Who knows how long that'll last? But he's got a woman who is telling him that he's great and all this shit, and who is allegedly sexualizing him for his weight. So he's sated, he's fine. It's as much as, as fine as he thinks he is. So, and there's some dudes, like I said before, there's some dudes who just, all they need is a woman telling them they're doing okay, and they're doing good. And then, like, like I said, they're just, they're just sated. They don't give a fuck about anything else. And sometimes that could be, like I said, like male stoicism, that could be a fucking detriment to them. Because <laughs> sometimes the wrong bitch can come around and say exactly what you need to hear and then fuck you over while you're not looking. And when might, who knows, that might happen to that George dude. Who knows? Girl in a combo, 199 Super Chat. Bro, we have no problems making fun of Sam Smith. Exactly. But I bet you they'll make the argument, well, he's gay. He's woman-coded. <laughs> He's woman coded. So, you know, you're making fun of him because he's a feminine gay. <laughs> Dependent upon gender. Think about how society treats fat women versus fat men. Uh, um, sheep, uh, sheep, Poseidon, sheep, 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 I think that's uh, Robert Downey Jr. lost weight too. Well, yeah, but he wasn't like, he wasn't like obese. He wasn't like, he wasn't elephant size. That mo he just looked kind of pudgy. That's about all that was. Stigma. That was that was mostly drug bloat. <laughs> but not in the way we think. Fatness is seen dependent upon gender. Think about how society treats fat women versus fat men. A fat woman is under And why are you talking like you have something in your fucking mouth? Jeez. I gotta keep rewinding this because I keep commenting because of the bullshit. Fat woman versus fat men. A fat woman is undesirable, but a fat man is Rick Ross. Oh <laughs> and like, he puts up his hands like up oh, point. That was a point right there. That was a banger. No, it wasn't. You were fucking delusional. You were this got this fat bitch on the cover of sports sports uh, on uh, Sports Illustrated. 
And only a few people were talking shit. And what your one person was Jordan Peterson, because they always use that motherfucker as an excuse. Uh, for like, see, this is how men act because Jordan Peterson made a comment on Twitter. That's your fucking smoking gun? That's it? The thing is that men don't are not put up on this fucking pedestal and they don't complain about anti-fatness. Unless they're queer coded. <laughs> Prehistoric figures of women and I love how he makes that one fucking comment and that was like, oh, point made. Fertility goddesses like Venus were more curvaceous and larger. From ancient Rome to the Baroque period, the most beautiful women who were portrayed as being voluptuous. Yeah, voluptuous, not honkers. <laughs> not pork shoveling fucking honkers. Already, we're like, like, we're talking about, that's like Christina Hendrick, maybe like a little bigger than Christina Hendricks. That is not, that ain't fucking Lizzo. <laughs> All right, there's a difference between, there's a difference between Christina, somebody like Christina Hendricks. Uh, who else? There's a lot of like, there's not a lot of like just reasonable chubby chicks anymore. <laughs> They're all just honkers. Uh, there's a different, yeah, but there's a different difference between someone, somebody like, somebody from like, yeah, the Baroque period, Renaissance, whatever, and Christina Hendricks and Lizzo. Christina Hendricks fits that, like, even though she's still a little smaller than that, she still fits that aesthetic perfectly. Lizzo doesn't fit that shit. She's, <laughs> She's just fucking fat. Artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Rubens, Charles Menya, and probably even Zulix. Illustrated women in generous form. For men, however, things were a bit different. Hippocrates took painstaking caution to separate the large size of a male athlete from that of a fat man. I love how you're comparing two different fucking generations and two different fucking cultures. I get it, like, because isn't this like a Greek philosopher and the other guys you fucking mentioned uh, are not? <laughs> these are different generations. Why are you compare? Look at this. Why are you comparing these fucking people? They are not from the same generation, you dumb motherfucker. Anyway. Separate the large size of a male athlete. Yeah, they showed their men as like warriors and shit because weren't they? I mean, yeah. Why, el why else wouldn't they? They were like half of them, half of them were like were going around like fighting for their country and shit. And like, yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you want? Lead. From that of a fat man who was weighed down by fat rather than by his own strength. Sentient DLDO. They all the same. <laughs> same shit, Jay. They all white. Fatness itself was highlighted in male figures too, such as the Greek deity of wealth, Pluto, and most notably in Renoir's depiction of industrial barons. Plump bodies were associated with health, good social standing, and subsequently riches. During a time when foods... What, y'all mad it's not considered that now? Who gives a fuck? Scarcity was common, and famines were an expedited facet of life. But how do we get here? <laughs> well, beauty eventually represented slimness in the 20th century where images of both men and women alike were depicted as trim and slender throughout the media. As the decades rolled by, aesthetics took a lanky form in fashion ads with models such as Dawn Yale Luna, Twiggy, and the iconic heroine Chic brought on by Kate Moss, each of which called- Once again, different generations, motherfucker. Because right around the time Twiggy was relevant, I wasn't... Wait a minute. Because I think, when did Marilyn Monroe die? I just want to check. Marilyn Monroe. She died in uh, 1962. Okay. When was Timmy? Okay, so this is a little. This was a little bit after Marilyn Monroe. I just want to be clear. Okay. 
Heroin side. Like heroin chic in the 60s, not necessarily comparable because in the 60s, women were still reasonable looking. They were not like heroin chic. That was on a whole nother fucking level. That was basically uh, endorsing damn near anorexic bodies. You cannot compare these two things. The perception of fatness as the subject of ridicule, stigmatization, and otherness. Well, that supermodel, they have like a BMI of like whatever, 18 or, or something like that. They're on the risk of being underweight. And actually underweight, you see this huge increase. And plus, we've had this fucking discussion about models being underweight. Right around the time, like I said, I said this before in my Tess Holiday video that uh, Bill Clinton came out uh, warring against the fashion industry, saying that they were um, influencing girls to be anorexic, to be drug addicts, and all that shit. And they, he took him to task about that shit. And then from since then, we have changed our standards for modeling. So can you knock it off with this shit? Like this is oh my god! What did I transport to the to the mid nineties? It's in risk of mortality and, and death. So just being underweight can be very unhealthful. Losing their periods, low uh, bone density, increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, I love how he's got all these criticisms for thin people, but none for fat people. Oh, like they didn't even get the proper care. Uh, hi, Kira. Five dollars super chat. People live longer nowadays than. Uh, two to four hundred years ago, comparing the beauty standards is a joke. Yes, yes, it is. Based on kind of this ovarian, I don't want to say failure, but kind of based on not having enough. I don't want to say ovarian failure, but is that, if that's what it is, why are you afraid to say the word failure? <laughs> For the word failure, your your viewers might find the word failure very triggering, even though that's exactly what they are. Body fat, <laughs> breaking hips, and things They're like that. Failure. Weight is actually a huge increase of, of mortality. We've all heard at least one comment about why fatness is wrong in our lives, and have seen examples of bullying resulting from having a socially undesirable weight. With me, I have to like take a step back and like make sure that first and foremost, I'm not defining preferences the same way that these racist white folks have been doing it for mm. years. Oh my God. Mm. Oh, there goes the patronizing. Mm. <laughs> there goes the Jada Pickett Smith. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and at the same time, also, I, I can't have stand. I can't like six packs because white people are racist. To make sure that I keep an eye. <laughs> I can't like six packs because white there might there's a chance somewhere there's a, somehow that I am upholding white beauty standards because I like abs open to notice when that is being applied to me by other white folk there is more than one queer like which is it is it desirable for a fat person to be for, for a, a black person to be fat should we, we got a breakthrough away from the beauty standards or was it wrong or, or is like, was it stereotypical to depict us as black? Because keep in mind, like mammy statues and shit were a thing. Uh, uh, yeah, when they, when they used to make those fucking cookie jars of, of black people looking like, like I said, looking like with the mammy stereotype, all fat and round and shit. I mean, which is it? Is that a good depiction of us or a bad one? Make up your fucking mind. Dating slash. Are we breaking through European beauty standards with those with those with those mammy depictions, or what? Or is it bad? Like, what are we what are we doing? Took a back than grinder. The ones that I mostly use were growler, which is for for people who are who are looking for like bears and otters and like bigger type bodies. And then there's like bigger city for those who are like looking for bigger, bigger bodies city. in general. <laughs> oh, my first encounter back when I was like 24, 25. Okay, Sneaker Dudes, $5 Super Chat. I love how video essays uh, start at the beginning of time to justify their arguments and then hand wave all other history to get uh, get to current day. Yeah, it's annoying. I just moved out on my own, just, just created these profiles. Um, I was approached uh, through the DMs and Growler by, uh, by a muscular white dude who looked like he was twice my age. I wasn't feeling him. I didn't want to be rude when he messaged me, so I messaged him back, "Hey, sorry, you're not my type. I'm, I'm, I'm into bigger guys." And he messaged me back, and the way that he messaged me back was like, <laughs> "How bigger?" As if I offended him. <laughs> Fat phobia within the bear. Uh, like the also, how? Oh, so you just just 
predicted his tone of voice through a fucking text. Because that he's just fra- he's framing it this way for the sake of the video or because he's all up in his feelings about whatever the fuck. Uh, but yeah, you can't detect someone's tone of voice through a fucking text. He might have said how bigger because he was probably was trying to like bait you into, into some more flirting or whatever because he liked you. Like, uh, how much bigger? You know, like, you know, I can eat some more pie, you know. <laughs> I can eat some more pie. Like, I can gain a little weight for you. Shit. It could have been that, but, you know, everything is, everything's offensive. Everything, everyone's tr- out to get me. Everyone's being racist or fat phobic or something. Everyone, everyone's got an agenda. <laughs> Our community as well. There's some bigger individuals. Oh, Red Rose Spark, Vine Boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Who does, don't necessarily fit the bare definition or the, or the outer definition or the, or the ones with bigger bodies. And they are looked down upon as well. Fat phobia in a way that allows you to be it without saying that you are uh lord for chungus two dollar super chat clogged arteries are my culture <laughs> ones with bigger bodies and they are looked down upon as well fat phobia in a way that allows you to be it without saying that you are it's mm-hmm. like if, if you're part if you're part of the community you can't be because you are part of a community that naturally praises the praises these body types and everything like mm, that but okay. you're still very but you're still very selective stop fucking humming god damn that's annoying of who's allowed in the clubhouse mm, that shows I'm not listening <laughs> the 20th came the I'm just humming to give you appreciation because I know your your mouth is there's word there's sound coming out. But I don't know what the fuck is being said because I'm not paying attention. So I'll just be like, hmm. Implications of weight and its association with criminality and misbehavior. I've seen wait, wait, in Canada. Of who's allowed in the clubhouse. Along with the 20th century came the medical implications of weight and its association with criminality and misbehavior. What? <laughs> what? Uh, wait, fatness is associated with criminality. Really? When was this? As seen in Canadian doctor William Osler's Sea Sleep and Obesity, a statistical inquiry where he opined that obesity was the sole result of overeating and indulgence. Yes. And not exercising. I'm sure he he probably listed that too. Probably. Well, we'll never know because we're, go- we're getting this information through a fucking uh, YouTube essayist. <laughs> and that's just the early 1900s. It's only been recently that obesity was dubbed a form of disease with its unique pathophysiology. There are a lot. Oh, it's just recently, in like in 19 fucking 98. Was dubbed a form <laughs> of disease. Uh, National Institutes of Health has declared disease obesity with- a disease in 1998. Now, 1998 uh, was. How many years? Because I don't really feel like using my brain right now. <laughs> uh, 23. 25 years ago. Yeah, that ain't no, like, just recently. <laughs> it's unique. Poss- You're making it seem like, uh, oh, well, just in the past five years. Five years. In the past five years is, like, just recently. 25 years is not just recently. We're talking about a totally different fucking generation here. Ann Richards, 499 Super Chat. Those who are constitutionally very fat are more apt to die quickly too, than those who are thin. The philosopher Hippocrates... Hippocrates, oh my God, Hippocrates was fat phobic in 400 BC. Go physiology. There are a lot of big jacked bodybuilders who will be the ones that will say how obesity isn't healthy. And I'm like, my buddy, (laughs) (laughs) my buddy, you're not healthy. (laughs) It's like, dude, you you got sleep apnea because you're huge. Expectation, you're going to have all these women (laughs) and the real. Yeah, all bodybuilders are unhealthy. This is what this guy is saying. Because he wants to simp for... for wait, I have a feeling. This is just me. Like, motherfuckers like him who are thin, who just simp for the fat acceptance movement, just really want to bang a fat person. <laughs> it's like people who simp for trans people and shit. Because you're just too... A little too fucking agreeable. Reality is a bunch of men in my DMs. Gout! The oldest noted type of arthritis has had a very- You're unhealthy too because you lift weights. You're so big though. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not like fat, big. like how, just, I'm not saying that anyone who's thin is completely fucking healthy because that's not true. 
But unless they're taking steroids and just overdoing it, how are they unhealthy? You're not going to explain that. Vivid history with depictions and writings dating from the 5th century. Once called the King's Disease. Lord Fortungus, $2 super chat. I've never seen a police chase involving a fat dude. Yeah. Due to its affiliation with alcohol and access to copious amounts of food, gout is now understood, however, to result from uric acid metabolism rather than class. Yes, because that's what science does. It provides explanations for things we would not have had before. All of these things tie into why fatness is such a sensitive and nuanced topic. Unlike heart disease or diabetes, fatness is something that can be witnessed, which is why people find it so easy to use someone's size for ridicule. And he yeah, that's usually how roasting works. <laughs> you find something like vis usually visibly wrong with someone and then attack it. Yeah, that's how making jokes sometimes works. Like insult humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. <laughs> Even though the literature may dictate that certain diseases like gout are due to one's body rather than their weight, medical professionals still have preconceived notions about fatness that results in mixed diagnosis, harm, and indifference that prevent healing. So there's nothing more we can do if you don't change your eating habits. I have been working hard towards it. Oh my God, are you seriously gonna fucking defend these motherfuckers? <laughs> Oh, what an anti-black doctor. Look how he's attacking this poor black woman. Look how he's attacking Precious. <laughs> like, are you really going to tell me that her eating habits have nothing to do with her being like 600 pounds? Are you really going to tell me that? And I like, I wouldn't take his advice on like healthy, healthiness anyway, because he just said, he just admitted he's got an eating disorder <laughs> in the beginning of his video. What the fuck should we listen to you either? You work hard to show. You over out here saying that fatness is equated with anti-blackness and fatness really just isn't that bad. It was associated with wealth. I mean, what else do you want? Go on this scale, but you put on almost. I love the fact we are getting through this video pretty damn quickly. We're already a little, a little more than halfway through, which is a good thing. Because because of the editing, we're like. It's snappy. Three pounds since you arrived instead of precious the hut. Oh my god! That you're not eating very much, really. Dusty molasses. Uh, this woman actually had fast food smuggled into her room, but not. But not, dusty molasses. That has nothing to do with anything. The fact that she would even point that fact out is anti-blackness. <laughs> I've been through this since I was 15 years. I've been through this since I was 15 years old. Oh. <laughs> if you have been through that and you know what's wrong with you, then you don't need our help. I do need help. Okay, do you think I'm stupid? I don't well, understand that when you send me back home. Send me back. Like just because he is stern does not mean he's anti-black. Or that he, oh, he's not trying to understand her plight. No, he does understand. That's why he's talking through her bullshit. Because he does get it. You think he hasn't worked with these motherfuckers? Look how old this nigga is. He's been working with these motherfuckers for, for decades. He knows all the bullshit because you have an addiction. Pro like It's like saying, oh, you just treat all addicts, all meth addicts the same. <laughs> just, because, just because a meth head has acne does not mean that the acne is due to his meth use. Okay, it could be because he likes chocolate, okay? You don't get it, okay? You know how much shit I gotta I read before I go to the doctor to arm myself when I'm in that room? Because if I go in there and I don't have anything to argue with this person about You go in wait you go into a fucking doctor's office ready to argue with them with someone who actually has an education. <laughs> now I'm not saying that doctors are always right, but the fact that he arms himself so he can be ready to argue with people. Like you are you sound like a fucking joy to be around. This guy with a PhD, you don't know what the fuck. I already decided he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I'm going in there. <laughs> or argue with this. I'm going to go in there with a fucking binder <laughs> of health, of medical facts. And I'm going to get his ass. But see, that's why like people encourage getting a second opinion about shit. Even a doctor would recommend getting a second opinion. So I don't know why you're trying to act fucking 
uh, I, why you, I don't know why you're trying to be up your own ass with doctors. <laughs> like, what? Why? This person with, I might not be successful. Thing. After a year of trying, you haven't lost anything. So at this point, it's clear. You don't really want to do this. For a little while, I had a doctor who was also fat. It was so great. She actually listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I cried after the... Oh, uh, you had a doctor who was also fat, but, you know, you're still fat. <laughs> We're so inundated with messages about hating bodies that it's it's like your first language because it's been taught to you from childhood people think about fat people as failed thin people the notion that there is yes yeah and thin people are failed fat people right they've been usually people who are thin like oh damn i oof, i failed being fat i actually instead of eating a whole sleeve of cookies at 9 a.m. I put it the fuck away and instead, I don't know, had a fucking one granola, gr granola bar instead. I thought, oh, I suck at fatness. I just suck. <laughs> An acceptable default. And the, the idea somehow is that if we're not that, that we're defective. What in the world is going on with you? Uh, I guess I'm eating wrong things. <laughs> you think it's funny? You have a gastric bypass. I had a gastric bypass. To yes. lose weight. To lose weight. And you're not losing weight. I don't eat a third what I oh, ate before I had that question. surgery. Okay. Then you're we're not talking about that. You're asking me questions that I don't understand no more, and you understand. You're playing this kind of game, and you think that's like they're showing these clips as if I'm supposed to think he's a villain. Are you fucking serious? And I bet he, uh, I'm betting because someone in the chat already fucking said that the last chick smuggled McDonald's into her fucking room. So, um, I guess he expects his his crew because, like I said, all all this anti fat stuff is so triggering. So I don't watch it. So naturally, they're not going to know the context of any of this shit. So it's very easy to manipulate the people who already are going to agree with you anyway. It's okay. I don't want see somebody. How I'm playing any game. I throw up constantly. I eat what I can keep down. That's how it works. You're not eating, and you gain. I don't want to get malnourished either. Do you look like you are malnourished? Go to her. <laughs> no, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna finish with you. No, we're not finishing with me. You're making me mad. Sit leaving. down right there. Okay, someone tell me the context of this episode because I'm pretty sure there's more to it. I throw up everything I eat, but your lap, but your. Gastric bypass. Wait, did he say his gastric by bypass didn't work? I throw up everything, but see it. And I love how, like, oh, he's showing this, like, to show that the doctor's an evil bastard. But he, this motherfucker right here says, I throw up everything I eat because you probably are overeating. It's, a tr it's, it's to shrink it. Like, the, the whole surgery is to shrink your stomach. So you're probably overeating and then throwing the fucking shit up because that's usually what happens when you overeat. You throw up. I can't keep anything down because you're probably fucking overeating, stupid! More than you understand. You're playing this kind of game. Uh, Dank Stoyevsky, $2 super chat. Nothing in the Hippocratic Oath says to be nice. Yeah, true. And you think that's okay? I don't want see somebody. How I'm playing it. Caleb Sieber, I eat till I puke. What's the problem? The game, I throw up constantly. I eat what I can keep down. That's how it works. You're not eating and you're getting out. Dusty Molasses, my guy was overeating even after he had the gastric bypass, I believe, uh, Jay Longbone. Yeah, figures. Because I, I don't watch this shit because, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to uh, get mad. Reality shows just aren't my jam anymore. They used to be. They're not. Not anymore because... Mostly because I don't have like cable like that. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, like yeah, when he as soon as he said or she, I don't know if that's a guy or a girl. I can't. He's so fucking fat. I can't tell. <laughs> uh, they said I, I I can't even keep anything down. I throw everything up. Yeah, because you're overeating. I bet money that you are fucking overeating. <laughs> malnourished either. Do you look like you are malnourished? Go to her. No, no, no. Lord Fortungus, two dollars super chat. Bruh, some patients from my hundred, uh, six hundred pound life literally die. We're gonna, we gotta finish with you. No, we're not finishing with me. You're making me mad. Sit down right there. You just sit down right over there. No. That doctor, despite 
Lord Fortungus, that's a female. Oh, damn. <laughs> Treating those specific patients is the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. everywhere. <laughs> the fact that he holds them accountable for overeating is just anti-blackness and anti-fatness. Just like, yeah. Yeah, we kind of lost the plot. Where's the anti-blackness come back into in play? Yes. <laughs> I've come in for this chronic pain. You told me to lose weight. And you lose, and you use this fucking shit. We're, like you're supposed to be talking about how doctors, how people usually have certain problems they, they need to, to have taken care of. But then the doctor hyper focuses on their fucking weight and disregards the other problem altogether. That was the framing for this. And now you use it, but you use a fucking clip from my 600 pound life, which is all about weight loss. <laughs> it ain't nothing about nothing but fucking weight loss. He's a weight loss doctor. Oh my God, see what I'm saying? Good editing does not mean good video. I want y'all to learn this. I want y'all to re fucking remember this shit. I lost the weight, but I'm still having chronic pain. And then you actually decide to do the test and you find out that it was X, Y, and Z. So you mean to tell me that this particular problem that I've, that I've apparently had for years, that's not linked to lost the weight, but I'm still having chronic pain the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. everywhere it's just like yes i've come in for this chronic pain you told me to lose weight i lost the weight but i'm still having chronic pain and then you actually decide to do the test and you find out that it was x y and z yeah they're kind of like like sh like lose the weight and then come back and then we'll do another fucking thing now that is a way that for them to just get your money on top of everything but they're also testing to see, okay, let's get rid of this obvious fucking problem first. And let's see if that has anything to do with it. And then they came back and they did the test. They, so they did do the test anyway. That looks like to me they were eliminating, they were proce uh, doing process of, uh, uh, process of elimination. Because if they had done the fucking test and they just got rid of your chronic pain, you wouldn't have any more, um, you wouldn't have any more, um, what do you call it, um, motivation to lose any fucking weight because like i said health care is not just for you to get get fucking band-aids on fucking shit that doctor fucking helped you whether you want to believe it or fucking not like it is like a low-key scam to like get you to keep coming back to the doctor's office because you know that money but at, at the same time it's like yeah we need to eliminate this huge fucking problem just to see if that is a, even a problem. And then they had you, you come back and they gave you the test anyway. What are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? <laughs> so you mean to tell me that- Now to be honest, like yes, there are, um, there are hospitals or doctors who are just, they overextend their fucking ability as doctors and they're just idiots. But like it's that, but that's like in every fucking profession. Like there's every prof there's always gonna be a profession where there's there's gonna be idiots, of course. But you're acting like this is all all doctors. Like it's basically how oh this is just the medical industry. You're just hyper fixate on your weight as if that my weight has never been a problem. Like get the fuck out of here. At this particular problem that I've that I've apparently had. For Sleep paralysis at the wheel. Medicine is often process of eliminating. For years, that's not linked to, that wasn't linked to my size at the time, could have been properly diagnosed. At the time. If your Notice he said at the time. First instinct wasn't to tell me to lose 50 fucking pounds. And where did you have this chronic pain? Because if it was in your joints, I would have told your fucking ass to lose weight too. Where was this chronic pain? Because if it was in your bones... He, I, I love how he doesn't disclose that information. <laughs> he says, oh, I just had chronic pain and he told me to lose weight. Where though? Was it in your shins? Was it in your, in your knees? In your legs what's right, or in your back? Because I would have told you a fucking big ass to lose weight. <laughs> Let's lose that weight first so we can attack that problem later. And like just uh, due process of elimination, like I said. But he doesn't disclose that because, of course, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm so motherfuckers like this never tell the truth. Like fat, like fat motherfuckers will never tell the truth about how their actual hospitals, uh, half hospital visits go. It's always the doctor's fucking fault. Everyone's out to get me. 
my addiction isn't killing me. <laughs> this, this is the doctor that wanted to kill me. He's asked, told me to sh shrink down to a small size. I could die. <laughs> So thankful oh, for my doctor because he didn't gamify it for me. He just let me know you're in hypertension level two. Oh, so hype hypertension. You mean hypertension? Really? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let, let me rewind that. Let me rewind that. Lose 50 fucking pounds. I'm so thankful for my doctor because he didn't gamify it for me. He just let me know you're in hypertension level two. In order for us, in order for us to actually proceed with this, we have to get you back in the green. Because hypertension, hang on. Hypertension causes. High blood pressure. I looked up causes for hypertension and like uh, and the first fucking result is high blood pressure <laughs> ah, because your weight has nothing to do with high blood pressure <laughs> my new doctor is smart he told me i had hypertension and that has no, this what i fucking tell you they never are fucking honest about this shit ever it's just like the meth thing. I, I like. To, I made this joke in, like I said, in my test holiday video, where I said, um, I made this joke that, oh, I, I came into this hospital to get my sores and hallucinations looked at, not, not to be judged about my meth addiction. Okay, get it straight. Like that's that. That was the joke. It is basically saying that these motherfuckers are so delusional. <laughs> And so fucking, <laughs> and so they're so deluded that they don't think that their health problems could have anything to do with their weight. Nothing. And that, like, that's 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 what basically the joke means. So like, I came in to get my hypertension fix, not. To lose 50 pounds. <laughs> like that's what he, that's exactly what the fucking scenario he is playing out. It's the joke. It's the same as the joke. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, what an asshole. Because the tea is only going to raise your blood pressure higher. And that's going to increase your risk of like heart attack. It's like, I'm glad he wasn't that asshole. Yeah. Because he, under, he. <laughs> I'm glad he wasn't. I'm glad he he didn't tell me, he didn't tell me to lose weight. No, we just need to bring your high cholesterol down. How did how did he bring your how does this doc this other doctor your good doctor bring down your uh, high cholesterol? How did he advise you to do that? I, I listen with empathy, and he understood what I was going through. Just and coddle no, when it, when someone says just listen to me with empathy, that means coddling. You got high blood pressure because you're fucking fat, you bastard. <laughs> And that urged him to help find like a, a combination of blood pressure medicine that actually. Oh, uh, and so he just took a bunch of blood pressure medication. See what I'm saying? That doctor is was worse for you than the other one. It's because that doctor had you figured out, could have had you figured out in two visits. Two visits. And you probably would have only had to take maybe like one medication for like a little while. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this shit, but I'm just saying. But this motherfucker came in and he treated you with empathy. And now you're taking several medications for something you could probably only take maybe one, not even if that, just from losing fucking weight because you're a little baby. Because <laughs> you don't want to hear that you got to lose weight. Shut the fuck up. See? I, now I'm taking several medications because I have a good doctor. <laughs> I gave him so much of my money. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! You got took! You got took, nigga. Slate Rock, I'm glad he lied to me so I can sleep at night guilt free. Yeah. Red Rose Spark, I'm glad he's he's not the doctor who tells you the truth. What is what is wrong with your health? Oh, it tells you the truth about what's wrong with your health. 
Lord Four Chungus, five dollars super chat. Related conditions to hypertension include heart attack, coronary artery disease, stroke, congest congestive heart failure, and cardiac arrest. What, what also? What other disease is connected with these things? Obesity. <laughs> Fucking weight. Oh, thank you, Lord Four Chungus, for that. Thank you. Oh my God, this fucking asshole. These people like this, because they're no different from any other addicts. They're no fucking, because addicts of any kind make these same fucking excuses. They're no different. They're, they're the same asshole. <laughs> but look at me with empathy. I just need a little bit of crack to get through the day. Come on, man. Just look at me with empathy. <laughs> Getting off the drugs and coming down off, it's going to hurt. I don't want to go through that. Oh. This is cute, guys. And it was just like, it's like, <laughs> this, this is how doctors are supposed to be. <laughs> Thankfully, with not. Oh, wow. Um, Escalor. Oh, es Salcor. Oh, my God. Uh, now he's stuck on meds instead of having gotten work done uh, to not be relying on it. Yeah. Like I said, he got took. Doctors, like, just like with the uh, abundance, the overabundance of like trans diagnose, uh, like a uh, transgender diagnosis. Instead of like treating the dysphoria head on, they just say, oh, just get a transition. Because that that because that because puts more money in their fucking pocket. Why don't they just uh, get therapy and just talk through it? Probably get on, maybe get a little medication for something, but who knows? No, don't do that. Just get uh, constant surgeries <laughs> and put money, get me a Benz, bitch. <laughs> Whatever doctor tells you that they are going to look at you with empathy, they're trying to get your fucking money. They want you. They want your money. They do not give a fuck about you, you idiots. Uh, Dank Stoyevsky, uh, five dollars super chat. That doctor made me more uh, made more on the insurance payout on that treatment than if he was just uh, just honest though. Gotta love American healthcare. Exactly. Just a fucking moron. This guy. Jake Bob and Wright, uh, it amazes me with how people like this just want to be told what they want to hear and the doctor's trying to save your evil now. I also got my first car. Oh, congratulations, Jake Bob and Wright. And yeah, true. Just, oh my God. These, all of the shitty doctors that we, that we usually as a society weed out, they're going to make so much money off you dumb motherfuckers. They're going to make so much money. <laughs> Ooh, they're going to be rich. <laughs> Driving around in fucking Lambos because y'all are dumb and sensitive as fuck. I can't, ooh, and I wish I could feel sorry for you niggas. Shout our fingertips. Things have finally progressed to where most of us have heard about anti fatness and its harmful effects. Scholars, sociologists, and fat activists have all brought to light what. Oh, this is. <laughs> Thank you for that screen, crack, screen cap. I, I mean, that. Oh, wow. <laughs> We needed to see that. Yes, the many insidious ways it's been perpetuated and how it intersects with both race, class, and gender. When I started weight loss, Thanks I... for waiting to the last, uh, what, 13 minutes of the video to actually uh, tell us how that ties in. I started doing it for myself. I wanted more energy. I wanted my health back. My doctor had told me that I was gonna get diabetes. As I lost that weight, they don't tell you that the whole world around you changes. People on the streets started stopping to say hello. People wanted to be my friend, like random people. Um, the guys that would like reject me or like ignore me as if I was not there were now like trying to buy me drinks. Yeah, cause you look better. How the fuck you think dating works? People want to fuck who they're attracted to. Big fucking surprise. I even changed my relationship with my family. They were like more excited to see me. Um, for the first time ever, my grandma took a picture of me and I remember that day because it made me cry. And she was like, oh, me flaca, my skinny girl. Like, I want a picture of you. And she's never taken a picture of me ever. She's proud of you. Just accept the W and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jesus. I would come over to my family's house and they were like, do they say, do parents say, sir, say certain shit in like, in a, like not offensive, but in like a, uh, <clears throat> in like a kind of insensitive way sometimes. Yeah. But the emotion of what they feel for you is still going to be there. <laughs> what do you want to eat? Like, what can I make you? Like your favorite? 
And it's so crazy because when I was way bigger, it was like, hey, like stop eating or make yourself something. Yes, because you ate to excess and then you became bigger. So, but now that you are thinner, she knows that you're not going to hurt yourself with food. So there's, so she's like, oh yeah, come on, come on, have some of this pie, shit. Because I know you're going to work it off later, right? <laughs> I know you're going to get off your ass and work that shit off, right? That's why. Oh my God, this is not fucking rocket science. Eat or I, I felt like I didn't matter. I was getting better job opportunities and I don't know, it's like everything around me was perfect. That okay. messed me up because- <laughs> Of course, I'm still complaining. Uh, Adam Milan, uh, 250 RSD. It's always great waking up to Jay talking down smug, redacted, <laughs> uh, talking down smug, uh, uh, smug, redacted, uh, oh my God, smug people. Taking, uh, taking the smug people down a peg. Keep up the good work, or at least as much as you can get away with on YouTube. Thank you. I love how, like, motherfuckers, this is why I can't stand this generation. You, you got everything, and then you're still fucking upset. Your your fucking your fucking family's proud of you. People are you're getting you're getting dick now. <laughs> you you get you got a job and you still find a fucking problem. <laughs> Every, everything is perfect, but oh, <laughs> get fucked, get fucked. You got a lot more than a lot of people. Grab onto that shit and don't let go. Appreciates. I no longer was doing it for myself. Like I was scared that if I gained the way back, that everyone would hate me again. Uh, that's no. It sounds like you were doing it for yourself, for the satisfaction of having a better life. <laughs> that's not doing it for other people. That is for you, you motherfucker. Oh fuck. Oh god damn it. I f after that, after being treated different, like you feel like, oh damn, I was hated. But with that, I tell you, I developed an eating disorder. I was scared to gain that weight back. Um, I. You should have gone to a shrink as soon as you had these feelings of self loathing. It's not because, oh, no, I, no, I gained a, a eating disorder because it's bad to be thin. Because fat, because fat, uh, fat uh, because um, we just hate fat people. No. Because you had a lot of self-loathing. You hate yourself. And you need to get that fucking fixed. But instead, it's, it's society's fucking fault. Oh, God. Like I said, these doctors are getting rich off you motherfuckers. Getting rich. When society crumbles and we all broke, the only people who are going to be left afloat are fucking Hollywood celebrities, politicians, and sh shrinks, and, gen and gender-affirming doctors. And that's it. <laughs> Everybody else going to be fucking broke. Everybody else gonna be in the shit in Shitter's Alley. Was trying to eat as little as possible and work out as hard as possible. It really messed me up because as soon as I started eating like regular, like trying to like introduce regular foods back into my like lifestyle, I gained it all back. I gained every single pound back. In order to grasp how fat phobia has emerged. One has to acknowledge the intersection that fatness and blackness occupy in the demonization of black bodies. Thinness has been deeply rooted in anti-blackness. You haven't explained why yet. And I'm sorry, that whack-ass explanation from earlier is not good enough. It's actually really flimsy. <laughs> Very flimsy. A concept so eloquently addressed in the award-winning study, Fearing the Black Body. Oh, this fucking book again. <laughs> The last time I heard about this book was in that blue-haired bitch was talking about it on TikTok. Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by sociologist Sabrina Strings, who chronicles that the obsession with bigger figures and how fatness has been used as a tool during the Renaissance, the transatlantic slave trade, the civil rights era, and even provides a modern critique on whiteness views on bigger bodies. She poignantly notes that institutionalized fat phobia in the medical industry. Notice how she's not fat. <laughs> and the deep seated idea of curbing fatness for public health relies on the same Now keep ideologies. in mind that fucking chick from earlier, the redhead chick says, if you're not fat, you don't get to talk about anti-fatness, unless you're black. Then I'm gonna, gonna shut my, my white ass mouth. <laughs>
words that race scientists use to associate it with idiocy and weak constitution. Mm-hmm. Her book guides readers from the inception of race to colonialism, medical fascination with fatness, and to the modern era with a comparison of the media's wielding of fat phobia and anti-blackness. The racial hierarchy, she argues, uses fatness as a means of othering black people and its association uh-huh. with black women yeah, just in black particular. People. This is not like racism. It is racism. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness. And, th- and this first example is a white girl or at least someone who isn't black. Thank you. <laughs> The reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness. The re- <laughs> so, all right. See, here, here's, here's, I've already figured it out. This is why they think it's rooted in whiteness. Because when you are thin or thinner or you're pretty or good looking, you're automatically treated better than other people. So if you have an advantage over other people, that clearly, that is... That's immediately rooted in whiteness because they already think white people on g- generally on, on, on mass have better lives than everyone else. So whatever advantage that you have, because whiteness equal to them, whiteness equals it immediately equals advantage. So whatever, like I could have, I could have a, let's just say, let, let's say I have like a 4k curved television with perfect sound and perfect and perfect color and shit and then like some joe schmo fuck across the street uh still has the same flat screen he had from 2013 now according to these neurotic fucking morons i have my having a better tv than that person is rooted in white supremacy (laughs) it's rooted in whiteness it's whiteness because i have something I have an advantage over someone else. That's how, um, that is how retarded these people are. That's how fucking preschool this way of thinking is. You have more than someone else. That's rooted in whiteness. You can read. That's whiteness. You have money. That's whiteness. You have a job. That's whiteness. (laughs) Everything is white when it's a good thing. And everything black is bad. Because it's a bad thing. <laughs> and they don't see how <laughs> and they don't see how they're being like racist or un- completely unhelpful to the people they're defending. It's funny. It's funny. It's why I don't I'll never take these motherfuckers seriously. I'll never fuck with them. Ever. <laughs> they're fucking a lost cause. Like even if they don't believe what they're saying, you still perpetuating this shit because you need to hold up the grift. So either way, I'm not fucking with you. I, I just can't do it. You just need to be laughed at and move and just move the fuck on. Reason why- uh, hang on a second. Luke's television review, $5 super chat. What's with those Where's Waldo glasses? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. All these TikTok chicks, they're always wearing that shit. Why people hate fat people is because people hate black people and <laughs> Wait, what is it? proximity to whiteness. The reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Being fat is seen as bad. So that's black. That those must be root that must be associated with blackness. People see being thin as good, so that has to be associated with whiteness because people see whiteness as good, or at least I do because I'm projecting. Um, <laughs> this so like, how do you think this and not think, oh fuck, I got problems. I have I have a preschooler's outlook on the world. And appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness, especially black women, and that's why they're discriminated in the workplace, um, overly sexualized, and this has gone back. You're basically for saying, oh oh, I see black women as mammies, and that's like that that's that that no, but that's the white man's fault. That's society's fault. I associate fatness with black women. And like the mammy shit, so that is society's fault. Though I think that though, that's not really my fault. It doesn't say anything about me. 
centuries and centuries. I'm also glad we're almost done with this video. Oh my God, I'm so glad. Systems of oppression, capital. Uh, Lord Fortune gets five dollars super chat. They said Black Lives Matter. They never said Black Health Matters. True. <laughs> Capitalism, sexism, racism, it all comes back to white supremacy, which is the foundation of the fabric of America and rules every sector and aspect of our society. Prior to the transatlantic. Oh, shit. Calderon? Calderon? I wasn't picked, so let me be extra loud and vaguely racist about it. <laughs> Slave trade. White women prized plumpness above all else. As the African presence grew in Europe, the immediately. Notice how none of these slaves are fat. Uh, it looks like they got the hint about whiteness before even getting on the boat. <laughs> look at that. Look how all these slaves are just so fit. Did the colonialism hit them? Before, like, be hit Africa before the slave trade? Maybe. <laughs> Clenched a tight fist like Arthur around what it meant to be aesthetically pleasing. Artists emphasize African subjugation by portraying black women as frail, sickly, and incredibly thin. Slavery and the new world meant new fashion, exotic fruits, and delectable sweets in the form of white gold, sugar. Its introduction into the diets of European women began to make their masculine counterparts incredibly anxious about fatness and desirability. Strings then specifies that the enlightenment is the first time that fat is out and thin is in with male members of the intelligentsia, William Shakespeare, Rousseau, Descartes, pinning that excessive consumption equaled a lack of intelligence and morality. <laughs> German princess Elizabeth Charlotte most notably described herself as having a monstrously wide waist and being square as a cube. Race then comes in around the same time. You see, remember those race scientists I mentioned? We know them as being absolutely idiotic, pseudo-intellectual dunderheads. But in the late 17th century, they were brilliant. White men like George Louis Lecoff and Julien Joseph Vairy tied the sin of gluttony to the African body who was idleness from the tropics. They believed made them inferior, which is Citation? pretty ironic. Given that portrait citation, Savari show him to be a person of size himself. I digress. Vary most notably described apes as being the root of the human genus. In his proposition on human evolution, he notes that the African was merely the second step in obtaining true intelligence and humanity. It makes me sick even saying it. From the orangutan to the hot knot bushman to the most intelligent Negroes, and finally, to the white man, he writes. One passes indeed by almost imperceptible nuances. Thin physiques then immediately moved from the sickly to the reason for the white man's inherent dominance of the earth, supported by writings by faux anthropologists and biologists who built the racial totem pole with themselves as the apex. As a result, African women of the time with but like weren't the slaves who came <clears throat> came here fucking fit I'm sure they didn't like models but they weren't fucking fat so it's really just like, like what because I don't believe for a because they didn't have sugar like like we did here so they wouldn't have been as fat as us so, like I said, I just don't buy this because he doesn't really provide citations for anything. <laughs> Their curvy bodies and fetishized looks are deemed grotesque and animalistic. They weren't the only one. Laura Hugel, I have to go, I have to go now. Have a good streaming, Lauren. Uh, goodbye. But we're, yeah, we're almost done here, though. I guess we have six more minutes. People of color in other regions were also given similar treatment. In her memoir... Lady Wortley Monacue condemned the fleshy and sensuous figures of Turkish women to endorse their supple beauty of white European women. Books in my It could be that she was a jealous bitch. <laughs> like a lot of like women like do go ham on other women when they want to eliminate the competition. Probably wasn't because of race. Probably because she's just a miserable woman. Like let's be fair. 
magazines such as Harper's Bazaar and Goody's Lady's Book in the 19th century, then in plain English, begin to reaffirm to American women that fatness equals criminality, deformity, and African savagery. So where are we now? Well, let's turn on the TV and take a look. The Biggest Loser is a reality show that rewards participants for their rapid weight loss without regard for how exactly it's done. The winner's transformation... Wow, you got one show that's actually a pretty good example of the like irresponsib- the irresponsibility of weight loss because what I've heard, uh, The Biggest Loser doesn't they? Because you got to do it within the confines of a syndicated television show. You got to lose weight, like, like, cause you have to lose weight depending on, the weight loss depends on, um, has to depend on, like, the run of the season or whatever. So they got to fit, they got to fit that time frame, time frame within that season. They got to get episodes out. You know what I mean? So that would make sense. It would make sense that they would, like, be speeding shit up, uh, speed, speeding the process up um, irresponsibly is rewarded with cash one good example one app fucking one congratulations <laughs> uh duncan idaho two twenty dollar super chat but really what's really disheartening is not their arguments but in how stupidly they are presented like the s this this shit is supposed to be intellectual this is not how you make an argument and support it like the state of the u.s today <laughs> true and the applause of watches it was so yeah calderon biggest loser weight loss plan isn't sustainable that's why it's so bad. popular that at its height people magazine would dedicate a cover to the now beautiful body of the champion similar to the post of people who posted or blogged about their fitness journeys each contestant would detail how their weight held them back in certain areas of their life and how the world immediately welcomed them with open arms after shedding these pounds uh, Luke's television review. The shows are not shot in real time, though. I, I know, but that's not the point. Like that, you they still have to come out with seasons on a certain schedule, and it's still like it's still like a competition. So they have to. They're, so they're competing for shit. So they have to lose the weight in a certain a certain time frame. So that so that's gonna factor into how fast they need to lose the weight. So naturally, yeah, of course, they are, it's not going to be like a natural progression of, of healthy weight loss. And that's the problem. Why the hell is it remotely okay that fat people have to live on the margins of society in a world that should automatically treat them as humans rather than spectacle? You don't have to go on, the, on a fucking TV show. Nobody begs you to do that. Like no one forced them to be on that show. Like, stop. Why do we have to be spectacles? Why do they have to be spectacles? No one forced them to be on there. <laughs> and why do fat people have to prostrate themselves and push their bodies to incredible, inhumane limits for an audience of millions for people to see in order to be deemed attractive? As a matter of fact, who keeps green lighting these shows? As the even biggest loser hasn't been on the fucking air in years. What are you talking about? Hold on, because I'm pretty sure that sh- that shit went off the air at least ten years ago. Hang on a second. Who keeps green lighting these shows? Okay, the biggest loser last aired in February 2016. Okay, so it was like seven, uh, seven. No, well, yeah, seven years ago. Yeah, so it was almost ten. But yeah, like I like I was t- t- saying to myself, like I haven't seen that fucking show in a long time. What the fuck are you talking about? Who keeps green lighting this? My six hundred pound life on TLC. The- and Dad, yeah, don't use the show as an example. Weighing 600. Give me dignity. Even though I weigh 600 pounds, I'm a fucking drain on everyone around me. Now, keep in mind, some of these motherfuckers were straight abusive to the people who were enabling their fucking weight gain. 
we're enabling their lifestyles. But yeah, no, no, no. The, they deserve dignity. They don't have to lose any weight. They're beautiful the way they are. Like, fuck off. Network whose approach to entertainment seems too often eager to embrace the presumption that fat people are repugnant but yet also worthy enough for constant surveillance and a source of entertainment. One of them was sneaking fucking McDonald's in their room. I'd be surveilling their ass too. I don't know why I keep gaining weight. I don't know what's happening. Well, we got you on security cameras smuggling fucking McDonald's in your room. <laughs> and don't use this guy as an example. I heard he was a real piece of shit. Like, come on. It's not adding up. It seems to me that these kinds of media not only serve to demonize fat people for simply just existing, but to also tell viewers, you better- Being fat is not a fucking good thing. Quintessential Fuzz, $5 Super Chat. There's a video he did saying that black crime numbers are incorrect, but doesn't talk about data, just talks about a few black crime movies. <laughs> but I'm betting that editing was fire though. <laughs> and not eat that next piece of cake. You better not indulge or this will be you on television next. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. God forbid we live in a world where, oh, we got to, oh, we don't want people to kill themselves. Whoops. <laughs> because we we have gone backwards as a society. Duncan, Idaho, $10 super chat. Ha ha. Welcome to the history of the world where attractive people have an easier time. This whole thing is just people bashing their heads against the wall of reality and crying about it. True. Fat people. Two TLC. Our curiosities to be probed and displayed for the satisfaction of thin folk. These are real. Like, he's acting like motherfuckers. They round these motherfuckers up and then throw them on television by force. Nobody asked you to be on it. Someone offered you a, a fucking ass load of money. You get a bunch of money and you can lose a lot of weight. Uh, I think anyone, anybody would, be, <laughs> would, would take that fucking deal. They made themselves look like shit because they showed their fucking ass on television. Real people who are expressing their pain and challenges with their weight, which is a very real, sensitive thing. And having it been made a point of ridicule and pity. But wait, there's more. You see, even with widespread criticism and numerous write-ups on their publicization of big bodies, they did it again with their miniseries, Hot and Heavy, which followed several couples composed of average or muscular men and bigger women. Yeah, as if that's not to pander to, a pander to, as a show like this isn't made to pander to fat women. You can get a hot guy too, just for existing. It's like, no. <laughs> the entire show was framed as if their partner's fatness was a liability by preemptively positing does love really conquer all? Yeah, look how fucking big she is. God damn it. Come on. How can you look at this and be like, well, come on, she's not that bad. <laughs> she's got no neck. Her titties are basically drowning out her head. But, you know, like, look, come on, man. And she chose to be on this show, but they're clearly for, they're, they're inflicting this ridicule on her. Get the fuck out of here. Preemptively positing, does love really conquer all? Really? Honestly, like couples of- Mackie Sky, $2 super chat, need more six hour streams like this, keeps me busy. Different weights have always existed. <laughs> couples of like, oh, like, Come on, there's some couples out there that like the, the, the there are different ways to survive. Like, like you you argue like a fucking woman. <laughs> when people so, like when someone makes a gen, a general statement, like generally this and this and that, like there's some fucking asshole. Like you see, like you see how certain like this is mostly younger women, and uh, like someone will make like a general statement. Because it's like, like, it'll be a true general statement. They're like, okay, but what about this one outlier though? Like, bitch, do, <laughs> do you know what a generalization is? Okay, you're making it look like a, like a really heavy, like super size overweight person. Couldn't get a date and couldn't maintain a relationship. But what about all these other, like, no. <laughs> tired of this, man. Once again, the juxtaposition of the title. 
Luke's uh, Luke's television review five dollars super chat. Most of these people are not black, but he thinks fatness is only a black thing. Like, yeah, they're basically showing their own at their own, their own racism. Clearly, when you attack fat people, you're attacking black people because black people are basically mammies. <laughs> what being fat? That's our, being fat is our thing. <laughs> and heavy being unattractive is how they get their views. And if you haven't noticed. A lot of the opinions on fatness mentioned throughout today's videos focus on women as the onus is because you know why? Because they're the ones who are catered to so, and they're the ones who put themselves out there like, love me. I'm fat. So guess what? People are going to be like, people are going <laughs> to, people are going to do a Rorschach. People are going to do Rorschach. They're going to be like, oh, oh my God. What's that quote? What's the fucking quote? Um, the fatties will. <laughs> the fatties will. <laughs> hold on. The fatties will look up and shout, "Love me," and I'll whisper, and me and I, a Chad, will whisper, "No." <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. Don't shout out, "Love me," if you don't want to hear the no. <laughs> You will love me. I will get a chat like, no, bitch. No. <laughs> Nearly always femmes to prove their worth through their size. And because men do not give a fuck and no one gives a fuck about them. And most of the time they don't give a fuck because no one gives a fuck about them. <laughs> That's what it is, dummy. Everything I've said here is only a regurgitation of what queer, gender non-conforming, fat black activists have been shouting from the rooftops for years. I don't care about your fucking friends. Shut yes. Up. <laughs> While curvy body positivity is portrayed in media like the Dove commercials, which still only shows a certain kind of bigger body. My I love how he doesn't show the other ones with big... Hold on, let me find that shit. <laughs> Oh, and not to mention Dove just came out with a fucking campaign with a, with some a really big hefty bitch. We just saw it today. God, that timing is fantastic. <laughs> Cuz I didn't know I was going to be proven right this easily. Well, on, where is that shit? Cuz I definitely saw I definitely used to see ads with chicks pattern in this. But it doesn't really matter though. The Dove campaign is still encouraging the shit. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, there's still a modeling agency and they still, well, not a mod modeling agency, but they still have to sell attractiveness at the end of the day. But see, it's still the same fucking thing. It's still the same message oh yeah they're fat but they're not that fucking fat does that fucking matter the message is still the same oh there's gotta be like there was a fucking ad where these bitches were a lot bigger <laughs> Oh shit. God damn it, I can't find it. Hang on a second. I am not giving up, damn it. Oh, I can't wait to end this stream so I can get some water. <sighs> But see, my point still stands because that ad that we saw today. Oh my God, the Little Mermaid ending got leaked on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
That's funny. Oh my god. This fucking hang on guys. This these hiccups are killing me. can't find it. Where are the fucking old ones? <sighs> oh my god. Oh, hiccups. I can't find it, but see, I remember these ads because I grew up with these ads. Chicks I saw were a little bit bigger from what I remember. remember. God damn it. You to Kobo, I think. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. 10 pound super chat. Finally caught you live. Thank you for killing me with that Woman King review. Uh, love you. Your hands down the funniest YouTuber that I watch. Thanks for all the laughter. All the all hail the giggle queen. All oh, thank you. Uh, Hulu to Thunderhammer. Five dollar super chat. How do people like this even? Li how do people like this live? Oh my God! Always seeing problems everywhere. I know. Thank you. Right, let's continue. Recent movements of fat activism have been dominated by white people who have only recently learned. Yeah, that <laughs> that white person, that white person. I'm pretty sure that's a Latino. <laughs> but dominated by white people. Now, to be fair, he's not entirely wrong, but it looks like, who cares? It's about the body positivity. Actually, it's, no, the fat acceptance movement has been dominated. Like the body, no, the body positivity movement has been dominated by fucking fat bitches of every color. When it should be for women who are disfigured, who have like burn scars and shit, who have vasectomy scars. And who have things about their bodies that they cannot change. Fuck these fat bitches. <laughs> it was originally for them until the fatties co-opted co -opted the body positivity movement. Oh, it was too white. What the fuck does that even have to do with anything? Learned how race and anti-fatness intersect. As we can- You didn't even explain it that well, dude. You need to get off that. Continue to create a more inclusive world for all. It's important to amplify and listen to voices like Roxanne Gay, like Deshaun Harris. Who is that and who is that? Like Stephanie Yabor. Who, who is that? Oh, wait a minute. I think I've heard of you. I read an article from her. Like, yeah, she's, she's a fucking jackass too. Deserve all their flowers for highlighting the intersections of anti-fatness and anti-blackness. Because their work on the preoccupation of black bodies on behalf of the world is essential to understand. Okay, fast This room is? I talking about anti-blackness and this room this white. Dr. Umar about to bash through my door like the Kool-Aid man. I can't even respond to that. My streaming service Nebula is home to- Okay, never mind. The video over. We're done. Ugh. <laughs> We're done for the night. Um. Yeah. Oh God, that was a lot of cringe. Wish we would've got- Well, actually, no. I don't wish we, we could've gotten more into Gorlock the Destroyer. I think we got- I think we saw enough. We saw it now. It was fine. Um, but yeah, that, yeah, that's it for tonight, guys. The stream is over. I would like shit. I was supposed to be out of here by 1130. It is now 130, 133, more, um, more importantly. Oh God. But we had fun. We cringed. My voice is fucking raw from yelling at these fucking lunatics. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> uh wait, wait hang on a second i need to do something right quick before i end it completely
But yeah, I saw the Little Mermaid ending on YouTube. It got leaked. Go check that shit out. I encourage this. <laughs> Hold on one second. All right, cool, cool. Just wanted to check that out. Um, check a message. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the super chats, the well wishes, the comments, all the jokes. You guys are the best. Thank you for enduring, but I need to go drink some water, <laughs> rest my fucking throat, and lie down because it's like I'm trying to get better. Of course, I'm trying to get better sleep, sleep habits as well. I should have been in my room like an hour ago, but yeah, I'm out. Peace. Y'all might not see me for a little while. It depends. Because like I said, I have to make it to the next location. <laughs> I gotta, I have to do another fucking move. So it might be a, it might be a little while before you see me again. But you know, I'm still like, if if I can, I'm still see if I can get some more uh, content and shit out. I still, there's still some stuff I want to do. I'm still gonna be writing videos and shit in my spare time. But yeah, 